Hello, hello everybody and welcome to the brand new episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era. Today's episode is going to be called The God Stalkers. This episode will be taking place on a brand new island owned by Kaiba Corp, where he is setting up a facility meant to go into the virtual world. But this facility is under attack today. Why is it under attack? It's under attack because of one man, a man named Yami Pegasus. He is tired of his sons. His sons Gecko and Yako have failed him for the last time. It's been so long and he now owns none of the God cards. The God cards are spread out among many groups. Well, actually only two. Holy crap. Only two groups. And he wants them back. So, he has sent his sons on a final mission. Go get the gods. And in order to do that, the sons set up a trap. They told the rare hunters where the final god card would be. And now that Seto Kaiba's location has been leaked, everybody is converging on his island that wants to get him. It wants to get that god card, wants to get anything. So, without further ado, I say we dive into our character roundup and we see which character can win it all today. I hope you all are excited for the St God Stalkers Tournament. The first character we're going to be talking about is Bandit Keith of Kaiba Corp. Bandit Keith has been stalking the card professors for a couple of months now. He wanted to get his hands on the black dual disc. Keith decided to tip off the professor's plans to attack Kaiba Corp, well, the new Kaiba Corp on this island, in order to gain a favor from Kaiba. So today, Bandit Keith, he is not in, he's not a part of Kaiba Corp. This is a temporary alliance. He is with Kaiba today, ready to defend Kaiba and his god in order to get a favor from Seto Kaiba. Because right now, Seto Kaiba does have a lot of control over the world. So, we're going to see how Bandit Keith does. Number one thing Bandit Keith wants in this world is known as the Black Dual Disc, an anti-cheating disc that also gives you the ability to cheat your own way. It's a very interesting dual disc that changes the whole game. But we'll see how he does in today's tournament, and we'll see if he can take down the professors and get himself that dual disc. The next character we're going to be talking about is Deschutes Lou! And we're just going to call him Lou Pickles because I, I can't do that name. Lou and all his fellow card professors have been called on today. They only have one goal obtain every single god card and destroy any and all that attempt to get in the way of this goal. Yes, the card professors have a very simple task today. Follow the Tenma's orders by taking the gods. I hope they can succeed because if they don't, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Good luck to you, Lou. You're the weakest of the professors and that's why we're talking about you first. The next character we're going to be talking about is Iz Iz, the Enchanted. Iz Iz is the leader of a new group of baddies named the Enchanted. Her abilities to turn the power of the cards into real damage mimics psychic power. She used brain control on some members of the Enchanted. Yes, today we're announcing Iz Iz's new group of the Enchanted and her ability. Well, we already knew she had the ability to make real cards, or cards do real damage and stuff. That's been here since the first ever intro with her. But uh, yeah, Iz Iz is here today to not only get the power of the gods, but to get the power of the items that are converging on this island. So we'll see how she does today. We probably will not be able to meet any of our members today as this is too high tier of a tournament. So hopefully she does well with her Chaos deck. The next character we're going to be talking about is Tilla Mook, a card professor. Tilla was called today to take every single god card. She has been tasked to use her wicked god card to humble the power of the Egyptian gods. She feels confident today as every professor was called. She has a lot of backup today. I would say that half of today's tournament is owned by Yami Pegasus. 
That is an insane number to say, especially since it's going to be a large tournament. But we're going to see if Tillamook and her Wicked God can take one of the others. The next character we're going to be talking about, or characters, I should say, are Loomis and Umbra of the Rare Hunters. Loomis and Umbra knew this opportunity seemed too good. The Rare Hunters have become the hunted as they walked right into a big trap. They have been ordered to destroy the Sons of Pegasus. Yes, the Rare Hunters are here on the island. They were told that there was a god card here, so obviously they came. But they didn't realize that they themselves would become hunted. So, good luck to Loomis and Umber, and hopefully they can defend their boss and defend their gods. The next character we're going to be talking about is Clemeth Osler, a card professor. Clemeth has been having second thoughts about taking this job. He wanted to back out with his buddy Kirk, but the higher ranking professors said that success would earn them a king's ransom. That's right, everyone. If they can succeed today, they can honestly name their price and they can take over anything they ever wanted. Or they can retire rich. But... Clemeth will be using his real deck today, so hopefully his uh, deck, is, since he's actually using the real one, will do good today, but uh, I don't want to put any hope in anybody's ears, so we'll see how Clemeth does. I, I, I like that we're going to see a new deck from him, I just hope it goes well. The next character we're going to be talking about is Ishizu Ishtar. Ishizu and her brothers have been keen on taking back the gods and the items. Her brother Merrick informed her that a great battle was going to take place at Kaiba Land, an unopened park. Yep, Kaiba Land is the place we're going to today. It hasn't really been built or anything, we're just in the main offices right now, but it's going to be really exciting to see how the Ishtar family does in today's tournament. The next character we're going to talk about is Kirk Dixon of the Card Professors. Kirk Dixon has been getting a real bad vibe off of his employers. He planned to ditch today, but it came after hearing just how much money they could make. Winning is now the only option. Kirk Dixon is one of the higher ranking members of the Card Professors. I know he's still in the lower tier, but he was once a pro level duelist and his Machina deck packs a powerful punch. So hopefully he could show it off today. The next character we're going to talk about is Arcana of the Rare Hunters. Arcana is tired of being dragged into death traps. He prefers setting the death traps himself and feels insulted by these amateurs. They didn't even use one psychic powered saw today. That's just completely pathetic. But Arcana has been receiving new support over this past year. So hopefully with some new Dark Magician support, Arcana can really pull off a victory and protect his fellow rare hunters. The next character we're going to talk about is Odeon Ishtar. Odeon was with his brother when Merrick uh, wait, with his brother Merrick when the location of a great battle was revealed. They were approached by an average looking citizen possessed. Someone with great power has baited the Ishtars. <coughs> yes, the Ishtar family, a family that has no Egyptian items at this point in time in our story and no god cards, has been baited to this very same island by another source of power. I wonder who they are. And I wonder if Odeon will do better today with his new synchro support. The next character we're going to be talking about is Sarah Taker! Sarah has been shadowing the Pharaoh for quite a while now. She believes he is on uh, he is on to her stalking, but the Pharaoh has been busy experiencing modern times. Today she plans to help protect the Pharaoh. That's right everyone, Sarah Taker has been following the Pharaoh around for quite a while now, and honestly a surprise to see he's enjoying modern life eating modern foods, and uh, enjoying modern fancies like TV and stuff. But today is a serious day, so she's decided to come out of hiding in order to outright help him. The next character we're going to be talking about is Seto Kaiba of Kaiba Corp, of course. Seto has been busy building his new Kaiba land. He was alerted by a high-ranking duelist of the attack on his person today. As we all know, that was Bandit Keith. 
Seto decided to call in his most powerful supporters in order to help protect him in today's tournament. He does not want to lose his god card. It does feel like a part of him. And now he's going to do everything he can to protect it. Everyone's god cards are at risk today, people. The only way you lose your god card is if a, a card professor tries to take it, or a rare hunter tries to take it, or an Ishtar family tries to take it, or a random party tries to take There's a lot of ways to lose. The only way you keep your god today is you win, or you lose to a member of your own organization. So, good luck to you, Seto Kaiba. The next character we're going to be talking about is Strings of the Rare Hunters! Strings Husk was taken over by a whole new master after Battle City. Their new master is a part of the Rare Hunters, meaning that Strings has returned to their old gang. They foster a god card. Yes, everybody, Strings knows a new master, but that new master is working with the Rare Hunters and is he still allowed to use the god card? Because obviously it doesn't really fit anyone else's deck. So good luck to you, Strings. You gotta protect that god with your life or your employers are gonna be pissed. The next character we're gonna be talking about is Pete Coppermine. Pete has been biting his nails bloody with excitement. He has always wanted to get his hands on Egyptian dark spirits. He has, uh, he has many methods of experimentation he would, uh, he would want to put them through. Yeah, so the thing about Pete is he is not a stable person. And even though today the card professors, most of them are here for the money, some of them have their own agendas. And Pete, he doesn't even care about the god cards as much as getting an Egyptian uh, dark spirit and then experimenting on it. That scares the crap out of me. Luckily, I don't think Pete's a very good duelist, so hopefully that does not come to pass. But anything can happen since a year has passed and decks have been improved. The next character we're going to talk about is Merrick Ishtar! Merrick has many goals. Calm the Dark Spirits, seal the Egyptian God Cards, and civilize the Underground. He was told to come to Kaibaland today in order to work towards his first two goals. Yes, Merrick Ishtar, his goals have been well known for this entire series, and today he's going to make good on two of them. He's going to try and quell some of the Dark Spirits that have been released, and he's going to take the Egyptian Gods to reseal them safely. Hopefully he can do this, but it's going to take a lot of power to do it. Good luck to you, Merrick Ishtar. You and your Ishtar family, there's three of you, so hopefully you each can get a god today. The next character we're going to talk about is a brand new character. One of the card professors, and I'm going in order of power level, so get ready, everybody. The next character is Maiko Kato. Maiko learned to play dual monsters by playing with her grandchildren. She always loves buying them new cards when they come to visit, but cards are expensive. She joined the card professors for money. Yes. This is the old woman, a woman of the card professor. She has a very interesting deck, and she is quite an accomplished duelist as she practices with her grandkids all the time. And in order to get the money, in order to, uh, sorry, in order to get money to pay for those grandkids' cards, she has decided to join the card professors. And she's one of the higher ranking members. I'd say a middle member. But let's see how she does today. Good luck to you, Kaito, or Kato. You're gonna need it. The next character we're going to be talking about is the Rose Duelist of Kaiba Corp. The Rose Duelist has the full backing of Kaiba Corp and is a good friend of Seto Kaiba. He was called today to banish these invaders. This past year has been boring and a fresh battle excites him. Yes, the Rose Duelist is a very accomplished duelist that, let's just admit it, they kind of slipped up in their first ever tournament, but their deck has a lot of potential and has gone through a lot of buffs over the past year. We're going to see if the Rose Duelist can, you know, help out his buddy Seto Kaiba, and we're going to see just how strong he really is. 
The next character we're going to talk about is Mendocino, a card professor. Mendocino is a high-ranking card professor that only duels for money. He is good friends with some lower-ranking professors and even lets one of them borrow his, uh, even let one of them borrow his deck a year ago. Mendocino is the true insect uh, card professor. There are technically two of them, but Sino is the better duelist. So, we're going to see how Sino does today with his upgraded harvester deck. Good luck to you, Mendo. The next character we're going to be talking about is Akiza Izinski, the Rose Witch of Kaiba Corp. Seto Kaiba gave two duelists a call to help defend his god card. The first person he called was Akiza, and she was told to remove the limiter. The Rose Witch rises once again to destroy these invaders. Yes, everybody, Akiza is here today. She has taken off her limiter because she has had enough therapy to know when to take it off, but someone's going to need to put that back on her as she doesn't do it herself. And we're going to see her at full power today. Good luck to you, Akiza. You did damn good back at uh, Duel Academy. You just got a little unlucky here and there, and you know, you're not the best at using Black Rose Dragon's popping effect, but hey, today you got Ruddy Rose Dragon, so we'll see how you do. The next character we're going to talk about is Yami Yugi. The spirit of the puzzle has been wandering the world this past year, studying, learning, and honing his senses for modern times. He arrives today to collect items and gods. They are necessary for the ritual. Yami Yugi knows what must be done in order for him to save the future. And the only way he can do that is to return to the past. So, today he hunts for Millennium Items and he hunts for the gods. Good luck to you, Yami Yugi. Good luck to you. You only have one friend today. The next character we're going to be talking about is Seeker of the Rare Hunters. Seeker has been plagued with bad draws for an entire year. Today is his chance to make up for that by getting his hands on the final god card. He could also could earn respect by beating back the Sons of Pegasus. Yes, Seeker today, get the final god card from Kaiba Corp, or two, stop the Sons of Pegasus from taking the other two god cards that the Rare Hunters have. The Rare Hunters are the closest group to finishing the, uh, to finishing the ritual and having all three gods. I can't wait to see if they pull it off today, and Seeker is going to be a vital member in that process. The next character we're going to be talking about is Willamette! Willamette is a powerful dragon duelist in the card professors. He, ha uh, sorry, he has always wanted to challenge Seto Kaiba, but no one ever hires for that suicide mission. That was until today. Yeah, normally nobody would ever say, yeah, I want you to beat Seto Kaiba for me because that's just a fool's errand. He's one of the strongest duelists in the world right now. So Willamette was told, today is your day. Today is your chance to take on Seto Kaiba. And with his powerful dragon deck, he plans to win it all. The next character we're going to talk about is Ted Banayas. I always I wanted to call him Ted Bananas, but it wasn't right. Ted Banayas, the card professor. Ted Banayas is an overconfident duelist that believes duel monsters is too easy. He typically holds back against opponents to keep games interesting and only ever lost to one duelist. Keith! Yeah, that damn bandit Keith. Always taking on the card professors and making them feel, you know, unworthy of their title. But Ted Benayas is one of the highest ranking members in the professors, and his deck is a very effective tactical one that has good beaters, good special summon, it's good at everything. So we're going to see how Ted does today, and we're going to see if he gets stopped by Keith again. The next character we're going to talk about is Vagrant of the Rare Hunters. Vagrant is a former pro duelist that joined up with the Rare Hunters after being kicked out of the pro league. Yami Merrick doesn't know what Vagrant is truly after, but enjoys his quiet demeanor. 
Yeah, Yami Merrick was like, what the hell? Why do you want to join us? Vagrant didn't say a word. And Yami Merrick was like, you're in. <laughs> you don't talk, you don't bother me, and you're a good duelist, you're in. So the former pro duelist Vagrant, for unknown reasons, is going to be a part of the Rare Hunters today. The next character we're going to be talking about is Gecko Tenma. Gecko and his brother have been suffering for quite a while. The will of their father, Yami Pegasus, has been encapsulating and uh, encapsulating, and their failures have been met with punishment. This is their last chance. If they don't succeed today, let's just say bad things will happen to them worst things that the worst thing that could happen so gecko tenma fight hard hopefully the wicked god your adopted father gave you will be enough the next character we're gonna talk about is raiko kitamori of the card professors raiko is a high-ranking professor that only seems to be respected by two members of the card professors Granny Kato and the number one professor respect her. The other professors don't think much of her. She has only been playing the game of Duel Monsters for one month. This is the end of her first month as a Duel Monster duelist. And she is one of the best there is. So we're going to see how Raiko does as a fresh duelist with fresh eyes. Working for the card professors for unknown reasons. But... It's interesting to see that a lot of the other card professors do not respect her, except for two. So, good luck to you, Raiko. You're going to need it. The next character we're going to be talking about is Dupree Scott. Dupree Scott is the current third strongest card professor. He also is an adoptive son of Yami Pegasus. The Tenmos don't know about his adoption, and Dupree must end his brothers if they fail today. The card professors this entire time have always been working with Yami Pegasus. Obviously, they work for the Tenmo brothers, but Yami Pegasus' son, our adoptive son, is here. And if they fail today, if the Tenmo brothers, Tenmo brothers fail today, Dupree Scott has to end them. The next character we're going to be talking about is the leader of the Rare Hunters, the number one villain, Yami Merrick. This past year has been quite successful for the Rare Hunters. They managed to obtain two of the God cards. This trap they walked into means little to Merrick, as he does not see himself as trapped. <laughs> You're, he's not trapped with you. You're trapped with him. Yami Merrick doesn't care how many people are going to try and get in his way. He feels himself unstoppable today. And with his entire Rare Hunter army, he's going to take that final god card. And probably punish the Sons of Pegasus. The next character we're going to be talking about is Cedar Mill. Cedar once held the Dark Duel Disc, the symbol of the strongest professor. He lost it recently to the new number one professor. His goals today are to take the gods for himself and usurp the number one professor. Cedar Mill does not share the other professor's goals or the Tenma's goals. Today, he wants it all for himself. He wants the Black Duel Disc back, and he wants to be back in charge as the number one professor. Good luck to you, Cedar Mill. You're going to need it. The next character we're going to be talking about is Yami Bakura of the Rare Hunters. Yami Bakura allied himself with Yami Merrick's crew not long after Battle City. He is amused by the powerful spirit of the rod, and with their powers combined, they intend to get the gods and the items. For those of you that did not know, Bakora has always been after the uh, Egyptian god item, or Egyptian god, sorry, Millennium items, since we started our story. And now he has allied himself with a powerful group that can help him accomplish this goal. 
The other members don't know that that's one of their main goals. Yami Merrick does, but he doesn't care. He's just like, yeah, if you're going to let strings be part of my group, then heck yeah, I'm down. That just means I have two god cards, so I only need one more thing. You need like six more items. Or five more items if you count mine. So, hell if I care. Uh, yeah, Yami Bakura is here today working with the Rare Hunters in order to take all the Egyptian items. And, you know, if they get a god for Merrick, I'm sure that'll be fine, as these two are working together now. The next character we're going to be talking about is Yako Tenma! Yako Tenma is tired of failing his adoptive father. He devised this scheme today to corral all the god cards in one place. He was informed that if they fail today, they will fail to see tomorrow. Yako Tenma, using his wicked gods, must get the god cards today. If they, if they fail to get the gods, they will not live to see the next day. Yami Pegasus is quite cruel with his adoptive sons. And they don't know how cruel he truly is, as they, he will have one of his other adoptive sons do the job. So, Yako, leader of the card professors, the guy who hired the card professors as their mercenary group, and the leader of the... Uh, nothing else, honestly. That's all you got. Uh, good luck today. There's a lot on the line for you. The final character we're going to be talking about today is the current number one card professor. This guy is the one holding the Dark Duel Disc, a disc that's supposed to tell you if an opponent is cheating and in our story allows a character to cheat everybody say hello to richie murked or murked yeah i'm gonna go with murked richie murked richie once lived rough on the streets before yami pegasus found him pegasus took him as a son and taught him to duel richie is pegasus's most loyal son and the leader of the card professors. And because of this, Richie has been given access to a whole new set of cards that have not yet been released by Industrial Illusions. His own father gave him a set of cards that have never been seen, and if you're a viewer in the chat right now, probably scares you the same way Sarah Taker scared us oh so long ago. That is the final character we have to talk about today. The card professors are going to be taking on the Rare Hunters and Kaiba Corp. Kaiba Corp is going to be taking on everybody. The Rare Hunters is going to be taking on everybody. The, Ish the uh, Ishtar family is just trying to get all of those freaking gods back and, you know, quell the, uh, quell the dark spirits. Yami Yugi is doing his own thing. Iz Iz is doing her own thing. Sarah Taker is trying to help Yami Yugi. The world is changing, everybody, and today's tournament will have a large impact on what comes next. So, <laughs> I don't know, just wish luck to all these characters. There are a lot of heavy hitters here today. Which group will win and who will fall? We'll all see very soon. I'll be live with you as soon as I can be. I might still be eating, I might still be setting up, but I'll be live with you as soon as I can. See you then. Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to today's tournament of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era God Stalkers! What's up, everyone? Are you ready for a high-tier tournament with a bunch of hard-hitting characters? I haven't seen you guys in a whole week, and I've missed you. So thank you all for being here today, and get ready for another exciting episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Era. Um, I got two new emotes for you guys to use in chat, which I'm very excited for you all to do. And uh, even more than that, I hope you guys are ready for the first duel, which is Bandit Keith versus Ted Benias. Well, if you're here, Jason, you can go ahead and get those. Uh, yeah, thank you. You already know what to do. 
Uh, let's go ahead and see what happens. Bandit Keith, Ted Benias. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope that we get to see a good duel from these two duelists. It's almost time for me to start the tournament. I'm probably just going to start it like right now almost. That, that'll start it real soon. Yeah, let me just get uh, let me get the screen ready because you don't need to see the bracket anymore. Everyone, get over here. Get over to the real screen where we get to see the characters and we get to see them duel. So we need old Ted Bundy over here and then we need old, uh, well, what's the other character's name? Oh, it's Bandit Keith. How can I forget him? So here we go, guys. It's time for Bandit Keith and old Teddy to fight. And we're going to see which character can keep going on in this tournament, which character is going to get themselves some gods, and which character is just going to fail horribly. Um, I'm hoping for the best, though. I am hoping for the best. Happy WrestleMania weekend to you guys as well. So that's the start of the duel, and old Teddy here summoned a Gene Wart Warwolf and a Vorse Raider on the first turn. Bandit Keith was lucky enough to get his Heavy Metal Raiders, and he's going to need to put some work in. Pot of Greed's going to be a little helpful. You can at least Harpies, but it's a little risky. Um, he almost has his Fusion Monster, though I don't know if he's going to get that either. We're going to go ahead and play a Field Spell. We're going to play a, a card with Scissors, and he's going to waste the Scissor card, I believe. Yeah, limited removal will waste that. Random Gamer, thank you so much for the massive subs. The one good thing about Scissor Hands there, yes, it is going to die due to a misplay, but Blowback will survive, and it's going to go in, so I guess that's not the biggest misplay in the world. And you got to do 2,000 burns, so I can't be mad at that. But the Kaiser Vorse Raider is going to cost you some attack points. So, Bandit Keith has put on a good show, but his opponent is matched with him. Oh, we got to flip some coins. All right, let's flip some coins and see what happens. And the coin flips are good. He got it. All right. The last two. Oh, no. He beat Magic Cylinder. And Dekoichi and the Scissorman is here. The attack goes through. The monster is gone. The attack goes through. And Teddy's in trouble. Once he gets that field spell, duels get really tough. So let's see what happens. And we're going to go ahead and get a summon in. Regular Vorse Raider is here, and it's scared because the field spell scares it. We have no Harpy's Feather Duster. We have no MST. We have no Heavy Storm. We have no new support cards that can destroy it. All I know is Bandicoot could not pop the opponent's monster, and we'll have to wait to kill it. Yes. It'll cost him some life points, but he can buff all of his monsters up to 1900 attack, and next turn he'll kill the opponent. All right. Well, you can at least go for a tribute there, but you definitely need to get rid of the field spell. That works too. I love it. This guy got his dark hole. Ben Keith is officially bricked. The Vorse Raider goes in and Keith is in trouble. Bandit Keith, what the hell are you going to do? Vorse Raider overpowers you easily. Ooh, that trap could do good. If this guy top decks Harpies, he could beat Keith. He needs Harpies right now or Heavy Storm or whatever. That Enraged Battle Ox is a cool card, but it's not going to do it. And Blowback Dragon returns. And with the return of Blowback Dragon means the return of coin flips. Let's flip those coins and let's see. Don't flip that one. Look, I know Cyber Jar has a real nice use every now and then, but it is not a card you want to flip. So do not set that card either. I'm, I'm asking you as a friend. We're going to put Metal on the Blowback Dragon, making it a Metal Morph Dragon. And with that damage, we've almost ended the duel. Good, good. Okay, you know what? You, sh you probably shouldn't have played it at all. Should have kept that in your hand just in case. But hey, at least you didn't mess it up. Now this duel, could, that trap could still be super good. He hasn't shown off any of his stuff yet. We're going to see if the Blowback Dragon can stop it. Perfect. Three heads is to Oh, it was a terrible trap for this situation anyway. Get in there, Bandit Keith. And Bandit Keith takes game number one against Teddy. Ted Benias is going to be a little bit sad after that. But hey, it's fine. Just, uh, yeah, let's just try that again. Oh my God, Taco. God freaking damn it. <laughs> oh, yes, Jason. It's going to be a big day. It's going to be a big day. But if the duels are as fast as that last one, then it's not going to take that long. And here we go. We got Heavy Metal Raiders. We have the Dekoichi. We have this monster. Keith has one win so far. Mr. Banana has zero. I love that. Hey, there's the Harpies he needed. All right. So everybody, with that gone, there's an easy way to beat this man. Bandit Keith relies on his field spell. And without having the field spell, he's in trouble. And the Kaiser, Vo or, yeah, Kaiser Vorse Raider now has 2,400 attack. So you're in danger, Bandit. What are you going to do? Mechanical Chase is not bad. I'm not going to lie. You should have summoned it and attacked the Rhino. But, you know, you're kind of dumb. It's okay. All right, Ted Benias, let's see what you can do. 
And Ted's just like, hey, I got more monsters. I'll summon more. I just can't do anything because Swords is a... Oh, if... Oh, Bandit Keith needs tributes. Oh, now all of a sudden you feel like it? Yeah, Bandit Keith needs tributes because Barrel Dragon could get him out of this horrible situation. Of course, uh, yeah. Tanko Chaser is not going to be enough. You can destroy Mr. Rhino Man, but that's about it. And Premature could do... Yes, Premature could do it. Premature Burial gets 800 points. We have ourselves a Tribute Summon. The Barrel Dragon comes through. Kaiser Seahorse is... Flip them coins. It's gone! We got triple heads, everybody! And we're going to get 600 damage in there. And finally, what is Mr. Rhino Man going to do? All right, what are you going to do? All right, we have one trap. That's fine. Yeah, I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is for uh, people that actually like to have to think and, and that can actually read. Effects are too long. I can't do it. Even Blowback Dragon's too long, and that thing's like two sentences. And he got triple heads again. He's cheating today. Wait, is Bandit Keith cheating today? He's actually getting it so many times. What is going on? Is he... That's super cheating. Oh, uh, what do we got? We have ourselves a set. That's 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 nice and all, Bandit, but I feel like you're not playing fair. Uh, well, we got Monster of Born. Let's see if this guy gets heads again. Why'd you, of all the cards you could steal, why'd you steal that one? I don't know what it does, but I'm just curious. All right, attack goes through. He got two. He only needs two. Holy crap, Boris Raider is gone. Mr. Rhino Taurus goes in. Mr. Barrel Dragon goes in. Um... And we have a Tribute Summit! Okay! Desperado Barrel Dragon, his strongest card in his main deck. And Desperado Barrel Dragon's gonna be a little bit interesting. Let's see how he plays it. Cyber Jar in attack mode. Yeah! Cyber Jar in attack mode is unbeatable! Bandit Keith knocks out Teddy, the card professor, with a Cyber Jar aggressive play. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's perfect. What a great play. Bandit Keith, currently allied with Kaiba Corp, has taken down one of the annoying card professors. So let's go ahead and let's get back to our bracket and see who's up next. The next characters that we'll be fighting in our tournament are... Maiko Kato, the old woman of the card professors. And she will be going up against Arcana of the Rare Hunters. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Maiko Kato versus Arcana. I'm hoping for a good duel here. Arcana has gotten a lot of buffs to help out his Dark Magician deck. A lot more support uh, since a whole year has passed. And Maiko's a new character, so who knows what she can do. Uh, but we'll see. Maiko Kato, or Kato is on our screen right now. Arcana is on player two side. We're going to see how they do. She's already got Gaia power. She's already she's played her entire hand. If this guy plays Harpies, he wins. I, I'm just going to say it. Play Harpies and you win. Okay, Dark Magic Curtain. You paid half your life points. You get a really cool Dark Magician card in defense mode, which is funny because Burn of the Mighty is ruining it. Yep. That's a lot of traps from both sides of the field. I, I am impressed. I want to pretend like I'm not, but I am. All right, we got draw power coming through. Dark Magician has been defeated. And Grandma gets herself another Gaia power just in case. Nothing wrong with that. Good job, Grandma. So what else he got? Okay, that's not good. <laughs> he doesn't play anything else. He's in trouble. Uh, she hasn't lost anything yet, so she's drawing a lot of her support cards, not her monsters. A very unlucky start for Grandma, despite the fact that she has field advantage. Apprentice Magician could help get him out of this sticky situation. We'll see if he gets it. Yep, that can get him out of this for at least a minute. And we're going to see what Grandma gets. Ooh, Grandma got a new monster. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, Grandma, you are going to be scary. Uh, yeah, what are your traps, Arcana? I agree with the uh, random person in chat. Well, looks like that old Vindictive is going to be a pretty scary card. And Premature Burial, it's about time. Oh, Aerosaur Rock Sunrise. Sure, we'll do that too. And, uh, oh, Dark Renewal! Old Vindictive gets out of the way. Dark Magician holds the field with not enough defense, but hey, it's there. And we got Premature Burial. Yep. Yes, we do. That card is based on difference in life points, so Arcana playing his uh, other card kind of screwed him. Yeah, that, that monster has to do with difference in life points. So, yeah. Playing a card that made you lose half your life points made it so her level one monster stronger. Yeah. 
Oh, and she got her stray lambs. That's not bad. Now, let's see if uh, you can see yeah, exactly when you summon a fourth one. We'll find out. Oh, Call the Haunted comes through. Dark Magician has risen. He is here. Dark Magician and skilled. He's got Dark Magic Attack. She lost everything. All of her cards are gone. Arcana's in full control of the duel. Her life points are dropping at a very crazy rate. He's going in and he's winning. All right. What the hell do you do now, Grandma? You lost every card in the game. That rat could save you. Some life points at least. That rat could save you. You just do not play your Wild Nature's Release. Good. Good. Good use of rat. Very good use of rat. Um, Cat. I, I, you know what? Rat. You should have searched for more rat. You should have played Stray Lambs. Oh, you couldn't. You, you should have searched for more rats. I have no clue why you didn't search for the cat. Okay. The AI is kind of bad. Dark Magic Attack! The winner is Arcana! And we're going to go into game number two now. Grandma had a little trouble there. I have no clue why she didn't go for a second rat. I would have picked a second rat. And I'm casual. I mean, come on. So, let's go ahead and get into game two and see what happens. Yeah, I'm the kind of guy who literally built a Umi deck in the Eternal Duel of Soul Let's Play against a freaking tier four opponent. Now, let's see what they got. So, we got some interesting cards in hand. Spiritual Force is very good for her deck. That's going to give her a, big, a better advantage this time around. As long as he doesn't destroy her back row again, because that kind of sucked. Dark? Okay, well, that made his... Mo that monster in her hand is busted now. That monster in her hand is horrifying. Thousand Knives? What? No, the Spiritual Force doesn't work. No, he had both! Oh my god, Thousand Knives and Dark Magic Attack. Arcana is on top of the world, man. This guy is playing to win today. All right, she is doing... So she's in trouble. She's in trouble. Uh, Prentice Magician comes through. There's nothing to really give stuff to... Holy crap, that's one of the few times that's ever going to work. You should never attack with 400, but it worked. And because of that, she's basically out of the duel. She's got no life points left. She's scared. I don't know how to help her. Gaia Power helps, actually, if you use Bazoo the Soul Eater. Uh, yes, Bazoo the Soul Eater throws away two monsters, and now you eat the Dark Magician. Dark Magician is protected by Magic Cylinder! Your attack points will stay for one turn. You get to hold the field for one turn. Hi there, everybody. Uh, you're in trouble. You're in a lot of trouble. Uh-oh. He tributed for a new Dark Magician, even though it's the same attack points? Welcome to AI in every single Yu-Gi-Oh game that I've ever played. All right, set giant rat. Actually use it correctly this time, please. Yeah, no, that's a misplay. I agree. He's just dumb. All right, skill dark magician goes in. Bazoo is gone. Giant rat is gone. But what will the rat get this time? Because what he got last time was pretty worthless. You had to. All you had to do was pick it last time. You would have been all right. Not great, but all right. There you go. Now you have plans. Use the... Sure, yes. Use the rat to get more cards. Thin out your deck. It's a good idea. Um, excuse me. Oh, we have a Synchro Southern. Grandma wants to show you something. And she shows you her Nechiria Beast. With 2,700 attack, even Arcana feels scared now. And now you're hiding in defense mode. And now Apprentice Magician's in attack mode. That's not a good idea. And uh, yeah, you've made a mistake. You thought the duel was over? You thought Grandma lost? Look at Grandma. She's still standing. All right. Maiko Kato isn't leaving that quickly. And since he already used one of his Dark Magic Attack and Thousand Knives against... Oh, okay. Well, Dark Magician returns. No, it does not. Dark Magician, go to hell. All right. Let's try that again. You want, do you want to play a new spell card? Oh, that's right. You can't. You can't play new spell cards. Grandma says no. All right. Key Mouse in attack mode is very unrecommended. The hell are you doing? You have 300 life points left. You cannot play Key Mouse in attack mode. Oh, dear God, Grandma. You had you had a really good situation going, and now you've kind of you kind of ruined it. Oh, okay. That's why. Grandma's got, Grandma knew what she was doing. That's, that's fine. That's fine. It's obvious. I know she has Magic Cylinder, but what if they summon two monsters? What if there was an old Vindictive involved? We don't know. Anything could happen. All right, set comes through. What if he plays just desserts? Anything can happen. And we're going to go ahead and start attacking. The Beast goes in. Apprentice Magician will fall. 
And because there's double the trouble, this old Vindictive will not be able to stop the Spell Stopper, because there will still be one Spell Stopper left on the field. Very nice. All right, well, we got ourselves a set, and things are interesting. 300 life points left, and she, uh, she just needs to find a way to win. Mystic Tomato and Attack is very weird that you would even do that. Um, that was not good. That was not a good idea. Um, your life points, they, they, they are suffering. All right, everyone's in attack mode now. The attack goes through. That's a lot of damage. Mr. Tomato's like, I'm still standing. That's game. And the winner with 300 life points remaining is Maiko Kato. Grandma did it, everybody. Let's go ahead and get into game number three and see what happens. Will Arcana do it for the Rare Hunters? Will Maiko do it for the Card Professors? Which group in your mind is stronger? Tell me right now. Card Professors or Rare Hunters? Yes, including their leaders. You can count the Tenma brothers in the, in the Card Professors today. All right. Yeah, see, Grandma showed us some good Yu-Gi-Oh right there. She, she knows how to do stuff. Pot of Greed comes through. Pot of Greed gets a bunch of monsters. Bazoo the Soul Eater is plenty powerful. This is the first time he has not used Dark Magic Curtain. I just noticed that. Um, and we got ourselves a Mystic Tomato. Or Kaiba Corp. Good point. There's also Kaiba Corp. But Kaiba Corp has like four people today. And one of them is just an alliance. The other two actually are with Kaiba. Oh, we have ourselves a Dark Magician yet again. And this is a normal summoned one. Dark Magic Attack! She lost Magic Cylinder and Horn of the Phantom Beast. That's a pretty huge loss in my opinion. Magic Cylinder has one duels, for crying out loud. Alright, Ayers Rock Sunrise is not enough. Yes, scapegoats can buy you time, but it is sad to see. You've been Dark Magic attacked every single duel. Please don't attack with Apprentice. Oh, nice! Now you can't use traps or spells. Interesting use. Terrible that you attacked with Apprentice. You broke so many people's hearts. But it's not your fault, Arcana. Every single AI in the game does what you just did every single one. I think I even made a YouTube short of Chaz doing it with a zero attack point monster. Alright, Premature Burial comes through. Bazoo the Soul Eater is here. Double Bazoo is here. Attack goes through. And apparently Dark Magician is not afraid. Old Vindictive can get rid of one of those cards, and it will. Which card are we hitting? I would hit Giant Rat. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, good play. The Giant Rat is the most annoying card there. Bazoo could be defeated. You could beat Bazoo. Let's see if you get Dark Magic Curtain, you could defeat both of them. Nope, you did not. Oh, there goes some damage, and Grandma's looking real rough right now. She needs herself a Field Spell, a Synchro Shoka, she needs a lot. She needs a lot. That could help. Spiritual Force can legitimately help. You're going to throw away three cards to get yourself Dark Magician Power. Spiritual Force does work, funny enough. And using the Spiritual Force, you can't be destroyed by battle once per duel, or once per turn. And with that, you held the field and beat Dark Magician. Of course, Bazoo will lose their buff next turn, and uh, now you just have to beat a 1600 attack point monster, Arcana. Burden, that's what, oh no, that card is so good. Burden of the Mighty is going to put Arcana in a really tough spot. That means that even his strongest card, Dark Magician, will only have 1800 attack. Which is stronger than Bazoo, mind you, it's just not that good in general. Alright, well, Old Vindictive's like, what if I didn't want Bazoo? And we got Skilled Dark, who has 1,500 attack. And, uh, yeah, that Neko Cat, you are so lucky. You are so lucky that thing had zero defense, Old Vindictive. You have no idea. Grandma, go get him. Go get him with your Ayers Rock Sunrise and your Giant Rat. Oh, you don't want a Sunrise? Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to judge. If you don't want a Sunrise, you don't got... Oh, you're going to do a main phase too? I'm judging now. That was completely stupid. That was actually really dumb. Um, whatever. Let's see what this guy does. He's got another skill, Dark Magician, and they're going to try and destroy the rat, though it will take two. And instead... the fuck? I guess? Um, I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I really don't. The AI is weird. Uh, we're going to use Bazoo's effect. We're going to eat the cat, and by eating the cat, we're stronger than the... No, no, the, no that... No! That one is 17... God freaking damn it. God damn it, Grandma. I, you don't have anything in the grave now. Just want to let you know that. Just how much your okay life point difference is good. Their life point difference is pretty high. Ah, oh, crap! You just lost all of your attack points. Magic cylinder actually drained you of every single attack point you had. You are tied now. You are tied now. 
I hope you... Oh, things are getting worse by the second. Dark Magician is back. And like I said, 1800 attack is enough. I would have popped the rat. Dark Magic Attack! Dark Magician is unstoppable! That is the fourth Dark Magic Attack we've seen. And the life point difference has now switched. As long as there's a life point difference, that level one monster will gain attack points. Um, but yeah, Dark Magician is in an interesting position where it's the only thing stopping game three. Dark Magic Curtain, and now the life point difference goes a different route again, and there's two of them. How are you going to beat the freaking uh, Dark Magician duo? Giant Rat comes through. Giant Rat gets the cat. Cat goes away. Bye, cat. No more cats. A uh, thousand life points left for Grandma. Grandma's in some trouble here. She never got Gaia power this duel, so she's had a lot of trouble. Stray Lambs can try to stall for time, and honestly, that's a viable idea. Another thing we haven't seen from her, even though I think we saw it in the second duel and go to the grave, she hasn't gotten her boss monster. For those of you that don't know, her boss monster is Green Baboon, and it is that in the manga, so I'm surprised she hasn't gotten it in these duels. The only duel where she did get it was the one she won, and she never summoned it, because she didn't have to. Hey, welcome. Uh, good to see you, Caesar. Gaia Power's too damn late to the party. Wait, play Gaia Power! You might you're gonna lose either way. You might as well go for maximum damage. You could have left him with 800 life points and made the duel look close. But it wasn't close. It wasn't close at all. Arcana, get her out of here! The Dark Magician support came through today, and we're knocking out Grandma. It was a really good duel, though. Very good duel. Dark Magic Attack. All right, good match from these two characters, but it looks like the Rare Hunters are packing more of a punch today. Because, uh, yeah, those, there's not a single card professor that's won so far. But hey, we'll keep going, we'll see what happens. My cats are good. Uh, no one's here right now, but the cats are good. So let's go ahead and let's get Arcana moving forward. The next characters we're going to be talking about are Clemeth Osler, a character that, uh, is an insect deck, but he uses an insect synchro monster now, for those of you that have been, that paid attention to the intro. And uh, the next, the other character is the Rose Duelist, a character that sadly did not pop off during uh, Battle City, but maybe they could try again today. Anything can happen. So the Rose Duelist versus Clement. I'm looking for the characters as we speak. The Rose Duelist is basically ready. Clemeth and his insect deck are basically ready. We're going to see what happens. Watching the characters go on, we got ourselves a lot of interesting cards. There's, you know what, there's some use in this hand here. Lone Fire Blossom's also pretty useful, though, because now you got to deal with Talia. Have fun. So, he played a 2900 attack point monster on his opening turn. Can you do that, Clemeth? Can, can you do that? I don't think so. And we're going to get rid of Call of the Haunted, which does suck for the Rose Duelist, but the Rose Duelist will find a way out of this, I'm sure. Uh, Verdant Sanctuary is very good for the Insect deck. It's going to give them a lot of search and a lot of... Th it'll thin out their deck. Rose Duelist's biggest weakness is they run so many tribute monsters that they sometimes break. And that has happened right now. So we'll see what happens. Where he comes from, running a lot of high-level monsters doesn't matter because they don't need to tribute. So don't, don't, don't blame the kid too harshly. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, it's it's from the Yu-Gi-Oh! R manga thing. I don't know. Has something to do with, uh, something to do with computer parts. That's why they're all named like that. Alright, let's see here. Oh, there's his card from the actual manga that he used. And we got ourselves a set. Not bad from the Rose Duelist. He's holding advantage for now. Oh boy, that's really good. And Talaya is tributed. The plant becomes an insect. The insect devours the plants. And Clement Osler is in the lead. That's right, everybody. Clement has got this. Clement has got this. The Rose Duelist is scared. Oh, yeah, Dark Hole. They still get to use Verdant Sanctuary, though. They still get to use Verdant Sanctuary. All right. Nope. The viewers tournament is not going to be until next week. Next week, I've been I've been working on it. I, I'm pretty sure I can get it done in time for next weekend. And we're gonna throw. Oh, it's the boss monster, Rosaria. Rosaria is here, everyone, and the damage is good. Twenty nine hundred damage, and that is too damn strong. Rosaria has entered the field. This is the Rose Duelist boss monster. Let's get a close-up. Close-up of the boss monster. It's perfect for their character. 
All right. And the attacks come through. Grass Chopper can attack all of the Howling Insects. It can't survive. He's using his opponent's Tribute Monster against them. It's a super sad position. The Fire Ant Ascator is up there. And we got ourselves a set. And we got ourselves a destruction. And that monster's destruction results in burn, I believe. I could be wrong, but I do not know. Alright, they got they have all of their manga cards in their hands. The burn is good, but Rosaria doesn't care. 2,900 damage goes in, and life is over. Yes, the Rose Duelist has won with their boss monster in game number one. But I, ch I, I saw Clement. He could win that duel. If the Rose Duelist does not have his boss monster or bricks like he did in Battle City, he can win that duel. So we're going to try again. So, let's see what happens in game number two. Will the Rose Duelist fall to Clemeth's new uh, powerful deck? Or will Clemeth fall again to that Rosaria boss monster? Heart of the Cards comes through. We got a lot of monsters here. Howling Insect, Beatron, Ro Resonance Insect, whatever. And we got another set. Yeah, don't worry. There are two Insect Duelists within uh, the Card Professors. And Rosebud. Yep. We got... Oh, he got Rosaria immediately. I don't know if he's going to be able to summon it anytime soon, but he's got it. And I assume he's bricked. He's 100% bricked. Welcome to being the Rose Duelist, everybody. He is bricked. His deck has a lot of bricks, and that Harpies has a lot of value. Maximum value Harpies comes through. He loses all of the best spells and traps in the game, and the damage is too damn good. That was brutal. That Harpies was brutal. So what are we going to do now? We have ourselves a draw. The draw is Lone Fire Blossom. Rosebud has an effect that I do not know about. Rosebud summons Talia. It's gone. Oh, but wait, Lone Fire survives. Talia protects Lone Fire. Lone Fire searches for Talia. 2,900 damage comes through. And this is uh, the end of the duel. Jesus Christ. You should have summoned Talia then. Uh, either way, they would have TT'd. Yeah, they would have TT'd before you can get both at the same time. Uh, you're in some trouble. You're in some trouble. Talia's a problem. Talia's legitimately a problem. Uh, the Rose Girl goes in, surprisingly was able to defeat the opponent's monster. Grass Chopper is in hand, though I don't see a Pinch Hopper to combo with it. Talia's looking real strong. Resonance Insect, I recommend killing monsters. You do not want that thing to have friends on the field. Yes, you do not want... Do not play the Eclipse spell. You don't want that monster to have friends on the field, even though Rose Girl's just going to go back in the hand anyway. It's what she's known for. So, Heart of the Cards, they're going to draw a monster. Let's see what they get. They got Rose Girl for sure. So, if they need a monster, there's one. That's some damage. And Rose Girl is there. So, 2,000 damage comes through. And the game-winning attack is... Wait for it. Grass Chopper. Grass Chopper is not good. Call of the Haunted is going to work. Beatron is here. And with Beatron, we have a tribute. Squall, thank you for subbing. I appreciate that. Enjoy your new emotes. Uh, Grass Chopper can now be used with the equip spell. It can beat Talia. What the fuck? Oh, we got it! It's a Synchro Summon! It's the boss monster! Everyone say hello to Diabolantis! Diabolantis throws away Beatron. The insect armor with laser cannon makes it stronger than Talia. Talia is dead, and there's nothing you can do, Rose Duelist. They may only have 100 life points, but you're out of options. Get him out of here. Rosebud, who the hell cares? Get him out of here. Rose Girl. Oh, it's Rosaria. Rosaria enters the field, but it's not strong enough. Rosaria's effect activates. He lost the buff. Boss versus boss monster. And the winner is the Rose Duelist. It negated all face-up effects, which means he lost the effect of insect armor with laser cannon. And it decided the duel. The Rose Duelist takes down the strongest card in Clemens' deck. Well, that was a good duel. Ah, oh, and it crashed. Damn it. Well, whatever. That, it was such a good duel, it crashed the freaking site. That's fine. I'll fix it right now. Let's go ahead and let's get into the next duel. That was pretty good. That was pretty freaking good. We got to see the best from both of their decks. And at the end of the day, the winner was the Rose Duelist. So, let's go ahead. The next duel is going to be Raiko Kitamori versus Vagrant. Raiko Kitamori is going to be fighting Vagrant. This is the Rare Hunters versus the Card Professors. The Card Professors are having a rough day. 
The card professors are having a rough day. Some of them are showing, like, Grandma showed some skill. Clemeth showed some skill. Ted didn't stand a chance. I'm sorry, Ted. Bandit Keith knows the card professors like the back of his hand. Uh, but maybe Raiko can do something. Maybe Raiko will be the first card professor to actually do good. Or maybe not. Who the hell knows? I, I don't freaking know. These are these are brand new characters. When they're brand new characters, I got no information on them. When I have no information on them, I can't help you guys. Not like you guys accept my help anyway. I always tell you who to vote on, and then, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm rarely wrong. I'm never wrong. That never happens. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go. Let's see these characters in action. Thank you for your patience. Sorry, I had to fix it since it crashed. Uh, let's go find Vagrant. Let's go find uh, Raiko, and let's see these characters duel. All right, Raiko, Kita, Mori versus Vagrant. All right, Vagrant's already got Arch... Okay, well, that's a bad hand. I didn't see his hand until now. That's a bad hand. And she starts off with her Puppet Rook, throwing away Puppet King. Puppet Rook has thrown away the King for a very good reason. Yes, he is a close friend of Kaiba. That is correct. It is a little strange for Kaiba to have friends, but uh, there, it actually will make sense as time goes on. Damage goes through, and they've earned a card called Promotion. Very interesting. And damage goes through, and you're in some trouble there. That That's kind of scary. Um, you need to not draw Summon Skull right now. You need something... Yeah, there you go. That's something you can actually use. Give it the Axe of Despair. Make it punch something in the face. Life is good. The Puppet Rook's effect says, I'm going to summon the king. And we have the boss monster. The puppet It's gone. The Puppet King is gone. That was her boss monster, everybody. That was her strongest card. But Vagrant is known for having a lot of buffing cards, making his cards very powerful. That card can attack directly, though. So that's pretty good. And with promotion, they can do some special summons if they want. And they refuse to do it. They refuse to promote. Even though she has promotion. She's only been playing for a month. She doesn't know what the cards do. Ignore her. And the attack comes through. Magic Cylinder. Did you save Magic Cylinder? What the fuck? I did not know that. Wow, Vagrant, your life points are kind of low. You might want to, you know, might want to be careful. What if she decides to promote herself? Monster Reborn instead? I am kind of surprised. Well, what the fuck? Don't you have a king in there? I'm very confused with this duelist, and I don't know what's going on. You have three promotions in your hand. Use them. Use the... the why are the, Why is all of that in attack mode? What are you doing? I don't care if it does piercing. You had better defense. What, what are you doing? Oh, the attack goes through. The attack... Why would you play them in attack mode? Why? The attack goes through and the attack goes through. I'm completely confused by this character and I do not know why she... Don't, okay, well, there's something. Raiko's an interesting one. That's all I got to say. And we got Archmean Caval Cavalry here now. And that's going to cost him 800. He cannot afford to do that again. Premature Burial comes through, and now she's got her... Oh, that's game. That is her boss monster, and that is enough to end this duel. Vagrant just lost. Axe of Despair gets rid of her card to make sure he doesn't have a weak card. But at the same time, is that Morphine Jar an attack mode? Magic Cylinder almost ended the duel! That was so close to game. And now, that is going to cost you. You playing that Morphine Jar is going to cost you now. I know you were going for game. I Oh, it's over either way. You drew Axe of Despair. It was over either way. The set. Oh, wait. You could have done Piercing. It's over either way. Summon Skull! The Summon Skull is here, everybody. And with an Axe of Despair, there's nothing to fear, as it has 4,000 attack. It's time for Skull the Tormentor. And Skull the Tormentor's friend. Skull with white eye uh, blue eyes. The attack goes through, and Vagrant has won. Well, that sucked. <laughs> All right, well, she needs some more experience with this game because that didn't work at all. Uh, why don't you try that again? I, I don't think that worked out too well for you. Try, try again. Try again. Do something better this time. You're having a, you're having a, a tough time here. Remember, Vagrant used to be a mid-level pro, uh, pro duelist, so don't, don't bet against him just because he's using an Archfiend deck. Well, pot of, uh, Summon Skull deck, but you know what I mean. It has value. I never tested her deck. I didn't have time this week. I've been doing getting all the other stuff ready. Yeah, I, I've been trying to get ready with all the subscriber stuff. It's uh, not subscriber donation decks, and that that takes a long time. Lancer comes through. Warrior Lady goes with that. I have no clue she didn't use promotion simply because the opponent's monster would beat it anyway. I I don't know. There's a chance that uh, she knows how to use it. There's a chance she doesn't know how to use it. We might find out during this duel. 
Summon comes through. Rhoda. Rhoda's pretty nice. Marauding Captain. Very nice. Uh, Exile Force does the job. It's just a really nice card to have. Marauding Captain can get out a Puppet Monster. Puppet Rook is here. Puppet Rook goes in, and that is good damage. Uh, the winner of the first duel was Vagrant. Vagrant had won. Though this duel looks much better for uh, Raikou. And there goes your Puppet Monster. Yep, that's a shame. Sucks that uh, that did not work out for you. So what else you got? Oh no. If you're playing in defense mode, I have to assume you're in a bad situation. So what the hell are you going to do? Lancer Archfiend is here. That can let you do piercing damage, which is very nice since that opponent has very little life points. Or uh, defense ball. Oh, Morphing Jar! I hate that card. I really do. And that's gone. You don't get to summon. Because you hit those two exact cards, you do not get to summon. So what the hell are you going to do? And Raikou gets Puppet Rook, which will go into defense mode, but does get Puppet King. And is just going to have to play defense mode. Because, hey, at least you got King to the Grave. It has a lot of value in there. And Archfiend is like, hey, I don't know about your effect. And your effect is saying, hey, I get to summon King. At least she does that effect when freaking... So what the fuck? When freaking Seto Kaiba doesn't even know how to use Maiden with blue eyes. Which blows my mind. Breaks my heart today. Yami Pegasus is not in today's tournament, no. He told his sons to go get the stuff. 2,800 damage comes through. The damage is massive. Did Vagrant have to attack? I have no clue. Maybe you did have to attack. I, I don't know. Yu-Gi-Oh! We're past my era. We're definitely past my era of Yu-Gi-Oh! I know the Summon Skull cards. I don't know all these Archwing cards. I know the Summon Skull cards. Alright, let's see. We got a lot of monsters. I have no clue why they're in attack mode. Sword just makes enemies dumb, I assume. Uh, he needs to draw a Summon Skull and his Field Spell because he's in a really bad spot right now. And that card can attack directly, but it has to wait for Swords to go away. Monster Aborn, there's a lot of commanders in the graveyard. That is pretty good. No, Yami Pegasus has not appeared in tournament. Pegasus has. And no, we're not going to go for a commander. Instead, we're going to choose a piercing damage monster. And you just gave them two Puppet Kings. Yes. Yes, that was okay. Um, I, I'm very confused. I'm very confused. I don't like this. Premature Burial brings back Exile Force for fun, I assume. And Exile Force goes away. Okay. You paid 800 to hit Eris. Eris is like, thank you. Now I get to search. That is good. If they can draw Summon Skull, they're good. Summon Skull or dead. Oh, that field spell's good too, but it's too late. It's too damn late. Call the Haunter. Archfiend Commander. Axe of the Sparrow. Oh, wait a minute. There's a... Oh, it's the boss monster. Black Skull Dragon. The Black Skull Dragon is on the field. Vagrant has pulled off his boss monster. The strongest card in his fusion deck. With 4,200 attack, it could defeat Obelisk the Tormentor if it had to. That is pretty crazy. And there is no Dark Hole. No Dark Hole top deck. The monster is here. The attack goes through. The monster is safe. The attack goes through. And Vagrant 2 0s Raikou! Both duels with no life points left. I need to sit up for this. I am excited, and that is good. A comeback with a boss monster. You gotta love it, every. It crashed again. What the hell? A comeback with a boss monster is pretty freaking crazy. The professors are dying today. It's almost like they don't even want to win against these super high tier characters. Granted, they're fighting high tier characters. Seto Kaiba's high tier. Uh, Bandit Keith, that's a high level pro. Top 8 pro right there. Um, Vagrant, a mid level pro. I mean, just a pro duelist in general is scary. So, Rose Duelist, I mean, he finally did something, let's be real. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this. The next duel is going to be Cedar Mill. Another one of the professors. This is the second highest ranking professor versus uh, Sarah Taker. Cedar Mill versus Sarah Taker, everybody. Everyone place your bets on who you believe is going to win. I'm going to go find these characters as we speak. And then we get to watch them in action. And hopefully they do something fancy. 
So for those of you that missed the intro, Cedar Mill's boss monster was a little bit surprising. Their boss monster was Cyber Tech Alligator, but we'll see what happens. Um, against Sarah, because Sarah Taker's boss monster is horrifying. That's Seeker. We're Cedar. I need Cedar, not Seeker. Or Sarah. Sorry, Sarah. There she is. Yep. And TT comes through. The machine assembly line gets something. Heart of the underdog is there. Um, let's see what happens. Goblin zombie, not so much. And we got another one. 1800 attack comes through, and that is good. That's about it. Just 1800 attack. A heart of the underdog. He drew ally of justice. Cost a lot. Uh, you know, I don't know. He drew a monster. That name is weird. He drew Overdrive, Symbols of Duty, throws away Overdrive to steal, get back Mechanical Chaser. Mechanical Chaser defeats the gets his Magic Cylinder to meet All right, you're having a little trouble there, Cedar. You need to think about this. Your deck's having some rough times, and if they Tribute Summon, you're in trouble. So for the love of... Oh, dear God, you're in trouble. You're just in trouble. All right, Ill Bud is here, the mini boss of all of the decks, and Limit Removal will do its job. The problem is the trap. She actually drew it. The duel is over. The second we saw that trap, we could say the duel is over. Heart of the Underdog, we have Guardian of the Throne Room. What else we got? Come on, show me more. Yes, we knew that. Get, give us more. Ah, that's it. All right. And we got Harpy's Feather. Yeah, it doesn't work. I, I would get excited, but it doesn't work. Terrible use. Uh, he tried, though. He, uh, he at least tried. He didn't realize he was up against a Taker. Everyone in the Taker family is freaking crazy. There was the old high-ranking pro, uh, I mean, there was the old King of Games, Prana Taker, the old high-ranking pro, Reina Taker, and of course, Sarah Taker from the past. And now we got the Eldritch card, and we got the Beater Monsters, and we're gonna go, yeah, you have no life points. Sir, you have no, sir, sir, your life points. Sir, your life points are very low. Do something about it. Please do something about it. Heart of the Underdog. Inpachi's not gonna help. You need Cyber Tech Alligator. If you think I'm joking, you need it. Find a way to summon it. All right, Guardian, you have all three. I saw you have all three, but we don't count it because Heart of the Underdog. Uh, Mechanical Chaser, yep. Any GX characters? We probably do. I have no clue, but we probably do just because there's such a big mix of characters today. Maybe not. I don't know. Double Heart of the Underdog. His life points are kind of low. I think she's got him. I think she officially got him. All right, here we go. Goblin Zombie for game. The damage is in. Oh, my God. You live with 100 life points. What is he going to do with 100 life points? Anything? Anything? Dark Hole! They top deck Dark Hole! Cedar got it, everybody! And Goblin Zombie will make sure they have a monster. That's a pretty good monster. Machine Assembly Line is used to get back Mechanical Chaser. They need to go for maximum damage. The maximum damage is not enough. They don't have enough to end the duel. They have nothing. It was such a good top deck, but we'll see what happens. There's no spell or trap. How is she supposed to get back Eldritch? And there's only 50 damage. Oh no, that's not enough damage. Thank you for partnership. I appreciate that. You guys are amazing. Thank you, Vidal. Always good to see you. No, it's symbols of duty. Eldritch is on the wrong side of the field. The Golden Lord has been stolen. Sarah Taker, what happened? With 50 life points left, Cedar Mill of the Professors, the second strongest professor, has won. That was the close. There was a 100 life point comeback today. That was even closer. Today has been a good day for duels. If you like good, tight duels, today is the day. I got, prof I got partnership last weekend, or two weeks, week and a half. I don't know. It it's on my YouTube. I that the date is on my YouTube. All right, so she did not draw any spells or traps, dear God. Oh, no, that's a really bad start for her. Goblin Zombie can thin out her deck, at least. Mechanical Chaser, that's all he loves. Oh, Mechanical Chaser is all he cares about. Cedar Mill with 50 goddamn life points has made this duel very scary for Sarah. Sarah used to be a high-ranking pro duelist, but now she's struggling against the second strongest card professor. That card can get you ill, bud. Premature Burial comes through. Goblin Zombie gets you. Ill Bud. Ill Bud is not one to be messed with. He is a real one. Ill Bud goes in. The Chaser is done. And Ill Bud can start special summoning next turn. 
So, the mini boss is doing its job. In Pachi. Creature seizure! Ill Bud's on the wrong side of the field! If you lose monsters, Ill Bud can steal them! Oh no! That is the worst thing he could have stolen from you because now he can get your monsters that go to the grave. He can eat, he can literally eat them. And, oh, but that will save you. That actually saved you. needed that. You super needed that. Holy crap. Mechanical Chaser comes through and that's a lot of damage. Yep, Mechanical Chaser's too big of a beater for that weak monster. But we'll see what happens. And... Zombie Master. Interesting. I wasn't expecting zombie. Oh, that's why. Because there was already one in the grave. And with 50 more damage, the Paladin takes out the monster. Zombie Master goes for 18. That's another card that all of the takers love is Zombie Master. Every single one of them uses Zombie Master. Illbud and Zombie Master. And we have ourselves a set, everyone. This is really, really bad for Cedar Mill. They had no draw power this game, so they had no chance of getting new cards. And Pot of Greed means more Paladin. Zombie Master means more cards on top of that. Triple Paladin! What will you do about all three of them? The three Paladins go in for insane damage. And the duel is almost over. How will Cedar come back? And no, don't say Dark Hole. I swear to God, do not say Dark Hole. We'll see what happens. Harpies is not Dark Hole, so it's over. Har what the fuck? Oh, Goblin Zombies effect. Good play. Good play. All right. Well, we got Goblin Zombie, which will let her search a card. Very smart. Yes, everyone in chat, you're very funny. You're not totally making me upset. <laughs> All right. Ill Bud is gone, and it looks like Old Cedar here did not draw anything. No spells, no traps, and there's an Ill Lich. You don't even need it, but you have it. Ill Lich goes to the grave, and we got... Okay, you got five monsters now. What do you want? Oh, well, you throw yourself away to summon Ill Bud. Very nice. Attack comes through. Wow, if you didn't get Ill Bud, he had 19! He had 19 defense! The attack goes through, and the winner is Sarah Taker. All right, everyone, we're going to be moving into game number three. Will he be able to get his Heart of the Underdog to make his deck viable? Or will Sarah Taker get her Zombie Master combo and make it super strong and fast? All right. Oh, she has a great hand. That is great. The fact that she even has one Eldritch already, a great hand. Uh, what is that? It gave him X Head Cannon. That's all I need to know. X Head Cannon is on the field. And Eldritch is here. Eldritch gets rid of X Head Cannon. And the guard is there. And Pachi will survive for now. So, what are you, uh, what, what are you getting? What you, what you do? Oh, his boss monster is gone. He had Cybertech Alligator and it's gone. I, I apologize to all Cybertech Alligator fans out there. All two of you. It's gone. Also, another Eldritch has been drawn. And that's damage. And that's damage. And that's, it's over, dude. It's, it's over. There's no chance. She got a great hand this time around. He lost his boss. He has to draw his boss right now. It's as bad as it could be. He has an Impachi and it's scared. His Impachi is horrified. It doesn't know what to do. Gurnia, are you going to summon it? Oh, no, we're going to go for Eldlich. Yep, Eldlich the Golden Lord to end this duel. The attack... Oh, Justy Break! The Golden Lord is dead! Cybertech Alligator is possible! Or two beater monsters. Let's see what happens. Cedar Mill is still in the duel. He summons Cybertech Alligator. 27... Bacon Saver! Everyone, if you love bacon, it just saved her. So, 2700 damage will not be dealt. She needs spells and traps. There you go! With Call of the Haunted, we're going to end this duel. Call of the Haunted brings back Eldlich to the hand, which means it summons itself on the field. Eldlich on the field has a massive 3500 attack stat. And Cybertech Alligator didn't stand a chance. So, uh, yeah. What now? What you going to do now, Cedar? You're the second strongest professor. You got to think of something. All right, X head cannon for damage. That is the best thing you could think of. You know what? If she doesn't top deck a monster, it wasn't terrible. Ah, uh, well, yeah, she did. Yep, she drew her scales. And for those of you that have forgotten, that is hers. She runs the scales. So this duel's over. He doesn't. It doesn't matter. He doesn't run anything that can save him other than Dark Hole, and then she can just wait for a trap card. Overdrive is gonna overrun the scales, but the damage is already too good. If she draws any monster, it's over. Any single monster in her deck. Well, 
Except the third Eldritch. She drew all three this duel. I didn't expect her to draw all three. That that's just that's just unlucky. In this case, it's unlucky. Alright. Machine assembly line must be used. There's no other play. Cybertech will return, but it's not strong. It's gonna crash. Oh my god, it's gonna crash. I can't believe there was a card. Um, 100 life points left, but she just draws a Speller Trap. Zombie Master? Yep, Zombie Man. Wait, Zombie Master's effect. You throw away Eldritch, you bring back... Pa Wait, was Paladin not used in this duel? That was the last duel? Oh, crap! Wait a minute. No, he did come back with 50. Oh, Heart of the Underdog! If she doesn't draw anything, she, he could probably get what she needs. Oh, it's over. It's over. You all thought it would be fun. Nah, you thought she'd lose. It's Sarah Taker. Come on. Why'd you think she'd lose? Did you forget who you were watching? 3,500 damage goes in. Where's his bacon saver? Oh, man. And that is it, everybody. Eldlich has done it. Sarah Taker has done it. Cedar Mill, another card professor, the second strongest, is gone. But we did see a lot of potential in their deck. If they didn't have to fight a pro-level duelist, maybe they would have done something. The next duel in today's tournament will be, once I can find them, the next duel in today's tournament will be Strings versus Yami Yugi. Everybody, let's get it going. We got ourselves a plot duel. Strings versus the king of games. He's not the king of games, but, you know, everyone wants to call him that. Yeah. He's the pharaoh. So, let's see what happens. Who's going to win this one? Uh, both characters have received buffs. Make, to make sure the duel stays interesting, both characters have received buffs. So we're going to see what happens. Who's going to win? And wow, no spells, no traps for the Pharaoh. They just got a bunch of freaking uh, spellcasters. And one of those spellcasters gets you a spell or trap. So never mind, I was incorrect. All right, the powerful emote is being used in chat. All right. And we got ourselves a bunch of sets. That's completely fine. Anything else you got up your sleeve, Yami Yugi? You already drew your boss monster, and we're going to use it. We got ourselves the trap card. Dark Magician is summoned from the hand. And, duh, the fuck are you? And we have an Illusion Magician getting Dark Magician to the hand. And we got another one of these monsters. Dark Magic Attack! Oh, my God! There's no trap card to stop Yami Yugi! Yami Yugi destroys the Revival Jam. And he's going in. And he's hurting. Apprentice Illusion Magician has done it. A new card. We might as well get a close close view. Who are you? Oh, I know who you are. Never mind. Yep, there you go. Revival Jam has returned and Strings is it's too slow. It's it, Strings deck is too damn slow. He can't keep up with this. Yugi started with a crazy top deck. And the attack goes through. You can't pay a thousand. The attack goes through. Mud the Grizzly is going to try and save the day, but I don't think you have enough attack points to save the day. And that is game with his boss monster, Dark Magician of Chaos. He has won. We are now going to be moving on to game number two, and we're going to see just what happens when you piss off the Pharaoh. Strings, you need to... Honestly, I don't know. You need to You need to get your better... Tra no, he Dark Magic attacked. Um... I don't know. If he gets Dark Magic Attack, I don't know what to tell you. You got good back row. But if he pops your back row, there's nothing you can do. Alright. We'll see what happens. Alright, we got a Magician's Robe. We got Skilled Dark. We got stuff. Yeah, that's fine. We got ourselves a 2k Defender. That's plenty of defense points. And what do you got? That's a very good card for Strings. That's a very good combo for Strings. Um, yeah. And the robe is going to throw away a spell card in order to special summon a Dark Magician. That is an interesting play. Dark Magician's already on the field. Oh, that's a scary play as well. And the attack's going to come through, but Revival Jam can get use out of that card of safe return. Um, I really hope that Strings gets his better spells and traps. He's not going to survive much longer. This guy's a little fast for him. Revival Jam, give him more power. Draw power! Dark Renewal? No. That's illegal. 
But that's illegal. You can't do that. No, he just got that. Oh, boss monster. All right, well, beat Yugi's boss monster. You got draw power. Okay, you have a trap. There's a chance. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, there's still a chance. You're probably fine. It's probably fine. I'm just, I'm freaking out for nothing. Oh, no. Oh, thank God. He doesn't know how to use breaker. That could have been worse. It could have been much worse. Oh, wait. Spirit Creed. That works. Spirit Creed and totally works. If uh, you survive the turn, it's not going to work. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead, Jim. He's dead. There's nothing you can do. Absolutely game over. No chance in this world. And 2,800 attack. Yep. Yep. That's, uh... I, I don't know why he didn't summon an attack mode when he had the choice, but, uh... It's fine. It's, it's over. A new trap card. All right. Breaker can't be summoned, so there is some hope that that new trap card will do something. Um, attacks go through. Spare Crean again does not... Does it work? Oh, no. Wait, you have a banishing card. Oh my god, you have a banishing card! It's not gonna infinite loop! You can't loop the king! <laughs> you can't loop him! Dark Magician goes in! And Dark Magic Attack ends duel number two. That is the end of the duel, everybody. I'm afraid that Strings has fallen as fast as a character can fall. Even with He had an infinite loop and still fell. All right, well, let's get out of that. That was way too quick. Already getting into our next duel, as if that didn't just happen. And now we are going to uh, move in to the next characters. The next characters are Loomis and Umbra versus Richie Marked. For those of you that have forgotten, Richie is the number one uh, card professor, the owner of the Dark Duel Disc, and the Dark Duel Disc allows cheating. The Dark Duel Disc allows cheating. So we're going to see what happens between these two characters. First things first, though, where the hell are they? I got to find them. Loomis, Umbra, there you are. And where are they? Where are they? There they are. So let's go ahead and let's do this, guys. If Richie loses, then all the card professors are done. Like, there's literally going to be no one left. So let's uh, set up these characters. We got Loomis and Umbra. We got Richie. We're going to see which one's better. Richie's already on the other side of the screen. Loomis and Umbra needs a little more time. He does have to take on two duelists at the same time, so we'll see what happens. Uh, they already have their ritual monster if they want it. That's a really good start for Loomis and Umbra. The attack goes through. It's not nearly enough. It's actually kind of pathetic. Uh, I've never seen an AI do that, and it scares me. I've never seen an AI do that where the, the sets are in a weird position. And a spell card says no. You have no effect. Spell card says you don't have an effect, sir. No, you're not getting your boss monster. Also, that card's like, hey, I have an idea. I'm just going to draw two cards. Also, Trap says no. We do 300 damage. Oh, God. Premature Burial comes through. We got Shining Abyss. The good news is you got rid of the magical card. The problem is you didn't get to search for your ritual monster, which means your deck's in a worse position. Harpies! Okay, you're in a terrible position. You're in such a bad position. You're, you're going to die. The attack comes through. The magical musket man is going to do its job. Funny enough, his cards don't exist, but he needed a gun deck because he's a gunslinger deck, so, uh... Oh, he top-decked it! The crazy man actually did it! He top-decks his boss monster, and the mass beast has risen! The mass beast is on the field, the magical musketeer doesn't stand a chance, and 1,500 damage is here. What, you don't believe in Loomis and Umbra? They got some of the strongest beaters in the game. All right, we're going to just go ahead and set. That's sad. If you're just setting, I'm, I feel bad for you. You're. Oh, he could get that one if he wants it. He can have either or. Until he draws another monster, it's either or. You know what? Normally, I'd say that's terrible. But if they draw Dark Hole or something, well, no, not Dark Hole, but if they draw something to, like, stop you, that card dying is not the worst thing in the world. The Mass Beast Desgardius is your strongest. That is the strongest card they own. Uh, they obviously shouldn't have done it. They needed two monsters, but it's the strongest card they own, and it has a. It, it's basically Dark Necrofear. It's a worse Dark Necrofear. 
All right. Well, we have a set. We have two traps. Lots of fun. You're going to need to do something. Oh, look. There's the card you'd never want to draw. So in a mass deck, that is the card you never want to draw. And you drew it. The attack comes through, and it's gone. And it looks like Richie Merc is about to become the Merc. And we're going to see. Shit. Lots of back row not using a single one of them. That's really bad. Oh, there's Grand Tiki Elder for game. All you have to do is creature swap. Yep. AI understood the idea. And game winning attack. Wait! Blast with Chain! Give them attack points! They're still in the duel! Richie is not an original character. He is from the manga. Richie is from the manga. And the attack comes through. That's not enough attack. Well, this card has an effect. It has 2,400 attack. Richie has a card like that, but he can't work with it because his monsters are too weak. Mass Beast Desgardius is much stronger. And Mask of the Accursed could end the duel without needing an attack. It was over. Lewis and Umbra, we're going to knock out every single card professor. We are going to knock out every single one of them. Yeah, if you want to see original characters, wait till next week when all the donation decks come in. So let's go ahead, let's get into game number two, and let's see if Loomis and Umber can top deck that Mass Beast again, because that was super good. Come on, come on, beat the number one guy. Beat the number one character, leave them with nothing. Oh, they already have it. Oh god, that's so good. They need the spell, though. They do need to get the spell. Uh, Mystic Tomato is very nice. And we're going to see what happens. And the attacks come through. 200 damage is there. Mystic Tomato goes through. Mystic Tomato gets Grand Tiki Elder. Grand Tiki Elder is good. Anybody else want to play? Nope. Did not. He needs to. He got the wrong Mass Beast for this situation. He really got the wrong Mass Beast. And he did not crash while he had the chance. So that means. Oh, no. Oh, it's the boss monster. All right, everybody. It is the magical musket master. Mine. Zakiel. It's Zakiel. It's Zakiel. I don't know what it does, but it, it's 2,500 attacks. So we'll see. Mystic Tomato returns out of fear. Without You need a Mass Beast card to beat it. The kill's too big for you, so you need a Mass Beast card. Monster Aborn comes through. We're stealing Shining Abyss. Uh, if you need monsters, I guess, yeah. Shining Abyss will do. Nope, you have a monster. Okay. Grand Tiki didn't stand a chance. Mystic Tomato didn't stand a chance. Mystic Tomato gets Tomato. Shining Abyss. Mystic Tomato didn't stand a chance. And Mystic Tomato gets... Okay, last chance. Either draw your spell card or draw Mass Beast Desgardius. That's your only hope. You know what? That's a good spell that I didn't even think about. Did not even think about. Blast with Chain again. Sucks to see it happen, but it happened. Mystic Tomato is gone. Mystic Tomato gets Grand Tiki. Mask of the Accursed is the best thing you can do. Yes, the monster is now stuck. That is Nightmare Wheel, but spell version. Zakiel is stuck. And it's been tributed for Ma Zakiel... God damn! This guy got rid of Zakiel for Zakiel? He can't lose! It's Zakiel O'Neal! Oh no! The damage is too good. He's lost every single monster. All you could do is draw your spell or you lose. That's that's it. That's it. That's game. That's it. One more card. And he's got it. He drew all three. By the way, that we can count that. That was not search. We can count that. He drew all three of those. All right, attack goes through, and damage is good. The winner is Richie Merked. Richie Merked has done it. We're going into game three, everybody. Anybody that's a big fan of the other character, you can cry now. You can use the angry Taya face. She's a follower face, so you don't even need to sub for that one. Let's try this again. Oh, that hand is garbo! That hand is so bad. You'd never want to draw that mass card. And the other cards are worthless. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Thank God they didn't set swords. Thank God they didn't play swords. All right. Well, anyone that's a fan of Lumis and Umbra, they got the worst hand possible. So you're going to need to have a lot more than just faith today. 1,500 attack comes through from a monster with a paragraph of, of an effect. So I'm not even going to look at it. Uh, what else you got? Monju's good. Monju is very good. Harpies, uh, yes, Harpies exist. You need to use Monju's effect, though. You need it. Uh, let's see. What are we going to get? You're not getting anything. That card says no. That card says you don't get shit. So now, okay, swords will save you. You have swords. 
Swords is good. They already used Harpies, so unless they get their MST... Oh, they wouldn't use MST on Swords because the AI is hor programmed horribly. Um, yeah. So the Magical Musketeers are going to build up their front line while Swords is here. And Mask of Dispel does not work. Not unless your opponent plays a Continuous or Field Spell. Or Trap. Ugh. That's... You're only drawing your spells and traps. You need your monsters. Oh, you need Grand Tiki Elder. Okay, there is a chance. If they draw Grand Tiki Elder or Melkid, they can get their boss. And their boss will control the duel like it did in game number one. This is it. No! Stop drawing your mask cards. You need two. Oh, what is that? No! There's a freaking Saku! That deck has a Saku in it? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Come on. Give him a break. Holy crap. Well, that's, uh, that's a big shame. I have never seen such a bad break from the Loomis and Umbra combo. They usually do pretty good in tournaments, so I'm sad for them. Um, yeah. We're going to have to say GG on that one. Thank you all for watching. Let's let's get out of here. So one of the card professors has survived so far. The number one card professor has survived. And it's only because his opponent never got out the big boys, except for the first duel where he did, and then it was over. So let's go ahead and let's get into the next fight of the tournament. The next fight in the tournament is Kirk Dixon, another one of the card professors versus Seeker. Kirk Dixon versus Seeker, everybody. Let's see what happens. Were we going to see Exodia today? The answer is no, because he's a terrible Exodia user, but we'll find out. He only had one good tournament with Exodia. Only one. Kirk Dixon is Machina. That is correct. And he's actually a pretty good deck, but he got ruined by Bandit Keith last time we saw him. Which is not a fair... That's not a fair assessment, in my opinion. That's that's just a rude assessment. Alright. Sorry. Getting their faces. Just having trouble finding Mr. Kirk. Old Captain. And Machina already. That's pretty good. Seeker winning the whole thing. And did you not just see what happened? <laughs> did you not just see what happened? Do you not see what this Machina man is cooking? And Iron Call gets rid of the monster you never should have Iron Called anyway, unless you were going to put it in attack mode. And it looks like Seeker can set, but he's got no draw power just yet. Seeker's in a little bit of a bad position. We got Mach and a Sniper. Oh, he only has pieces of Exodia in his hand. He would only set that, he would only set that if he had multiple copies in his hand. Therefore, he has nothing. Unless he already has four different pieces. And then he had a copy. There's a chance. Ah, well... Unless that's pot of greed, it's over. It's over. It's over, folks. You can go home now. Uh, this man might be a little too fast for an Exodia deck. Yeah, he's got the dark version of Sniper and the regular version on the field right now. Looking, st there's, They're back to back. And that is it, everyone. That is it. Mr. Machina Man Kirk Dixon from the manga has taken game number one. Seeker, where's your draw power? You have Reckless, you have Pot, you have Graceful, you have Upstart, you have you have every card in the game. Every single one. But you are running Triple Exodia, which has been known to brick. And it has bricked you. Alright, so you already have Machina Fortress. Beautiful hand. As long as he starts with that card, he's good. And this card's also good, because it lets you do this. Yep, very good. Alright, Seeker, you're not known for attacking your opponents, so uh, let's see what you end up doing. You got a trap this time. That could be good. Could be bad. Could be good. I don't know. Iron Call. Nope. Not level four. Call the Haunted. Yep. You could do that. And that is good or not. Attack goes through. And limit or removal. We're going for 5,000 damage. And you know what? That's fine. Going for 5k damage. Why the hell not? You're supposed to win this duel as quickly as you can, right? And Jar of Greed is going through. So what are you going to do? Are you scared, Seeker? See what the fuck? Seeker? Seeker headbutts his opponent! He has no draw power. He only drew Exodia pieces. He's running the triple Exodia. He's gonna die by the triple Exodia. Alright, Pot O'Greed to fix his hand. Iron Call can fix... Oh, Ties of the Brethren can fix it. Dark Hole is the only thing that could stop Exodia. The headbutt does not flinch the opponent. Iron Call comes through... Or not, no, that's not Iron Call. He didn't Iron Call? For 1800 attack? Maybe I'm wrong. 
All right, let's see what you end up doing. Graceful, he can get started. He threw away Graceful. I saw him do it. Did you all see that? Did all of you see that? He threw away Graceful. He threw away Graceful. Oh my God. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Why are you punching him? He slapped him. He used the forbidden slap. I didn't know you were allowed to use the forbidden slap. I thought they banned that. Oh no, Machina. Machina Defender. Iron Call, finally. Jesus Christ, why did that take so long? All right, attack comes through. Damage is good. Attack comes through. Damage is good. The duel will be over next turn. If Seeker won by battle, it'd blow my mind. The, his deck is 90% Exodia. It can't win by battle. Dark Hole. La okay, Dark Hole it is. All right, anything else, Seeker? Jesus Christ, Seeker. Do something, man. You got fans. You got a fan. Oh, it's over. Rat will end it. The giant rat goes in. The game-winning attack is good. And Seeker is dealt with. All right, everyone. Two card professors have advanced. There are two card professors that have advanced. Too many Exodia pieces. All right. Well, get rid of old Kirk. Get rid of old Seeks. And let's get back into our tournament. So let's go ahead and see what's next. The next characters in today's tournament will be another card professor, Deshuitz Lu, the lowest ranking professor. This professor has the worst record and he's going up against the leader of the rare hunters, Yami Merrick, the number one rare hunter, the man who could have taken Battle City if it wasn't for like seven lucky coin flips that all landed on heads. Anyone that was at Battle City saw that horrifying moment happen. So let's watch and let's see. Tommy Merrick and Deshuitz Lu. Both characters are ready to duel and I'm gonna go ahead and watch. He does have his boss monster early, so he has a pretty decent situation if he protects his cards. Uh, we're going to see what happens. We got New Dor Well, that's not something you want to... You know what? New Doria could beat Castlegate. It's a funny thing to say out loud, but it can happen. Uh, that card is not going to have any value this turn. Yeah, I hate Deshuitz Lu as much as the next guy, but he is a card professor and he had to be here today. So we're going to get ourselves a Castle Gate in defense mode, and I don't know if Merrick's going to know how to deal with that. So I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried that Merrick not know, might not know what to do. Yurigito is here, but Yurigito might not know what to do either. Um, yeah. Have fun, Merrick. Figure it out. <clears throat> Figure it out. Castle Gate remains. You need to somehow kill your own Nudoria in battle. Hollowed Life Barrier says no. Also, you're getting jacked. Brain jacked. All right, Yurigito is on the correct side of the field now. Oh, you could have used New Doria. You could have used New Doria. That was your shot. You blew your one shot, you fool. Oh, God, why is that in attack mode? I forgot you don't know how to do shit with Castle Gate. Oh, God. Oh, God, someone stop him. Giant Germ, New, uh, new, new Doria, New Doria. Oh, no. Look what they did to his boy. Oh, what the hell? It's the Wing Dragon of Raw! Why? Oh, wait. Lou wins! Lou wins! Castle Gates! Activate! Yami Merrick loses! Yes! It's just like Tag Force! Yes! You all laughed at him! You all laughed at Lou! Lou Pickles is going to win today's duel. All right. Let's go into game number two. Let's go into game two. Oh, I'm excited. I'm so excited. You all, you all thought Lou would lose. You thought Lou would lose. Oh, no. All right. All right. And let's see what happens next. Yurigito, Yurigito comes through. The winner was Lou. The loser was Merrick. 
Uh, yeah, you can't beat that monster. You, you, there's no point in doing what you just did. You can't beat that monster. And we have a tribute. It's time for the Egyptian God Slime. All right. Oh, no. Yami Merrick is setting up to lose the duel again. He has the Winged Dragon of Raw in his hand. And the Ancient Chance has been used. We have it. It's the Winged Dragon of Raw. It has 11,400 attack. There is no card stronger than the Winged Dragon of Raw right now. Egyptian God Slime has been stolen to end the duel. Yami Merrick is about to get buried. Here comes the game winning attack. It's over. You lost. You lose. You thought lose sucked. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Yami Merrick never made those mistakes at Battle City, but against a burn deck, he has no chance. That is it, everybody. The winner is Lou Pickles. All right, Deshuit's Lou has done it. The Rare Hunters will now have to work. All the members of the Rare Hunters will now have to pull in over to put in overtime to make up for Merrick's uh, greed. He did summon the strongest monster of today by 11,400 something. I don't remember. A lot, a lot of attack. 11,400 attack. All right. So let's go ahead and get back into our bracket. Let's see. Deshu, it's Lou. And let's see. Yes, Raw is gone. Raw is gone. The next duel is Merrick Ishtar. Thank you so much, Vidal. Very kind of you. Very good subs for everybody. We're almost at 200 now. Merrick Ishtar versus another new character, Mendocino. Mendocino. All right. Mendo, Mendo, Mendo. Where are you? You are a new character, so I need time to find you. Oh, gotcha. All right, Mendocino is ready to duel. This is the other insect duelist of the... Uh, so this is an insect duelist of the of the card professors, and he's taking on Merrick. Now, this Merrick ain't so evil. This Merrick's actually trying to stop all the evilness. He wants people to be good. So we'll see if that actually happens today. Mendocino versus Merrick. We got Flying Kamakiri, we got Chain Energy, and we got some fun stuff. Uh, Mendo is a new character. His deck may have showed up before, but he has not. And his deck has a lot of improvements, because his opponent, uh, his uh, last guy did not use the same deck exactly. He just used the same monsters. And that Harpies kind of just crippled him horribly. That Harpies was very sad. Alright, Flying Kamakiri comes through. 1400. This is, yes, yeah, so if you like insect decks, this is probably your last chance to see an insect deck win a duel. Granted, Merrick is not an easy opponent, so don't expect him to win a duel. Merrick is going to gain a thousand life points, easily destroying the Flying Kamakiri number two. And Flying Kamakiri gets out a new monster, everybody. Say hello to the Guard Mantis with 2400 defense, which does not stop the boss monster End of Anubis. End of Anubis is going to kick your butt. All right, Merrick is here with his giant germ, his end of Anubis, his magic cylinder. Hold up, Merrick. You, your opponent bought himself a turn. What happened to Tanaka? What are you? It's been a year. A lot has changed. You want to know what happened to Tanaka? You got to wait. Uh, all we have is a set. That's it. Giant germ. We can go for vanity. Yes. Now you can no longer special summon. And with this, the graveyard is locked and the field is all normal summons. Merrick has full control right now. He has the perfect setup. And we have ourselves a trap. A trap card is the one thing that can stop these creatures. Let's see if they end up stopping them. Attack goes through. Nope. Attack goes through. Nope. Game winning attack goes through. And Merrick Ishtar has won. Merrick takes down Sino in game number one. But there's still a chance for the Insect Duelist. All right. And let's see. No confirmations on anything. If you want to learn more about the story, you have to wait until the story unfolds. The winner of that duel was Merrick Ishtar. 
And Mystic Tomato is here. Mystic Tomato is going to be a very nice start, especially when you already have End of Anubis. That's hilarious that you're willing to use Insect Armor with Laser Cannon. And your Agito's like, yeah, nice try, fool. <laughs> yeah, you used your spell card and you got no value out of it. Yes. The answer to that is yes. The End of Anubis is here. Flying Kamakiri is about to be locked. The thing about Flying Kamakiri is effect activates in the grave, therefore it cannot activate as the grave is locked down. As long as Merrick's boss is on the field, the grave does not work. Oh, it's gone. Okay, you can use your grave again. Go ahead. Go have fun, Sen uh, Sino. Mendo Sino. Do your thing. Flying Kamakiri, Call of the Haunted. Yep, you can do that now. Call of the Haunted comes through. We got 2,800 damage. And 2,800 damage puts Merrick in a tight spot. So, we got traps. We got Flying Kamakiris. We got life. Another end of Anubis is here, but it's not going to do much. A Dark Hole is kind of nice, you know, you get to get rid of those annoying floater cards. No one wants them. And Morphing Jar is going to fix both their hands, which means anything can happen. And we got ourselves Call of the Haunted on Flying Kamakiri. And Beatron and Kamakiri are going to Morphing Jar. The whole duel's about to change, everybody. They both lost their boss monsters that way. And Yuragito comes to save the day thanks to that Morphing Jar play. Verding Sanctuary means he'll always have card. No, oh, he wants a special summon. And Flying Kamikiri comes through. He's got lots of tributes, but he needs to get to his next turn to tribute summon. Now we're going to see what happens next. We got some pretty good cards here. Magic Cylinder is going to hurt. There goes your life points. I would set Giant Germ or Mystic Tomato because you're in a bad spot. Yeah, you should have set that. Oh, my God. Okay. Every single card is dead now. Every single card is dead. So, open field, who's going to win? Mr. Insect Man or this guy? Insect Man has Guard Mantis where a thousand attack doesn't work. Mel Reflex Slime says no. Try again next time, buddy. Pepperidge Farm remembers. I like that. Oh, we got Tribute Summon, don't we? No more Special Summons! The Special Summons are locked down, which means that our opponent here, uh, Mendocino's in a lot of trouble. Merrick has not been seen since the last Underground Tournament, and he's actually still rocking it with his deck. His deck has not really gone through any improvements, but it's always been a solid deck, so it's just, it's just real good. It's just doing its job. Pinch Hopper doesn't work. You got locked. Vanity says no. Anybody that's ever had to face a Vanity deck knows that it's just the most annoying thing in the world. It hurts. It's like fighting a Royal Oppression deck. They just don't do it. Bot of Greed comes through. You already used Dark Hole, I think, so the game's over. Merrick, you are crazy. This is a pretty old school deck. You are crazy to be winning with it. And the attack goes through. Goki Pawn is gone. And with Goki Pawn gone, Merrick... Oh, there's Praying Mantis. Yep. And Merrick Ishtar is almost going to win this duel. He just needs 400 burn, but burns more about what... Uh, you know, burns more what the other Merrick does, even though the other Merrick kind of burned himself. Vanity isn't a deck. It's a deck. It's a deck. There's like three Vanity monsters and trap cars. It's a deck. You could, uh, if I count, if I count two clowns or three clowns as a deck, then it's a deck. And there we go, everybody. That's it. The winner is Merrick Ishtar. Merrick 2 0s his opponent. The Insect Boys are gone. One of the Insect Boys got out the Synchro Monster, but that didn't even work. The Rose Duelist was ready for it. And Merrick was ready for anything. He's, his deck just said no Yu-Gi-Oh. So let's go ahead and let's see what happens in the next duel. The next duel of today's tournament will be Odeon Ishtar, Merrick's brother, versus Gecko Tenma. Odeon has gone through some buffs since the last time we've seen him. And Gecko Tenma is in the same boat where he's gone through some buffs. So we're going to hope to see something special from these guys. So, Gecko, Odeon, let's see what you can do. Gecko, for those of you that don't know, is one of the brothers or of, uh, uh, sorry, is one of the sons of Pegasus, which means he does have a wicked god. All right, Odeon Ishtar. That's correct. No food today, apparently. Um, Odeon's on the field. Where's the other guy? Shit, now I forgot. Who's the other guy again? I completely forgot. Wicked God Gecko. Thank you. Brain, turned off. Turn back on, please. Got to find a way to turn off and turn on my brain. It'll work that way. All right. Giant Germs are here, but without the spell card, that card in Odeon's hand is worthless. It is Gecko. And we got ourselves a trap card. That's really nice. 
Dark Hole says no. Bountiful Artemis isn't going to be so bountiful, I'm afraid. Giant Germs are gone, but that's a-okay. Odeon Ishtar is going to need some good plays to come back right now. Marsh McCart in attack mode. I hate to see it. I personally hate to see it. Night Assailant actually benefits the opponent. It makes it easier. He thinned out his deck and has a higher chance of getting his Wicked God now. So that's not good. Marsh McCon is doing its thing. Mystical Beast is a brick until he can actually get his card, but Swords will do the job. Swords will hold the field while Night Assailant cries. He just needs to get his Temple of the Kings and he can get his boss monster. Harvest Angel is here. Next turn, we might see a different boss monster, which would be very scary. And here it comes. A tribute set. Really, we're going to tribute. You don't want to tribute set that. Oh, God says no. If you got it in, if you got the emote, you might as well use it. Because God says no. Absolutely not. And Synthetic Token comes through. So that's another tribute if he wants it. Come on, do it for the fans. All right, nope, we got more Harvest stuff. Waiting for Swords to go away. Odeon cheated. Well, Odeon can't use that monster until he actually gets his... Uh... Oh, negate attack, and there's no more place to summon tokens, so the token will not be summoned. Uh, yeah. Swords is about to run out, so draw your temple or die, because that monster will die the second it flips. The second that monster flips, you lose the duel, Odeon. You are going to lose the duel. <clears throat> No! It's not gonna work! He already lost his weak monsters! Negate attack again! Leave him alone! Oh man, that's a bummer. Odeon did not get his card in time! It's the Wicked Dreadrood! Wait a minute! It weakened the monster! God says no! What the hell's going on? It made the monster weak enough for Crush Card Virus, but God says no to Crush Card Virus! And because of that, the Wicked Monster is here. Gecko Tenma has his Wicked God. And Premature Burial brings back the Harvester. The Angel will harvest your soul today. The Wicked God has done it. The attack goes through. Mystical Beast is gone. It does not get to stay on the field. Metal Reflex Slime saves the day. But only for now. Only for now does it save the day. No fucking way. What was that top deck? Are you serious? Are you serious? He top deck Cyber Jar. The Wicked Dreadroot has been defeated. There is no Wicked Dreadroot. Only tears. Only tears remain. What will Odeon get with his unbelievable top deck of Cyber Jar? Monster Reborn is a horrifying top deck. Oh dear God. Oh my God. This duel's over. It's over. Odeon wins. Cyberjar was the best top deck anyone could have got. He tributes to keep himself safe. He does it. But it's just going to be Monster Reborn. Monster Reborn. Steal the God. Unless it says it can't be special summon, which it probably does. Oh man. Oh man. Don't worry about Odeon's extra deck. He'll show you it when he wants to. Harpy! We knew he had Harpies. But Harpies comes through. And the attacks will join in. Get rid of the Dark Tinker for the love of God. What are you doing? Get rid of the Dark Tinker. You gotta stop it. Why would you let him keep the Tuner Monster? Who told you to do that? Monster Aborn finally comes through. Night Assailant. No! He can't get Night Assailant. The Dark Bribe is good. Premature Burial! He can get Night Assailant! It's a Synchro Shogun! It's time! Merrick, you got your brother this card. Now he's going to use it to win the duel. Odeon has exactly what he needs. The game is over. The winner is Odeon Ishtar. All right. Piercing works. Piercing works. Odeon's top decks were god tier in that duel. They were absolutely god tier. I could not believe it. He should have lost. He 100% should have lost that duel. And then at the last second, he gets Cyber Jar, which completely changes everything. It's not fair. It's not fair. Odeon wants to be a protagonist. Odeon needs to help his brother, because this is serious today. 
All right. Well, he got his boss again, but he needs a way to summon it, which means he still needs his Temple of the Kings, which he runs three of, by the way. And he can't draw for shit. Oh, hi, Dark Tinker. That's not going to work. Giant Germ's good, though. Giant Germ will be valuable. And we're going to go ahead and go in, and Marsh McCon is going to get rid of Giant Germ. That's a lot of burn. Yup. I can't believe Marsh McCon actually beats something by battle. It breaks my mind. Giant Germ does some burn again. You could summon your Mystical Beast, but it'll just leave the field, so there's no real point. Monster Born doesn't matter. None of this matters. Dark Tinker doesn't matter. Wait. Oh my god, you're going the long route to Synchro Summon. That actually works. Yes, the gods do have victory conditions today. If somebody wins with a god's card's attack, they win the duel. Alright, well, here it comes, everybody. I don't know how to say it. All I know is it's become a common Synchro card since uh, Synchros have become more normal after the past year. So what are you going to do now? Oh, we have a Tribute. Oh, okay, one of his other cards. Attack goes through, the Synchro Monster didn't stand a chance, and now Odeon doesn't stand a chance without his boss monster. Because his boss monster can get stronger than anything. Technically, that Mystical Beast of Circa can get way stronger. Wicked Gods do not apply. Only the Egyptian Gods have that power. Wicked Gods are just supposed to be like, oh, we could stop the Egyptian Gods. Yeah, they do not get to mimic that, so that sort of power. Magic Cylinder comes through. Magic Cylinder gets... No, it doesn't. God says no. No, sorry. Seven Tools says no. Don't forget, Seven Tools beats God. <laughs> Seven Tools is stronger than God. So, yes. And Metal Reflect Slime says no to you. All right. Do they get stolen? Nobody wants them. Nobody wants the Wicked Gods. No, no, they don't even look at them. If it's not an Egyptian God, it doesn't have value. People just want to pretend it. Oh my god, he drew it again. This son of a bitch. You can't... What? What? I'm sorry, what? What? Wait. Okay. Okay, wait. He, wait, let him cook. Let him cook. He knows what he's doing. Why are you judging Odeon? Look what he just did. Look what this man just did and you judge him. You judge him. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> Let him cook. He can do it. All right. He beat the opponent's boss monster. He doesn't even need Temple of the Kings. Where's your Temple of the Kings? I'm still waiting on it. You drew your, you drew your mystical beast. You can't draw your temple. All right. Well, it worked. Is this the power of the protagonist? No, not today. Shining Angel, embodiment of a pop -a -paw. Uh Shining Angel is going to go in for some unknown reason. Why are you doing this? Don't ever let Gecko cook. Gecko, you're gonna, you're done. This is, might be your last tournament, sir. Sir, this this might be your last tournament. I I, I don't know what those ingredients were, but no, never again. No, never again. Ah, uh, never. Absolutely not. Oh my god. more mad that he got the wicked dread root out of that well he didn't have to do it that way he did not have to do it that way he got his boss by the way yeah he said dread root i have no clue what's happening i don't understand a single thing that's happening right now i want you to know that don't even know what's happening doesn't make sense in my mind um yeah so Odeon has to beat the Dreadroot again. He beat it once, so beating it again shouldn't be that bad. I have no clue what Gecko's doing. He's dying. That's what he's doing. Uh, Gecko gets Pot of Greed, which is good. Uh, Gecko gets Harpies, which is God tier. Harpies gets rid of everything, after all. And yeah, Bountiful Artemis is really good. Bountiful Artemis is now going to see the saddest thing in the world. Instead of winning the duel, he bought himself a turn. All right. Because of that effect of Nine Assailant, Odeon is still in the duel. Oh my god, he has two. His mom let him have two. I can't believe these top decks. Odeon's top decks are for real. These are real top decks, and I can't believe it. His flip effects are keeping him in the duel. Now he just needs to summon a monster. 
His opponent got another dread root, most likely. So all you have to do is summon a monster and you win. That works. You win the duel. Odeon Ishtar, two O's. His opponent, Gecko Tenma. Odeon defeated Dreadroot in both duels. He killed it in both duels. I'm more surprised Gecko summoned it in both duels, but he beat it in both duels. Um, all gods are having trouble today. All the gods are having trouble. Not a single god duelist has won so far. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the next character. Let's just let's just pretend none of this ever happened. The next character performing in our tournament. Oh, bah. Okay. Well, hold up. The next characters are both God Holders. Tillamook has the Wicked Eraser, and Seto Kaiba has the Almighty Obelisk, the Tormentor. Seto Kaiba, the head of Kaiba Corp. Let's see how he does in today's fight. Everyone hope for the best. Let's see it. Tillamook versus Seto. This is the last Egyptian God user in the tournament. He needs to do something or it's going to be his sad, sad tournament. She does have Wicked Eraser in hand, though it does take three tributes to summon, so that's kind of rough. He has Potagree to start the duel, which is very good. He's got Assault Wyvern, which is pretty good. Now, Kaiba, in his last tournament performance, got second place, and it was the biggest tournament we've ever thrown. Let's see how he does today. All right, we have this card. Ojama Trio, you now have three cards to deal with. Also, Dictator of D messes with the enemy AI, so that's going to be kind of funny. Uh, Magic Cylinder says no. Magic Cylinder says no. And Giant Rat does 250. It's about 250. And that card says no to those cards, so those cards are now locked. Your back row is locked. Now we're going to go ahead and get Mizuki. That's very nice. Giant Rat's here to help. Giant Rat gets rid of Dictator of D because it's a very annoying card. And now you're going to set. Makes a lot of sense. Okay. At least Tillamook is making sense while Seto Kaiba is kind of in a bad position. Premature can bring back the Dictator, but it won't do much. Oh, yes, it will. It summons the Spirit of White. And the Spirit of White gets rid of the trap card that stopped. Why are those in attack? What the fuck are you doing? Seto Kaiba, no. 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 Maybe. No. Why are all three... It, maybe you needed one in attack mode to do what you just did. Why are all three in attack mode? That's my That's my question. There's no way you needed all three. Because your life points are dead. You lost. Seto Kaiba has lost the duel. All she has to do is attack and she wins. If she says, I attack, she wins the duel. Monster Reborn for game. He threw the duel. She might even use Wicked. Who knows? Nope, she's just going to go for game. Yep, no reason not to. 300 burn. 300 burn. Game winning attack. 2,500. Wait! Luminai! It's a light monster! Wait, it goes to the wrong monster? It stops the attack. Oh, God! It's the Wicked Eraser! The Wicked Eraser pops itself in order to pop the whole field. And that's 300 burn. Mizuki's effect activates. The Curse of Vampire survives. Anything can happen now. Seto Kaiba, you got nothing. It's over. Tillamook with her boss monster, Wicked Eraser, ends this duel. The Wicked Eraser erased Kaiba's field. And it did good work. And with that victory, said okay, no god users are doing good today. Not a single one. Let's go into game number two and let's see if Tillamu can do it. Can she stop him? Can the wicked god destroy the Egyptian god? It turns out the best way to beat your opponent is to give them zero attack point monsters. If you give them a monster with zero attack, you win. So let's see if she gets Ojama Trio. She got it. It's right there. It's right fucking there. She won the duel. She won the... What is that? Oh! A year has passed. I forgot. A year has passed. Good luck. You're in danger. <laughs> You're in danger, Tilla. Ojama Trio still is very valuable because he's dumb enough to put him in attack mode. 
All right, Pot of Greed comes through. And I'll turn, it's like, hey, nope, you're not getting your effect off. Polly! What the fuck? Everybody say hello to Seto Kaiba's monster! Blue Eyes Twin-Headed Dragon! It's, not, it's Twin Burst, but whatever. And there it is! Blue Eyes is on the field! Twin Burst is on the field! Exa oh, it's over! That's, that's OTK. That's a turn three victory from Seto Kaiba. <laughs> Holy crap! Somebody clipped that! What the hell? Did Seto Kaiba just OTK Tillamook? Okay. That was awesome! <laughs> He's pissed. He's super mad. He does not want to be called a fraud again. No, not again. I will not be known as the fraud. You are not taking my god card. <laughs> I'm sick of the disrespect. Wins in one turn. That was his first turn. Well, it was second turn. But that was the first turn where he was allowed to attack. FTK, my friend. Or OTK, my friend. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Oh, and blue eyes, two blue eyes immediately. How are you going to defeat two blue eyes, Tillamook? I would love to find that out. Show me. He got two blue eyes on the opening turn of game three. How do you beat it? You didn't get Ojama Trio, so you can't abuse his uh, AI this time. Pot of Greed. In attack mode. I'm sorry, you played that in attack mode. Why? Tilla, why? Oh, because you have a Synchro Summon. Everybody say hello to the all-powerful ally of justice, Cataster! Blue eyes be damned, Tilla's winning it today! You're going down, Seto Kaiba. You're going down. The White Stone can get Blue Eyes back to the hand, but Blue Eyes cannot defeat Cataster. Your addiction to light monsters will be your undoing. No! He drew alternate! It's over! Cataster gets popped! What a catastrophe! 18 goes through, 3,000 the other way. Seto's gotta take that hit. Seto takes that hit. He drew his alternate eyes. The blue eyes in his hand reveals it. The craziness has come out. What the hell is going on in this duel? She actually can hold the field for quite a while. Now that I look at it, she can, she can stay standing for a bit. Unless he uses his effect. He didn't know. He didn't know. I understand. He was going for game. He was going for game. He didn't know that uh, she could do this. Oh, yeah. If she does this twice, she can hold on for three turns. Blue Eyes, White Dragon. All right. Just do it again, and you can hold on for another turn. And that card is now locked. You are not allowed to use it. Tolamook's last draw, Vampire Sorcerer. That ain't gonna do it. Oh, she gave up. That That's a give up. If she set that, she gave up. Seto Kaiba, it, I thought you might actually be a, you know, a fraud again, but you did it, man. You made a comeback a reality, and now you're going to summon the Twin Burst. It's over, folks. 1,200, 3,000, and of course, 3,000. That is game. The winner is Seto Kaiba. Seto Kaiba will be moving on in our tournament. As you can see, he's gotten stronger over the last year. Yeah. Despite what happened in Game 1. Granted, Wicked Eraser's effect was nice too. It wasn't just his stupidity. Wicked Eraser just has a pretty nice effect. Being able to throw everything away. So let's go ahead and let's see who's up next. The next duel in this tournament is, is, is the Chaos Master versus Yako Tenma. Yako Tenma is going to be taking on Is, is. So let's see how this goes. Remember, it's been a year. Decks have been buffed. So don't expect the same duelist you saw a year ago or longer ago. All right. Where is, is, is. These bets are unpredictable, aren't they? All right, Heart of the Cards comes through, and we got a lot of good stuff from Yako Tenma. All right, a good old 2300 beater, definitely going to be hard to deal with. And is his is answer is Brain Control. Of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? And Brain Control does 23 and forces the monster into defense mode for two turns. So that was a smart play. And she could still summon Giant Germ. No fear in her heart. This woman has no fear in her heart. She knows she can do it. 
That is an unlucky top deck for Iz Iz. And Magic Cylinder's real nice. In fact, you've taken a lot of damage. You're way below half already. Dude, look at your life points. You, you need to watch yourself, Yako. You're just lucky you drew that trap card. Smashing Ground is very funny because only one monster had 100 attack. Apprentice in attack is not funny. That's a horrible idea. And now you're going to pay for your horrible idea. You're going to pay with blood. Because of final attack orders, you can't hide... Oh, what is this? Oh, okay. Draw a card. Uh, hopefully you drew a trap card because the duel's over if you didn't. That card's not going to save you. Duel's over if you didn't. His, his final attack orders is going to end this duel. Oh, hi, Wicked Avatar. What are the odds that you'll actually summon it? Probably not because you just normal summon. Yep. And here comes Gene Warped, and there they go. 1,300 damage. And is is that's 500 burn. And there's more damage. And there's more damage. And are you telling me the two cards in her hand are giant germs? Because if that's the case, I'm going to yell. I'm going to yell very loud. If she had all three giant germs in her hand, I'm going to yell. Monster of Born comes through. The best you can pick is Apprentice Magician, which will lose. you'll lose the duel. You lost. All right. GG. GG, she lost. It's over. A practice magician can't do anything. It's over. Heart of the cards, you can do whatever you want at this point. Don't, do not summon an eraser. You do not need the wicked eraser. You already have game. You actually have game. Yako Tenma has won the duel. There's nothing you can do. Final attack orders count as your defense positions. Yep. Once he drew that trap card, the duel was over. That is the end, everybody. Thank you all for watching. Nope, that was game number one. Let's go into game two. Nice try, Iz Iz. Try that again. You did a lot of burn damage to him, basically, but you gotta win. You gotta win the duel. You can't just do good in a duel. Granted, Yako really needs to win because most of the professors have already failed him. So if he wants to stay as a character in our tournament and not end up as a corpse, uh, he's gonna need to win this duel, like, now. Like, absolutely right now win this duel. Keep yourself in the tournament. He got final attack orders, but none of the good monsters to go with it. So that's kind of rough. All right. Well, he's at least he got his Machine Lord. Machine Lord Ur. And what do you got, Iz Iz? Iz Iz has card. I need to get a closer look at it. What is that? She has Dark. Its name is Dark. All right. What else? Indomitable Fighter. Now he's got full advantage. That's the only monster he needed. Iz Iz is not known for using a beater deck. She uses a very normal deck. So, oh, and you've lost your monster completely. So, final attack orders is going to be super valuable here. He started the game with it. Oh, no, her boss monster! Chaos Hunter! You should have never special summoned! Okay, Chaos Hunter is on the field. The boss monster is here. That premature is being used horribly. In fact, you're going to lose a lot of life points because of it. And Geico is going to sell you some car insurance. All right, final attack orders. Like I said, you're going to lose a lot of life points because of that play. Apprentice Magician will set a Frequency Magician, sure. And attack goes through, Indomitable Fighter Lele's gone, but Geico is not strong enough. That monster born on Dark actually had value. Nope, you don't need that right now. I would have maybe used your monster's effect to destroy Frequency with damage. You could have done good damage. Alright, well, we'll see what happens next. We got Frequency Magician. We got the Chaos Hunter. It looks like she's bricked right now. She doesn't have any other cards to work with. Call of the Haunted comes through. And Indomitable Fighter is here. So now Frequency is like, oh, god damn, my life points. What am I going to do? And Pot of Greed. He needs more monsters. Let's see what he gets. And he gets King Ba. Oh, wait. He got a more important card than that. Guys, he got Harpies. Harpy's Feather Duster. And with Harpy's Feather Duster, she lost her magic cylinder and her swords. Premature Burial comes in for Machine Lord Earth. And we got a tribute for Beast King Barbaros. And that is strong enough to defeat her Chaos Hunter. She is done for. Is is doesn't stand a chance. Yako Tenma's about to 2-0 this opponent. I don't like her odds of continuing the tournament. And she got Chaos Sorcerer, her old boss monster. It banishes the opponent, but if he top decks a monster, he could still win. He could still just go in. He can crash. He's crashing. He just wants to end this duel as fast as possible. She only has a thousand life points left. She lost Chaos Sorcerer. She lost everything. What the hell is she going to do now? Is is what's happening? Okay, you got Oh, you can't set. It doesn't work. Her defense monsters are worthless. It's over. It's over. Mechanical chaser for game. 
Mechanical Chaser, Chiron, Old Vindictive's in attack. It is over. The winner is Yako Tenma. The Tenma brother survives. Look at that. He's keeping him and his brother alive just by staying in the tournament. Him or his card professors. So let's go ahead and let's get a look at our bracket because Iz is, even though she has nice cards, got countered by final attack orders. Her deck got countered. She lost way too many life points way too quickly. So looking at Yako, good for you, buddy. Let's move forward. The next duel is Pete Coppermine. And Pete Coppermine is going to be taking on Akiza, the Rose Witch. Akiza is back in her Rose Witch form. We got to see her in normal form where she was still a decent duelist with some mistakes here and there. But now she's back in her horrifying form in order to help today. Pete is, of course, one of the card professors. Uh, we have seen him before. He's a creepier one, I'll tell you that for free. He is a creepier one. Alright, Akiza the Rose Witch is ready to duel. Alright, Petey, what you got? Petey's got Hunter Dragon with Miss Body. You can't beat it now. And Hunter Dragon defeats... Oh, does not defeat. What the hell is that card? The Ruddy Rose Witch survives. It has too much defense. And we got ourselves a tribute to get the Witch of the Black Rose, which isn't very powerful in my opinion. But, you know, you could summon it. And its effect will activate, and it gets the Rose Princess. And the Rose Princess is here, which means we got ourselves a Black Rose Dragon, everybody. The Black Rose Dragon is on the field, and you're in trouble. Granted, Miss Body will protect you for now. As long as you hold that Miss Body, you're in a fine position. Hunter Dragon's... Oh, if he drew his Tribune... Uh, if he drew his Ritual, he would have won the duel right there. And I have no clue what he just did. I do not understand what he just did at all. She got her white clothes. It's over. It's over. I have no clue what he just did, and he and she's going ham. She's not going to let him breathe. And we have a level 6 Synchro Summon, everybody. Everyone say hello to the Splendid Rose. And we're not done yet. We also get this card to the field. And because of that, we're going to get another card to the field, the Thorn of Malice. And Splendid Rose is going to throw away a card in order to weaken a monster. We have the ultimate monster in Akiza's deck, the strongest card she owns, the Ruddy Rose Dragon. And with Thorn of Malice, the Splendid Rose is going to go in, doing 2750, making it so the security does 3200. He has no life points left. Nothing remains. And attack again for piercing. Oh my god, he literally... He can't even brain control anymore. He can't afford it. You couldn't afford it. Don't you get it, Pete? The duel's over. Also, you drew... That was the worst draw possible. You, you lose, sir. Good day, sir. White Cloister. She said monster. She got a monster. She's at 4,200 attack, which is embarrassing. Um, this is sad as hell. I don't even want to watch the rest of this. Splendid Rose, just end the duel. Just end the duel. Leave him alone. The duel's already over. You don't have to do any of this. Just attack the defense mode monster. You're bullying at this point. You can't bully him this bad. Oh my god, this is so rough to watch. Black Rose Dragon, leave them alone. The duel is over. Ruddy Rose goes in for 4,200 damage. A monster that could even defeat Oblis the Tormentor. And it is over. Well, that was rough. Someone call 911 for sure. Someone do that. It was rough to watch that. So let's go ahead and let's see who's up next. Oh, wait. Oh, no, wait. We got to keep going. Sorry, that was only duel number one. I forgot. It was just so brutal that I should just end it there. Like, there was no chance in that entire duel where Pete could have won. He could have done a lot of damage, but he couldn't have won. It's so sad. I'll get their faces back in time. Don't you worry. It was that it was that sad that I thought it was over. Alright, Akiza, let's try again. Let's try to win this duel. Alright, we got botanical, whatever. Giant Germ's here. Giant Germ's really good if you uh if you have a tribute monster. And with this card, we have another monster. Okay. And with this card, we're gonna get rid of that monster so we can get a better monster. Rose Princess, sure. Rose Princess is like, hey, look at me. I'm going to throw myself away. Hey, look at me. I got a white rose cloister. Hey, look at me. My cloister is good. It has 180 defense. 
No one understands that. It's fine. Burning Control is back. I don't know if they're actually going to use it this time. They did use it. Hey! It's Synchro time! Pete Coppermine's not going down without a fight. And old Petey's got... The hell is that? Petey's got a card. That's all I can say. I'm afraid I do not know. Miss Body comes through, and the damage is unbelievably good. 2,300, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. Akiza Izinski is in so much trouble. She's so screwed. I'm, I'm glad you caught on, Oman. It only took three tournaments, but I'm glad you caught on. I'm sorry, that might have been mean. I'm trying to have fun. I didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> I'm sorry. And Dandelion goes away. We get two new monsters. Armatus, I don't care. The burn is too good, though. The burn is too good. That Synchro Monster is Jinzo Ancient Gears. Oh, so it stops Trap Stuff. Oh, well, look at that top deck he got. And that is the end of the duel. With that top deck, he wins the duel. Goodbye, Dandy Token. Why didn't you use the Giant Germ Stand? What the fuck? All right, who cares? The Rose Duelist is in trouble. The Card Professor has taken her down. Anybody that bet on Akiza, why would you? Why would you trust her? No, I'm, I'm not joking. He just got really lucky that time. He got a great hand. He got a great hand in that duel. So let's go ahead and get into game three, and let's see if the Rose Witch is going to get knocked out early. The Rose Duelist has survived, but the Rose Witch needs to continue. That's a lot of giant soldiers of stones. He got his boss monster this time, but I don't know if he's going to use it. He doesn't know how to use it, which is very upsetting, but yeah. It could still be used as a 2400 defender. Manju also has value, so I'd summon Manju. Yeah, you might as well. Thin out your deck. Get your other boss. He has a mini boss that's pretty good. Lone Fire is wasted. Oh, it's not wasted. He didn't even get defeat. I forgot. I had 1400 defense. My god. Lone Fire is it's your time to shine. You guess monster, so now anytime you, if you get a Black Rose Dragon now, it's going to have a thousand more attack. We have ourselves a tribute thing, and there's a big old monster, and Rose Girl's like, that's a big monster. And here comes the boss! It's time to get Ruddy with Ruddy Rose Dragon. Ruddy Rose Dragon is now on the field with 4,200 attack. Premature Burial brings back the Rose Girl because guess what? You thought it was just Ruddy? It's time for the Black Rose Dragon with 3,400 attack nothing could stop Akiza today Akiza almost wins the duel on turn three but she's not quite Seto Kaiba she's close but she's not quite him 1800 damage remain no way the top deck of the gods Ruddy Rose is on the wrong side of the field Black Rose Dragon's been defeated Pete Coppermine's gonna take you down welcome to today's tournament P. Coppermine, you're going to win this duel. All you got to do is hope to God she doesn't synchro summon and pl uh, blow up the whole field. A thousand heal. Rose Girl's like, hey, I'll help out. Don't you worry. I want to help. Uh, that card lets you special summon. There we go. We have the Black Rose Dragon. But will she nuke the field? Does her brain allow this? Or no, does she go for game? She has game. I didn't even notice. It doesn't matter. No need for a nuke when you can end the goddamn duel. That's it, everybody. The winner is Akiza, the Rose Witch. When he stole the Ruddy Rose, I was like, oh, this duel is up, up in the air. It's never up in the air. It's never up in the air. Akiza's a monster. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get back to our bracket. The next character fighting of characters fighting in our tournament will be... A new member of the Rare Hunters, Yami Bakora. And Yami Bakora will be going up against one of the Sons of Pegasus and one of the strongest, the third strongest card professor, Dupree Scott. So we'll see how Dupree does against this man. Yami Bakora is, we can, we can admit, right, he's a luck-based deck. Bakora is 100% a luck-based deck. But when he's really lucky, he's as good as top eight in one of the biggest tournaments in the world. Uh, when he's not lucky, he ends up losing immediately. All right, let's see what happens. Yami Bakora. Oh, he already has his field spell. If you're placing your bets, give it to Bakora. You see the field spell, you know who to bet on. That's how I see it. Where's Dupree, man? There's Dupree, man. 
Dupree Scott is ready. The third strongest card professor versus the luckiest co-leader of the uh, rare hunters. Harpy's Feather Duster comes through. Harpy's Feather Duster destroys Called Haunted, sure. Looks like uh, Bakora did not get his trap card or his boss monster, so he's in a bad spot. Pot of Greed is very nice for Mr. Dupree. Dupree's got Shining Angel for now. Uh, Chaos Sanctuary, we flip that coin. The coin says, yep. I think they always pick heads, so if it's heads, you uh, you burn. And if it's tails, uh, you win. Wow. All right, let's start counting. Everyone start counting. That's two out of two. That is two out of two for Bakora. Not too crazy yet, but I'm just we got it. We gotta recognize it when it happens. Dark hole is unnecessary, but will be used. And we got a uh, card to stop. Why did you premature night assailant? Why did you DD crow night assailant? You both are weird. Both of you characters are weird. I want you to know that. All right. Um, eleven hundred goes through dimensional prey. It's gone. All right. You could you could search now. <laughs> All right, that didn't work. All right, try again. Dupree Scott, you, you do your thing. Do your thing. You know how to play the game. Oh, nope, you're bricked. Okay. Well, shit. Uh, there's one of his tributes. That's a good tribute monster. 1100 goes through. Chaos Sanctuary does its job. He can't search for monsters now. Uh, no, the AI will always pick heads, Cody. It will always pick heads. You have nothing to worry about. It just seems to always pick heads. He's never picked tails. Oh, we have a double tribute. It's his. What is that? Is that one of his bosses? It's one of his bosses. What is it? Zeta Reticulant. It is something he used in the manga. I just don't know what it is. Zeta Reticulant. I, I, you guys know it better than me. That's three for three. You're right. He's three for three. And Dark Ruler Hades beats it by 50. It's gone. Dark Ruler Hades would have defeated it, but it's gone. Oh, no. And 2,400. Are we going for four? Nope. Okay, three. Only three so far. Only three. It's three out of four. He got three out of four, which is pretty good odds. That's pretty good odds for a freaking Yami Bakora. Is there three in the grave? No, they've been banished. He does not have three in the grave. They've been banished. He only has one in the grave. He has three banished monsters. He's so unlucky. All right, what do we got? Tails. Oh, man. Bakora's one turn away from death. Bakora is one turn away from death, and because Dark Necrofear doesn't work, he doesn't know what to do. Oh, no. Oh, it's way too late for that. It's way too late. It actually will help. It, it will help a little. All right, let's see. Game-winning attack coming through. He has two... Well, it, one of them will win the duel. This is for game. Heads are dead. Heads. He lives. All right, he lives a little longer. This one, he can survive if it hits. Oh, my God. He can win the duel now. He can win by burn. Destiny board activates. We shall get the eye from the hands. All right, FI. Now he has a monster to defend himself. Lucky him. Oh, crap. He keeps drawing them. He does not want to draw them. All right, FI or DE. Either way, guys. And attack comes through. Game winning attack. It attacks directly. How are the cards? Heads. It's over. The winner is Dupree Scott. The winner is Dupree, everybody. There's nothing you can do against this man. The luck stat, it was pretty It was pretty even. It started strong and then it got bad. So I would say he was more heads than tails, but it didn't matter. Dupree does it. He did win with exact damage. Good point. Let's get into game number two. Will Yami Bakura, the other co-leader of the Rare Hunters, lose this early today? Are all the Rare Hunters going to be losers? Oh, he needed that card earlier. Curse of Necrofear. That would have helped. All right, so I would start Giant Germ or the Protector. Either one's fine. You don't want to draw those spells. That's very unlucky. Giant Germ makes sense because you want to get to Dark Necrofear as soon as possible, so that's fine. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. 500 damage comes through. We got two 1,000 uh, damage monsters right here. And we're going to see what they can do. Shining Angel is strong. Harpy's Feather Duster is about to be used. Harpy's Feather Duster will clean up that trap card. What was it? I'm kind of curious. That's a good trap to hit, but sadly, you got nothing else. So as soon as he gets three monsters to the grave, he's going to power off, and it's going to be crazy. So, yep, that's it. That's it. The winner is uh, Yami Bakora. Bakora wins. The second that other germ falls to the grave, it's over. You can't beat Bakora at full power. He's about to be at full power. Everyone, time for the Necro Fear combo. 
Go ahead, Bakora. Show them your power. Dark Necrofear. Curse Necrofear. Both monsters at the same time. And with these monsters on the field, nothing can be done. All of these cards will stop you. You cannot search to your hand anymore or draw extra cards anymore. Shining Angel will stall for now. But it doesn't matter when Curse and Dark are just staring at you. Menacingly. See, Bakor can win with damage. He doesn't have to win with his other effect. Double cost on. Unless he has his tribute again. Does he have his tribute again? No, he doesn't. He's just getting rid of the sanctuaries. Okay. Uh, you can get rid of sanctuary, but you still have to deal with Necrofear at some point. Would you rather deal with the curse or the fear? Yeah, the dark one or the curse one? They're very powerful cards. Gotta think of one. And that's a third one. Yep. I have no clue. I'm not going to read it. It's a paragraph. It's a curse necro fear effect. I have no clue. All I know is that it's got 2,800 attacks. So that's good enough for me. And magic cylinder will stall for now. To pre Scott, do something. You gotta, you gotta kill these things. DD Warrior Lady's very good. Banish the card. If you banish it, it's worth it. Dark necro fear does not get its effect if it's banished. And that card says neither character can search to their hand now. They just have to draw naturally. All right, he draw. Yes. Finally! Alright, heck, get it? Final plea? Yeah, I'm funny. Alright, Shining Angel goes through. Shining Angel is going to get destroyed. Hecatrice is on the field. He doesn't have many life points left, but if he just plays defensively, he'll lose to the Destiny Board. So he has to play aggressively somehow. And he can't play aggressively either. He doesn't seem to have any of his cards. He needed his Greek Quasar right there. And we got FI. So we got... Eh. Or if you're, pl uh, if you're playing with the Destiny Board with death, it's DE for death. Curse Necrofear is going to slowly kill the monsters because he can just win the final. He doesn't have to win by battle. It's close. He can win by battle if he wanted to. He just doesn't have to. Yep, we got Finn. He could spell Finn now. Or D-E-A. Magic Cylinder is very good in case your opponent does go for a big monster. I would not set it just in case. Um, okay. The thing is, you can't activate that card unless he attacks you, and he probably won't. Oh. Oh, he got Greek Quake. Wow, you saw that coming. And the winner is Yami Bakora. Green Quasar was drawn at the worst possible time. And because of that, the duel is over. He got his boss monster at the worst possible time. So we're going into game number three. Let's go ahead and see what happens. Will Yami Bakora win? Will it be by Destiny Board? Will it be by Necrofear? Or will it be Mr. Green Quasar with his other Zeta card? No, no. Dusty board's plenty fast. He doesn't need anything to speed it up. Valhalla is here. We have Shining Angel on the field. Remember, this is one of the highest ranking card professors, so he should be able to beat somebody like Bakora. But will Bakora find a way out of this? Because Bakora's hand is interesting. Earl of Demise is one of his weaker cards, but at the same time, it helps him get fiends to the grave, so I guess it has that value. Yeah, and Seeker sucks. Case in point, Seeker sucks. Heart of the cards, heads. Yep, you don't get your DD Warrior Lady effect off. Very sad. I understand what you were going for there, buddy. It just didn't work out for you. All right, next we got Double Slate Warrior. They're willing. I bet you he's willing to hit DD Warrior Lady now because he doesn't care. He's got two. His mom let him have two. All right, so one DD Warrior Lady gets banished, which is a shame because Dark Necrofear won't be able to get, get access to that, but... You know, maybe we'll get it later. Who knows? And two sets. All of a sudden, you got trap cards, huh? Cards you did not have earlier, you just suddenly have. Oh, Destiny Board early. And Earl of Demise. Why not put more fiends in the grave? Oh, no! He lost Destiny Board! I mean, granted, he has more than one of the trap version, at least. But damn. Oh, no. All right, Morphe Jar made a huge difference. What is this? Oh, God! What just happened? Okay. I don't know what that was, but it did something. Double cost on. No, he got it. It's Zeta. Oh, it's Greek Quasar. They're both dark monsters. Greek Quasar. Will it get its effect off? No, it will not. It got stopped. Holy crap. The only thing stopping greed is head. The only. Oh, God. Harpies has maximum value. It's time for maximum value harpies. The strongest harpies in the game. The maximum value Harpies is good. Earl of Demise is good. What else you got? Slate Warrior actually calm. Wait, no, don't. Don't. Greek Quasar's effect. Don't do it. 
You made him level 11, you idiot. You don't get it. His effect, you just make him higher level. The 500 point loss means nothing. The AI didn't know. The AI didn't know. Heads. Okay, well, that those. how many heads is he getting? What the hell? What the hell? This man's cheating. He's doing it again. It's Battle City all over again. This man is cheating. It's just too many heads. Potagree comes through. Potagree gets all the finals, basically. Earl of Demise goes for damage. It does get banished, but that can help Curse of Necrofear, funny enough. One more banish and he can summon Curse. He got help from Keith? He might have. I mean, look at this duel. All right, attack goes through. Please, no head. Oh, thank God. Okay, there was too much head. All right, one more. 1,500. He's at 4,000 attack, by the way. He's level 15. That is the first ever level 15 monster we've seen. Giant Germ's a little dangerous. You got to watch out with Giant Germ. It's going to be problematic. All right, Curse Necrofear still needs one monster to get banished to be able to summon itself, I believe. I do not know. Um, yes, and you are doing really good. Bacor can win this just with the freaking Chaos Sanctuary. Is 15 even legal? It can go higher than 15 because 15 is not legal. And here's Tails. And the next, it's new level is level 17 with 4,600 attack. And Hecatrice. Ah, oh, crap. All right, he's still in the duel. It's just going to hurt. All right, that is our first level 17 monster, everybody. We have a level 17 monster. Ooh, greed Quasar. Don't get too greedy. Don't get too greedy. And Chaos Sanctuary spell card goes in again, and it does... Okay, you're fine. You're fine. Everything's fine. Giant Drum makes it close, but you're fine. Wait, don't attack with Hecatrice or you lose. It's game. It's game either way. Doesn't matter. He loses either way. Doesn't matter. He lost. He lost super hard. And that is it, everybody. The winner is Yami Bokora with his level 19 monster. All right. Good job. Oh, wait. Yeah. Uh, uh, sorry. Using his opponent's level 19 monster. Dupree Scott has failed. The third strongest card professor has failed. All right, moving into the next uh, fight. This is the final fight of round one, which means our tournament's about to reach its halfway point. The final fight of round one of the tournament will be a Shizu Ishtar versus the last card professor, Willamette. Willamette is the dragon card professor. A Shizu is the gravekeeper master. Go ahead and place your bets. Now, I'm going to get this set up, but I actually do need to use the restroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up. I'm going to get it going. We're going to have a little chair stream for a bit, but you get to watch the duel at least. You know, you know what? No, I want to watch the first. I can hold it for a little bit. I want to watch the first duel. I want to see how, how strong these characters are against each other. Willamette's Dragons versus Ashizu's uh, Gravekeepers. All right. We got Necro uh, Valley, which is an insanely strong start. And Stamina Destruction says no Necro Valley. And Miss Body says he can crash with you if he feels like it. Yep. He's allowed to crash on your couch. There's nothing you can do. So, guys. Um, yeah. That's uh, that's not good. That's not good for her. Harpy's Feather Duster has some value. Uh, but you need your field spell. And you also need a monster. Okay, well, you got a monster, but you still need your field spell. You don't have your field spell. Okay. Yup, this is not the best position to be in if your name is Ashizu Ishtar. We're going to see what happens here. What are you going to get? We got Axe Dragonute, which is plenty of attack points. Goodbye to your monster. Without her Necro Valley, she's in a very tight spot, and she's going to need to think of something. Heart of the cards, what does she get? That's actually not the worst top deck, but it's not strong enough at the same time. And Landsworm, I think that lets you do piercing, right? Ah, oh, it doesn't work that way. Okay, no, Gravekeeper's Guard held, held the field. Now if you can get your field spell, you're good. Draw your field spell while you have the time. Do it. Heart of the cards. No, that's not your field spell. Damn, Ashizu, that's rough. That is rough. That's no luck. All right, next try. Let's see. Axe Dragonute this time knows it can kill Gravekeeper's Guard, and the Worm will do piercing. Yikes. Yikes. Okay, this kind of sucks. 
The Dragon Duelist is a little too much for her, so she's going to need to think of that. That'll do it. Yep. All right, reset the duel, basically. We're going to reset the field, and we're going to see which character can come out on top. So, you got any more dragons in that hand of yours? You've shown us a few dragons so far. Want to see more? Oh, yeah, I'm just going to 2K beater. All right, 2,000 damage is gone from Shizu's life points. The Shizu Ishtar is in a lot of danger, but any of her monsters can beat 1,200 defense. So let's see what she gets. That works. That's actually a really good top deck. That's a god tier top deck. That is a god. That, that is such a good top deck. My god. Holy god. Holy crap. That top deck was god tier. Why would you not? Why would you do that? Just play the other monster if you're going to play in attack mode. Whatever. I would have played the other monster, but that's great. That that was amazing. That was amazing, Ishizu. I'm so impressed. You have no idea how impressed I am right now. That was beautiful. Oh, you got it anyway. All right, win-win. Never mind. You knew what you were doing. Troop Dragon. Ah, oh, he's going to try and stall. Yeah, it's not end of Anubis. She, you can still activate effects on the grave. You just can't leave the grave. All right. Well, that's not good. Ishizu's powers have activated. She's showing you what kind of skills she's got. And all this guy's got is uh, his boss monster, the White Horn Dragon, which cannot banish. His effect is negated. His effect is to banish your opponent's cards, but he can't do it. Because Necro Valley is on the field. It's still a decent monster without the effect, but with the effect, it has a lot of attack. And now it can't even beat your freaking card. Holy crap. Well, get rid of Necro Valley or lose. That is my, uh, yeah, that is, that is my, get a Harpies. Pot of Greed. Pot of Greed will have to do. And Pot of Greed turns into Harpies. Yep, that's about right. That is about right. Harpies gets rid of a lot of cards. What else you got? Premature Burial. Sure. What else? Oh, Piercing Monster. Sure. That'll do. Double Piercing Monster. Very funny. Yep, that Harpies was super high value. This should get... Son of a bitch. Um, you should have picked Spy. Uh, yeah, that got that. And you get to keep your Spy for now. But you lost one of your boss monsters. It's no longer your ultimate monster, but that, yeah, you drew it. Wow. Aren't you lucky? All right. Well, because there are so many Gravekeepers in the grave, you're unstoppable. That Visionary is unstoppable. Why is this duel so back and forth? What the hell is this duel? Why is it so back and forth? And this is hype. What is going on here? Three monsters to hold the field. He needs another Whitehorn Dragon while he could still banish before she gets another Necro Valley. Don't you dare. Okay, I was going to say, do, don't you dare get another Necro Valley. There's only one left in the deck. Yeah, Whitehorn Dragon's your only hope. Come on, man. What you got? The God Stalkers demand this. And he's got nothing. He's scared. He's scared. I would be scared too. Visionary's a scary card. And okay. You need one more card for that to work. Mass Dragon is a super good card. That's going to hold the field for now. Mass Dragon holds the field for now. Just keep holding the field. Get what you need. Twin Head. Sure. Twin Head's a nice card. Yeah, this is only the weakest people that I've been fighting so far. We're about to get to the halfway mark where it becomes the strongest people. I'm glad I stayed. I wanted to see this duel. This duel's very back and forth. Oh! Naturally top decking the last Necro Valley. Why aren't you using Royal Tribute? No! MST! There are no more Necro Valleys. Officially. So there is a chance at Whitehorn Dragon's effect because Twin Head is on the field. This is the last chance. This is your last chance. To get Whitehorn. Infernal. 800 burn. It's Whitehorn Dragon! It banishes five spell cards! It has 3,700 attack! The boss monster of Willamette at the last possible second banishes the cards and wins this duel! Yes, his monster's ultimate attack stat, I am not joking, is 3,700. That is the strongest it could possibly be. It could possibly be 37. That is it. Whitehorn Dragon is here. There are two of them. And now the damage of Spear Dragon and the damage of the boss monster will end the duel. The Dragon Duelist has won. Man, I don't want to miss these duels, but I need the bathroom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the second duel play. We're going to let the chair do the stream, and the rest of you could do the commentary. Unless the, you hear the chair. Don't listen to the chair, though. It tells lies. So I will be right back. Let's go into game number two. That was an amazing duel. It was decided by 100 attack points. And let's go. I will be back.
in here. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why is there a visionary on the field? All right, guys, I see the boss monster in hand, and I see visionary. She can't keep Valley up. That's a shame. Although it seems like she doesn't need her Valley because she's doing really good without it. So, what do we got left? What? Are, it seems like she's just winning. I'm sorry, the chair has to take it. White Horn Dragon comes back, and this is before she was able to... Oh, no, the Necro Valley's gone. And once again, White Horn Dragon does its job. And 200 damage goes through. Oracle will be thrown away, and now they're tied. This is amazing. Both characters are tied, and we have no idea what's going to happen. Which character will... Oh, you're just going to... Oh, you can't crash. Miss Body. You got Necro Valley. The Necro Valley returns. And that is it, everybody. The Shizu holds field. She has advantage. As long as she has Necro Valley, she has advantage. What will you do with it? Miss Body, it's Miss Doe Body. <laughs> if you're playing Tag Force like I am, it's Miss Doe Body. That is not fair to get the Gravekeeper's Guard. That's going to be very rude. Don't you dare. Don't you dare set that. He's trying to hold on for dear life for crying out loud. Bring back Chair. Oh, Chair's here. All right, don't worry. Twin Head, what is that? Union attack. Oh, that's one of his manga cards. All right. Union attack has decided the duel. She lost her card. Gravekeeper's guard will get rid of your twi uh, your white horn, but the white horn will return. Swords protects your life points. You could crash with that monster on the right. It's a really good idea. Why didn't you crash with the monster on the right? What the hell? <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to set. You didn't want a normal summon? Oh, it's Necro Valley. You don't get to get your attack points up until you destroy that. I kind of understand that. Uh, Mass Dragon is gone. And let's see. Cat commentary. There's no cats today. I have a, one cat, but she's sleeping. The other cats are not here. They're outside right now. Spear Dragon is here. There's a lot of powerful monsters on the field. Kind of interesting that you're not crashing still. I, I'm telling you. I, I know what I'm doing. Crash. Yeah, exactly. Just go crash. Get your boss monster already. Oh, apparently you can't. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. I've learned my lesson. So 2,400 defense is way too much. Necrovali again. There's no way he can win now. Like, he, he had a comeback there, and there's no way he can win now. That union attack was clutch. Because even if he tributes, he can't get stronger. It's locked at 2,200. Not until he finds a way to pop that thing. Both the level 10s are in the grave. That's interesting. Magic Cylinder is going to hurt. Yep, Magic Cylinder does its job. And, uh, yeah, that's not good either. But granted, doesn't she run Rite of Spirit or something? And Rite of Spirit, uh... Oh, there! She got Visionary just like that. Everybody, Visionary is now on the field. And Visionary is going to have a billion attack points. I pretty much guarantee it. And with 4,100 attack, it's going to destroy their boss monster and almost end the duel. So, right, oh, here we go. How would he mo He didn't have any monsters in his hand? What the hell? So his hand's bricked right now. What do you have? No! He had Dark Hole! What is this duel? Oh, God, he never drew a monster. He did not draw a monster card. Gravekeeper Spy ends the duel. 1,700 attack. It is over. We're going to game three. These guys are fun to watch, so I'm excited for game number three. Both characters seem to have counters to each other, so it's fun. All right, game three between Willamette and Ishizu. Which character is moving forward? This is one of the most intense final duels of round one. Uh, you can get a lot of stuff and card demise, or you could just hold. Yeah, you could do that. Set, 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 and then hold. You agree. Okay. So what, what do you got, Willamette? Spear Dragon, and there goes Necro Valley. All right, Necro Valley's gone. That's one out of three, and you know he's probably going to have to hit all three. And they stole, even if they do get Necro Valley, they stole one of their Grave Keepers, so that means it'll get buffed. Spear Dragon does 900 piercing, but, but, that guy wanted to die. And there it goes. So I'm afraid that the Commandant is not strong enough. Visionary is very happy to be here. And you know what? We technically do have one thanks to her existence. Uh, technically, Necro Valley is on the field. And Visionary is going to do good work. Visionary, take care of Commandant, the traitor. Don't let that traitor win. 
And yeah, Priestess is going to go in. So as long as Priestess is face up, technically Necro Valley is on the field. I don't think it gets its main effect, but it, it, it's on the field. And yep, because it's on the field, you can use that trap card. And that trap card says no. It's uh, it's basically Dark Bride. Except no downside. The downside is you have to have Necro Valley. But there is no more Necro Valley on the field, so now you can't use that card. Visionary is getting a lot stronger, though. Visionary is getting very strong. So this is his big shot. Because right now, she's going to be not the strongest in the world. And he has one tribute. So he can actually overpower her. He just needs to get his monster. Will he get his boss? No, he does not get his boss. I'm afraid that this might be it. Without getting the boss monster, he doesn't stand... Oh, that's a nice top deck. Uh, that He doesn't stand a chance. A thousand attack cubs. Oh, he's not... She's Yeah, she is not willing to use that guy. She's like, you're not ready for this. You're not going to fight that. And we got the piercing monster. Piercing smart. And we got the piercing monster. Piercing smart. And we got troop dragon. Oh, union attack! The troop dragon goes in with 4,400 attack. And the duel is over 4400 attack be damned it was used the wrong way and because of this visionary will take the game all of that damage went the wrong way all right i gotta remember you willamette you were one of the better professors you got you got something there's some skill to your deck you got something there but ashizu's for real ashizu was a top 10 pro and a top 10 underground duelist so you know Beating her is very hard. The fact that you took a game on her is amazing. So, guys, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the next round of the tournament. Half our tournament has officially ended. Let's get into the next half. It's time for the first duel of Bandit Keith versus Arcana. And I am not joking when I say this, but Arcana is one of the only rare hunters to survive. It's him and Bakora. Him and Bakora are the only ones that survived, I believe. That is super sad. So go ahead and bet on Bandit Keith because nobody here should bet on Arcana. There's no reason. There's zero reason to bet on Mr. Magician. Like, don't even pretend like you like him. I don't want to hear it. You're not betting on him. Bet on the other guy. Don't pretend like you're a real one. All right, here we go. And here we go. Arcana versus Bandit Keith. Bandit Keith was so strong, he got top 8 at Battle City. That will be remembered forever. Bandit Keith got top 8 at Battle City. Arcana went to Battle City. He did not get top 8. I'll tell you that much. Apprentice Magician's fine. It can be used to, you know, get you more stuff in the future. Dark Magic Attack. Wow! You drew two of them. So, hey, if you get, you know, Dark Magician on the field, you'll, ha you'll be able to pop the field. So, there there's that. Oh, wow. He didn't... He didn't want to use Cyberjar because he realized his opponent has a bad hand. Why would you Monster Born Cyberjar? Now I'm very confused. Now none of this makes sense. It made sense until you did that. Like, I could understand you didn't want to give your opponent more stuff. Fair enough, it could beat Apprentice, but still. You used a Monster Born on that. Thanks for following, by the way. I appreciate that. All right, well, what do we got? Old Vindictive can deal with the freaking, uh, yeah, problematic card. But Mystic Tomato, yeah, you just flip it. Don't use Dark Hole. God damn it. You didn't have to waste your Dark Hole yet. You could have used it later. All right. Well, Mystic Tomato comes through and Mystic Tomato does 1,400 damage. 1,400 damage is quite nice. What else you got? Oh, you didn't have to Dark Hole either. What's going on here? This is a weird duel. This is a very weird duel. Oh, Bandicke's Brick. That's what happens. He, has, he probably has Barrel Dragon in his hand. Barrel Dragon is not good. All they hear is Dark Hole. They shouldn't be listening to my commentary. That'd be that'd be considered coaching, even if it's coaching from a casual. You don't, yeah, you don't want that. You don't want coaching from a casual. I always get weird comments telling it's up where people are like, "Man, how'd you build that deck?" And I'm just like, "Guys, come on, it's the, it's you've seen these decks a million times. There's no skill to these decks that I build. They're the most basic things in the world. I'm not talking about Master decks. I'm talking about like Let's Play decks. I'm just like, guys, come on." You knew you knew that was going to be in the deck. Hey, thank you so much for following. Dark Magician's here. I'm going to put Giant Rat in every deck. I love Giant Rat. Dark Magic Attack comes through. Very valuable. It hit Call of the Haunted. 
2,500 attack comes through. Bandit Keith's in trouble. Bandit Keith, you're supposed to be repping Kaiba Corp. Kaiba Corp lost nobody, by the way. Kaiba Corp only has four representatives today. They haven't lost a single person. All four made it to the next round. And he lost. I can't believe I'm saying this. Bandit Keith bricked, which is possible for Bandit Keith. That's what he's known for. Uh, he lost. Bandit brick. Dark magic attack. Arcana won. Arcana won the duel. Why wouldn't you bet on Arcana? He's such a good character. Uh, I don't know why. Such uh, So weird when people don't do that. Alright, well, let's get into the next duel. Arcana's probably going all the way. He's all Whoever wins this goes to top 8, so let's see if he can do it. Arcana, the magic man. Can you stop Bandit Keith? Apprentice again. Apprentice to Mystic to Dark Magician works. Bandy Keith has his field spell this time. That's something he did not have last time. This time he has his field spell. Breaker can break the field spell knowing how problematic it is. Breaker did not break the field spell. That card says no traps. That's pretty good. Uh, but, it, you know, that's not a trap. Also, you didn't break the field spell like I told you to. There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job, Arcana. That's right. You did it too late. You should have done that beforehand, but whatever. Good job anyway. Oh, God damn it. Keith, come on. It had 1,600. What's your hand if it, you couldn't beat 1,600? I need to know, man. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that, Dark uh, Dark Hawk Eye. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, the Digimon game is really fun. It's given me a lot of nostalgia since I used to watch the show every now and then when it came out. All right, Dekoichi. There's no way it's Dekoichi. Flip that card, Bandit Keith. I want to know what it is. It's Cyber Jar! You didn't have to Magic Cylinder. What's going on here? All right, Bandicoot, there's Dekoichi. You said Dekoichi, he gave you Dekoichi. There you go. Dekoichi, Dekoichi. And Call of the Haunted. Call of the Haunted's pretty good because it can help him get Barrel Dragon out. And he's got Desperado Barrel Dragon. And there's Dark Magic, uh, whatever. There's Old Vindictive. There's Pot of Greed, Dark Hole. He had Dark Hole. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is an amazing. Like, it's slow, but it's amazing. This is going to be scary. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I hope you do have fun with it. There's a lot of fun games to play when it comes to Digimon. And you should have attacked with the little scissor guy. The scissor guy would have done a better job. Oh, hi, Desperado. Oh, old Vindictive, you made a, small, a slight mistake. You messed with Bandit Keith. Slight mistake. Also, Barrel Dragon. Also, TT. Oh, no! No, that's so bad! Oh, my God. Wait a minute. Arcana is going to 2-0 him. All he has to do is Dark Magic Curtain and then do damage. Or do you do that? Yes. You didn't even use Pot of Why didn't you use Pot of Green? I've never seen an AI not use Pot of Green. I have never seen an AI not use Pot of Green. That blows my mind. Thanks for subbing, by the way. I appreciate that. Why did he not use Pot of Green? His hand is so good and he's using none of it. He's not decking out, right? It's, wait, wait, there's like 20 cards. There's 27 cards in there. What the heck? All right, well, he's got Dark Magic Attack now, but it's too late. Bandit Keith, can you do 2,300 damage before his next turn? Yo! It's the ultimate! It's Power Bond! It's Gatling Dragon! Gatling Dragon with 5,200 attack goes in and ends this duel. 5,200! We're going to game three. Bandit Keith is not leaving. That was that was rough. That was 5,200 damage. Dear God. Uh, let's see what happens. Oh, I, I highly recommend watching Survive. I loved that game. I loved it so much, I did two Let's Plays of it. I rarely do two Let's Plays of a game. Very rarely. And there was no HD version or nothing. I, I just did two Let's Plays of it. I did New Game Plus. Loved it. I fell in love with that game. All right. Attacks are nice. We got a 2,500 Dark Magician. We got Twin Barrel. Is it lucky? Oh, doesn't have to be. Yep, he's not taking the risk. He's like, you know what? There's been too many heads today. I'm not taking the risk. Let's just get another Dark Magician out here. A fresh one. I don't blame him. There have been a lot of heads. Let's see. Oh, no. He could have kept it, but hey, it's fine. It's fine. I can. I understand trying to be safe. Awesome. I love Flymon. Anti-Magic Arrows has a lot of value here. Uh, Breaker could also just make sure there's no Call of the Haunted. Oh, no, he hit Limiter Removal. Anti-Magic Arrows says no trap. You can't stop him. This damage is guaranteed. 
All right, the damage is guaranteed. We have 3,900 life points left. Bandit Keith is at the edge of his rope. He could lose the duel right now. Pot of Greed is the only thing keeping him in this duel, and it is Dark Hole! The Dark Hole top deck is real. Bandit Keith is still in the duel. Call of the Haunted comes through. Twin Barrel, there's no target, but who cares? You lost limited removal, but you still got damage. What else do you got? You got more monsters, right? You got more monsters, right? Okay, Dekoichi, we'll take it. The damage is good. Arcana is almost dead. Arcana with 900 life points has to figure this out. What can you do, man? What can you do? You could set Mystic Tomato. You summoned it. Okay. You know what? That works. I forgot. Yeah, that totally works. This guy's only going to get that scissor card. Yep, the scissorman. And Legion is a weird choice. I would have chosen Mystic Tomato. If he draws a monster, you lose the duel. Legion does not make sense. If, if he draws a monster, you lose the duel. He's going for... Okay, well, he don't... Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. You lost the duel. Either way. He was going to lose the duel either way. Mystic Tomato would have, would, have, would have still been 900 damage. And that is the end of the duel, everybody. Bandit Keith will be moving on to top eight. He's the top eight god. Bandit Keith is literally a top eight god. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and move forward. And we're going to see what Bandit Keith can do. The next duel is the Rose Duelist working for Kaiba Corp. Rose Duelist will be taking on Vagrant. Oh, I forgot Vagrant works for Rare Hunters. The Rare Hunters have Vagrant still. An old pro duelist that got kicked out of the pro league. All right. The Rose Duelist, where are you? Now, Bandit Keith does not really get top four that often. He has done it. He just doesn't do it that often. So let's see if he can pass his limit right now. And go be even further beyond. I found the Rose Duelist. Looks like we're good to go. Let's see which character is going to win this. Will it be Mr. Summon Skull or Mr. Rose? Which character do you guys like more? Rose Duelist versus Vagrant. You play Capsule Monsters? Capsule Monsters is good. We actually had a character from Capsule Monsters come into our series. His name was Alex. He has not been back. I only used him once. Axe of Despair comes through, and that's 2,500 damage. And we also have Dark Hole immediately, but Eris wants to die, so it's fine. Uh, my favorite Digimon line is... Ooh, that's rough. There's a lot of ones. I like Black Agumon into Dark Tyranimon into Metal Tyran... Uh, yeah, Metal Tyranimon into Rust Tyranimon. That's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, easy. I knew it off the top of my head, so that's probably why I'd say it's my favorite. Yeah. Mystic Tomato. Yep, you can use that on Mystic Tomato. Yep, you can use that. Totally legal. Yep, you can do that. Wow, you can do that too. Whoa, that's a really good card. It can do that? I didn't even know it could do that part. That's really good. Betamon's all right. It's all right. I don't usually like Watermons, but, you know, it becomes Seedramon, so I like it. Or, there's some games where it becomes Seedramon. I know it has a, a natural line as well, and I like Seedramon personally. Now, World Tree's getting some counters, so that's the only good news here. Least favorite line, anything to do with uh, water monsters. I do not like Water Digimon very much. Or Bird. Oh, I hate birds. Bird Digimon can go straight to the garbage. Yeah. No bird Digimon. Not for me. Mystic Tomato gets Revival Rose. Mystic Tomato gets Giant Germ. Giant Germ gets the Field Spell buff. And that's a lot of damage. So, yeah, Rose Duelist, you got a lot of counters. You need to put them to work. Put those counters to work. Botanical Lion. Pop card. Botanical Lion is going to help the opponent by getting them two. And we got two Giant Germs. Uh, Ravemon's not the worst. I admit, Cody. I don't hate Ravemon. Ravemon's pretty cool. So what are we going to do? We got two Giant Germs. We got an Archfiend card. We got a, Are we not going to use Axe of Despair today? We're going to use Axe of Despair today. I've never seen the Giant Germ beatdown, but it's happening. The Giant Germ beatdown is happening. That one is as strong as a Dark Magician right now and must be popped. I think the World Tree must use its effects to pop it. Bergermon's okay. I got nothing against it. You don't have to pop it anymore. I take it back. You might as well use your special summon effect on the on the world tree. God, that thing is not going away. 
Yeah, they did. Wow, you know how to use... Ro the Rose Duelist knows how to use the World Tree. I'm actually really liking this. That's very nice that they know how to use that card. The problem is they're going up against an opponent that can totally beat them, so... You need to figure something out. Dark Hex Seal. Yeah. yeah, they needed a better Archfiend card. They just never got it. And Heart of the Cards. Rosebud! Uh-oh! Uh-oh! Queen Angel of Roses is here! And the Queen Angel is going to do some damage. Hex Seal is not going to survive! No! We needed the Hex Seal. Also, Rose Angel's effect. It's going to be a problem. Oh, wait! They drew a monster! Yes, it's an Archfiend! Archfiend, go! The Rose uh, Queen Angel of Roses is gone. The Rose Duelist is in trouble. His life points are getting critical. Vagrant, the old pro duelist can totally do it. Oh, people always doubt this man, but summon skull deck good. Oh no! It's the boss monster! Rosaria! It's oh god damn it, he got both! His mom lets him have two bosses! Holy crap! Holy crap! The life points are low on both sides. We got duelist kingdom life points, but the rose duelist is stacked. He can't afford it! He can't afford it! The winner is the Rose Duelist. Wait, he's got one more. That is the Rose Duelist, by the way. Look at that field. Look at that field. That is who the Rose Duelist is. You will never be him. I don't care who's watching this. I don't care how good you think you are. You will never be the Rose Duelist, even though Ray Vagrant's also very good. And let's go ahead and get into game number two. Let's see what happens. That was amazing. That was a great duel. I like that these characters are even, given, you know, what they're based off of or what they look like. Oh, man. I'm excited. I'm very excited. And let's see what we got here. We got Pato Greed. Yeah, I, I can't believe that the Rose Duelist got so unlucky at Battle City. Oh, uh, also, can we just admit that Serenity is legit good? Like, Serenity is just the best. Because she's the one that stopped the Rose Duelist, and, like, it shows why she could do it. Because he's this good, and... Oh, my God. Vagrant. Vagrant! Whoa! Holy crap! That is a great play! Oh, man! Oh, man! What are you even going to do? That is terrible! Oh, I would be so scared. If you are a Rose Duelist fan or a person that bet on the Rose Duelist, you might as well get your money. Well, you lost your money. You lost. It's over. It's over. It is over. No, Serenity did. Okiza never was near the Rose Duelist. And Botanical Lion gets a small buff. It's not enough to change anything. Magic Cylinder for game. Vagrant destroyed the Rose Duelist in game number two. That was brutal. This is the power of Summon Skull. Summon Skull versus Roses. Let's go. Death versus Life. Let's get into game number three and let's see which Duelist is moving to top eight. Will the Rose Duelist fall? Be the first person to fall for Kaiba Corp? Or will Vagrants be one of the last people to fall for Rare Hunters? The Rare Hunters only have Vagrants and Yami Bakora left. So Vagrants got to do a lot of carrying right now. Alright, let's see what happens. And, hey, thank you so much for following. I appreciate it. And yes, the game is very complicated. I don't play it. We only watch the game. We don't play the game. It's too complicated. All right, let's see what happens. Well, we got ourselves... Uh, if they drew Polly, that'd be really hype, but they didn't draw Polly. Lance goes in. Mr. Tomato is very good with World Tree, funny enough. It has value. Um, and they understand that value because they keep going for Mystic Tomato. That's good. That's good. Unless they tribute. They can also tribute. But Lance is going to be tough to beat because that's 2,600. Lone Fire Blossom! Is it Talia? It's Talia. Talia is on the field. Rose Girl. Rose Girl is on the field. Talia is on the field. Magic Cylinder works. She only protects the other cards, not herself. That hurts a little bit, but it's okay. You're doing your best. I don't like... Your life points are very low, and piercing is a thing. Oh, it's over. It's over. You can't target the other cards, but you could target Talia. The duel is over. The winner of this duel is going to be Vagrant. 
The life points are too damn low. The life points are too damn low. The game winning attack goes through. Power wall! Vagrant doesn't want to leave! He threw cards out of his deck to try and survive! He's still standing! 1700 life points left! What can he even do? The field's stacked against him. He gets rid of all the cards. He gets all the counters gone just to get one card back. And his card is Talia. Talia's not good enough. Rose Girl's in the hand, but it's not good enough. Don't you hear me? Rose Buddy can get you a card, but it's not good enough. Fallen Angels won't do it. It's not enough attack. Rose Girl gets Fallen Angel, but it's not good enough. How many times do I have to say it before you realize you can't win this? Piercing is a thing, sir. The World Tree uses its... Oh, shit! He killed the plant! I didn't even notice he killed the plant! This game three is insane! He didn't... He needed Polly. His only hope is Polly. All right, here it comes. Lone Fire Blossom goes in. Lone Fire Blossom gets the other plant girl. Rose Girl is like, hey, I'm here. Monster Reborn's like, hey, give me that Lance guy. I want him. We can do piercing with that guy. And the attack goes through. The piercing is massive. Somehow, thanks to a power wall. We need to clip this entire like, match. The whole match needs a clip. Because that was insanity. After the power wall, he was like, I'm not leaving. I am the Rose Duelist. <laughs> Vagrant somehow loses that duel despite how good his field once looked. That was awesome. That was great. Great, amazing match from these two. Great duels. Very enjoyable to watch. Uh, the winner is the Rose Duelist. Vagrant, I'm sorry. You're a great duelist still. Definitely still. Well, you're not a pro anymore, but you're, you would still be considered a pro when it comes to power level. But the Rose Duelist just barely clutched that. All right. The next duel is going to be between two characters that respect each other. Which means we have an interesting situation here. These two characters are technically on the same team. And one of them has a god card right now. If the person that has a god card loses, the god card is safe. That's like your teammate saying, go, get out of here. So the god card will be safe within that person's grasp. But if they win, they have to keep protecting it. Yep. So let's see what happens. Yugi versus Sarah, everybody. Yami, Yugi versus Sarah. And you guys saw Yugi today. He popped off today. He's crazy. And Sarah also popped off. He did not use that card at Battle City. I was sad that he didn't get to use it at Battle City. Every time he had a back row card, I'm like, is this going to be the power wall? It was never the power wall. But, uh, yeah. At least this time he got to, we got to see it. He had Kaiser energy. You're right. He had that Kaiser energy. The fact that he won the duel because of it is what makes it hype. All right, let's go, guys. It's Yami Yugi versus Sarah Taker. Time for Yugi to confront his stalker. Funny enough, this is a stalking situation. Sarah has a great hand. Sarah's hand is beautiful. I don't think Sarah's going to have any trouble in this duel. All right, Yami Yugi, figure it out. She's got a great hand. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. If that's the best you got, you're in a lot of trouble. DD Warrior Lady is a very safe card. Good play. DD Warrior Lady is going to go in. And that's good. And that card says, I summon Dark Magician from the hand. That's pretty scary. And we get uh, robes. <laughs> Dark Magician and his robes. And the robe says, hey, I throw away Monster Reborn to special summon Dark Magician from the deck. That's fine, you know. Sucks to lose Monster Reborn, but getting Dark Magician from the deck is pretty nice. Heart of the cards. Let's see what he's got. He's got Dark Magic Attack! No! All the traps are gone! He needed those! He needed those trap cards. Breaker, get rid of DD Warrior Lady. He gets to keep both magicians. You have to top deck a trap or something. Honestly, top, top deck anything and even then you're in trouble. Oh no. Oh wait, no, that works. That works, Bacon Saver. You think it doesn't? It does. Bacon Saver's the best card in the game. All right, attack goes through. Attack goes through. Bacon Saver saves the duel. She got one more turn in her. She's got one turn left. We have a tribute summon. It's the boss monster. And it searches Monster Reborn. All right. Not bad. Not bad at all. 
All right, Eldritch, you gotta be his boss monster. Boss versus boss time. Nope, you give up. Okay, you give up. Eternal Soul, you were gonna lose either way. All he has to do is search for Thousand Knives and it's over. All right, the robes is like, hey, look, it's me. The rod is like, hey, look, it's me in the hand. <laughs> and Eternal Soul, if you search for the... Oh, there goes Monster Born again. Why are you doing this? Very complicated for you. You already won. You won. Yugi, you won. You didn't even take damage. If you use Eternal Soul's effect, you don't even take damage. Oh my god. Stop. Stop. Yugi, please. She's had enough. Someone ring the bell. Ring the goddamn bell. Throw in the towel already. And there we go. Sarah Taker loses game number one. We're going to be moving on to game number two, everybody. Let's see what happens. Moving into game number two, Yami Yugi went super ham there. At Battle City, he did pretty good, but the people of Battle City were like 900. Like, there are people from Battle City that are here today, and there are people that we still don't see. Like Weevil. Weevil was a monster at Battle City. He took down Yugi Mudo for crying out loud. People always like to make fun of Weevil, but he's the best insect duelist. By far, he's the best one. He's already proven it multiple times. He's the best insect duelist. All right, well, we got ourselves some traps. We got Harold. We got Diet. Finally getting that to the grave. Very good play. And now that that's in the grave, use the trap card. Very good trap. And she's going to win this time. This time, she's going to show you her power. With this much damage, I don't like his odds. Yes, you can get a Dark Magician. It won't last long, though. I appreciate that you did that, though. You canceled two attacks out with that. Good play from Yami Yugi. It's just a little rough with the situation he's in. All right, and here it comes. Tanaka exists, but he's not the best. Tanaka was at Illusion Park when uh, was at Illusion Park when Yugi, or not Yugi, when Weevil won it all. Tanaka could have won it all, but he didn't. But Weevil did. And Magician's Rod throw or gets you dedication through light. Whoa, that's interesting. All right, so you use that to get your boss monster to stare down her boss monster and get a spell card. I like that. I like that a lot. That was really good because her boss monster is about to lose attack points. And now you're stronger than it. That is really good. Oh, shit. MST. Eternal Soul's gone. That's the end of the duel. Yep, that's anti-Regeki. That's anti-Regeki. You, you can get your thousand knives, but you're done. You're done, boyo. And goodbye. Bye, guys. Get banished. Wait, what's that? What? Chaos Scepter Blast? What? What is that? Oh, God. It's banished face down. Holy crap! She lost her best card! It's banished face down! He has his own sp It's like Dark Magic Attack, but for- or Thousand Eyes, but for the regular guy. I mean, for that guy instead of Dark Magician. That was crazy! It's gone for good. It's not coming back. It's not coming back. It's not like the normal situation. You could do it. Alright, this game is very interesting and up in the air. She has to top deck her way back into the duel. She lost one of her best cards and it's gone for good. So we're going to see what happens. Yeah, that Dark Magician of Chaos is like, I'm not going down alone. And Dark Magician is on the field. It cost a lot of life points, but it is here. She needs Magic Cylinder. Oh, she already got rid of it. She needs another Eldritch. Get one. That's not going to save you in this situation. No, absolutely not. Uh, you want to do something, uh, Pharaoh? You want to play some more monsters? Yep, Breaker. Yep, that'll do it. Thousand Knives? Yep, that'll do it. That's game. Yami Yugi won. Yeah, shit. Jesus Christ, man. You beat Sarah Taker! You banished her best card! Face down! Dark Magic Attack ends the duel. The uh, He's not the king, but he's Yami Yugi. Yami Yugi will end the duel. The Pharaoh has won. Damn. Yeah, he's like, okay, please stop stalking me. Or at least tell me why you're here. Well, they'll, they'll do that after the tournament. Let's continue the tournament. All right, top eight now has Yami Yugi in it. Now I'm hyped. Bandit Keith, Yami Yugi, the Rose Duelist. It can't get much better. The next duel is between two of the, whatchamacallum? Two of the card professors. It's the number one professor, Richie Merkt, versus the low rank, oh, mid ranking professor, Kirk Dixon. Let's see who wins. Will it be the cheater or will it be the Machina user? 
All right, Richie, where you at? People want to see your cheater deck that got you this far. The only thing that seems to beat his deck is super high power monsters. Richie is not good against high power monsters. So like a blue eyes deck would beat him. All right, let's go. Kirk Dixon versus Richie. Let's see who's better. I'm going to go look for them right now. Kirk Dixon is on your screen. Richie's on your screen. Both card professors are here. We got ourselves a Machina. You're right. Slifer's still up in the air. Or hair. Because, you know, typing is fun. Uh, Machina Sniper's just going to look at us. Commander Coffee. Do you actually almost can summon Machina Force? That's all the cards you need to summon Machina Force. I'm not even joking. If he summons all these cards, he summons Machina Force. That's super interesting. Is he going to be able to do... I want to see him do it. I really want to see it happen. Uh, please? Somehow pull it off. It'll be the coolest thing ever. All right. Gear Frame comes through. Gear Frame gets Machina Fortress. Okay. And Fortress says we're not going to do it. And Fortress is just going to win the duel. Also burn. Also, that card has an effect. 300 damage for each card they control. That's 1,500 damage. That's a lot. That's a lot of burn. Dear God. All right. I am Blast with Chain. You fail for it. You fell for their trick. Nice try. And that worked. That one did work. All right, Richie Merch. You're supposed to be the number one card professor, but you're running into some trouble. What's wrong there, Richie? You can't handle some Machinas? Are the Machinas too good for you? You're stealing a Machina? Your cards are so bad you have to use one of his? Cyber Summon Blast, you pay for it. You pay for what you've just done. I think Richie's done. Oh, it's over. He got the sniper. Oh, he didn't use it. What the hell? Why didn't he summon the sniper card? If he summons the sniper card, he wins the duel, right? Why didn't he summon the sniper card? Wait a minute. Wait, no. Wait. This effect doesn't work on both sides of the fields. He couldn't do it. Machina Sniper prevented it. Machina Sniper said he couldn't attack Machina Soldier. And then the, the idiot blew up the monster that was protecting him. It was the only reason you were still in the duel, and you blew it up. Speaking of blowing up, you're dying. You're not living. That's the end of the duel. And there we go. Kirk Dixon. He's going to be taking that black duel disc after this. The black duel disc will be stolen for Kirk. All right. Let's go ahead and let's get into the next duel. Kirk Dixon versus Richie. Will Kirk steal the black duel disc from one of his own professors? Yeah, I never knew about that ruling either. Steal the freaking... Uh, steal a Machina card when they have Sniper face up and they can't attack you. But then he was dumb enough to kill the Sniper, so that was kind of dumb. All right, looks like we're doing again. We got a lot of magical things on the field. Anyone here that likes Magical Musketeers, this might be your last chance to see it because Kirk is not going easy on the guy. Kirk is kicking his ass, actually. Fortress is now on the field. Monster Born gets Sniper on the field. Dear God, man. He just summoned three monsters in one turn. The attack comes through. Blast with Chain again. He loves his guns. He loves them. And there it goes. And attack comes through. That attack says he gains twice. The attack is at 3,400. Dear God, he beat Fortress, but Fortress has an effect for beating it. It was still worth it, 100%. And 1,800 damage comes through. All right, interesting. You got rid of Fortress this time, so by getting rid of Fortress, you have a chance of winning. And that card's not strong enough. And you have the same card twice. You got the same one. Oh, no, that one just makes the opponent have zero attack. And that one lets you search, apparently. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is pretty good. These Magical Musket guys, they're doing their job. The problem is they don't know about the Dark Snipers that are about to come out. Hello there, Sniper Card. Sniper Card throws away a Fortress card. And Sniper Card does damage. Very nice. Can't beat 2k defense, though. You need to find a way to beat that. So, he's waiting for his boss monster. He needs the magical... Uh, what, 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 does anyone remember his name again? What was the Magical Musketeer's boss monster's name? Because I, I, I think I, I said it once, but I don't remember now. The one that we made for this one. Not, not the actual boss from the actual game. It's a tribute monster. Oh, what the hell? Oh, that was quick. Yep. Oh, that guy. There we go. It's Zakiel. Oh, yeah. Zakiel O'Neal. I, I remember now. And Zakiel is on the field. Zakiel destroys Machina Fortress. And with that, it's gone. So, how are you going to beat a 2,500, 2,500 monster? 
what you going to do against it? Ma machine assembly line? That's not going to do much. I mean, the attack growth is not... Oh, Fortress. Yep, with the attack growth, it's just enough. And Richie's done. Richie's done. Machine assembly line decided the duel there. They were waiting just for that moment. And with this, it looks like Richie's out of here. And it looks like Kirk Dixon will be moving forward. Machina Fortress is too damn good. Welcome. I'm having a lot of fun today. Attacks going through. Very nice. Very nice. One more turn left in it. What are you going to do with your last turn, Richie, before you lose your Black Duel Disc? His last turn, he sets another trap. I, for the love of God, do these traps require a monster? Is that why he's not using it? I have no clue if they do, but he's not using them. The attack goes through. Game-winning attack. It's over! Kirk Dixon and his Machina deck have won the duel, and he's in top eight of the tournament. Kirk Dixon of the Card Professors is in top eight. I'm in hype mode for good reason. We've had at least 10 hype duels. At least 10. <laughs> hype matches, I should say. Hype matches. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get back to our brackets. Kirk, go ahead and move forward. The next duel is going to be Deshuetz Lu, the character that blew everybody's mind by defeating Merrick. And now he's going to be fighting Merrick. <laughs> The guy beat Merrick only to have to fight Merrick. Yes, Deshuitz Lu currently has Raw. But Merrick Ishtar is coming for them gods. He wants them. And when he wants them, he's going to get them. So let's go ahead and get this going, guys. Let's see here. Merrick Ishtar versus Deshuitz Lu. Perfect. Lou Pickles is ready to go. Didn't I just duel you? Exactly. He's like, he doesn't know what these freaking things are. What does a Yami form even mean? What is he talking about? Oh, there we go. We're going to do the Battle of the Floaters. Who has the better floater? In the Battle of the Floaters, the Mystic Tomato will reveal a Mystic Tomato. The Giant Rat reveals Giant Rat. The Battle of the Floaters shall continue. The Giant Rat and the Mystic Tomato go again. I wonder what the next monster is going to be. Unless he has a Mystic Tomato in his hand. No, he does not. All right, there's no more floaters. The floaters are gone. And with the floaters gone, what are you going to do? And New Doria, okay. Tactical. <laughs> okay. Wait a minute. Castlegate is on the field. So he got his boss monster. Sadly, it has to be in attack mode for now. That's blue eyes damage. 3,000 damage to the face. But Castlegate will just go in defense mode next turn. So there's nothing to fear. And Waboku's very nice. He loves his what? Wait, did you just... Did you just... Huh. Alright. I'm just gonna live with that. And Merrick, what you gonna do now? Oh, that card's annoying. I hate that card personally. Yeah, Merrick, you gotta find a way to kill that card. Which means you need to find a way to kill Nudoria. Giant Germ goes in. Waboku says no. That card could steal a card for a turn, but it's used at the wrong timing. You didn't get your negate attacks, did you? Yeah, Waboku is more for him to get Castle Gate onto the field. And negate attack is more to get those monsters value. Okay, try again. Okay, you cannot draw this turn. New door. You have five monsters on the field. And you can't kill nothing. You can flip it, but you can't kill it. Brain Jacker starts jacking. All right, Gilgirth has been stolen. New Doria, get rid of Castle Gate for the love of God. Oh, God, it has zero attack. They don't know how. Oh, God, they brought it back, didn't they? Gilgirth has returned. I think Merrick's in trouble, folks. I don't think he knows what to do. I think he's I, I think he's in a bit of he's in a bit of a bad spot. Giant Rat has returned to kill the germ. The germ will at least do burn, but it's not a good position to be in. However, because he has to summon two germs, or because he's going to summon two germs, he can no longer normal summon a basic monster. So, Merrick, what do you what do you got? What, what plans do you have? We have a tribute monster keeping the germs. End of Anubis! And End of Anubis is going to be forced to attack Castlegate, which it does not work. Castlegate's invincible. Eudoria should have been used on Giant Rat to kill Gate, but you don't know how. Giant Rat is negated by the... Uh, gets negated by End of Anubis, by the way. Castle Gate shall hold the field until this man gets his Fisher Smashing Ground, or I would say Flip Effect Monster, but he doesn't have any chance to summon that. 
Okay, no Fisher Smashing Ground slash whatever. He's got a couple cards that do. Everyone's got a couple cards that do that. Yeah, what a good time to summon Raw. If he summons Raw, he loses, which is actually, this is how the other guy lost. And now no more special summons in general. Uh, does End of Anubis negate New Doria? Yes, it does. He cannot win with New Doria. He needs his spells and traps to do it. Deck count, let's do it. Deck count. 24, uh, 23. But don't you worry, Deshuit's Lou is unbeatable. He's one of the strongest card professors I've ever seen. And Swords, wow. You got Merrick to play Sword. Merrick, you... I just noticed he's set. Wait, Merrick might have a flip effect that can kill Castlegate. When you miss the fast forward button, I do too. Normally, we don't have to worry about this situation because everyone... Oh, there we go, Morphin Jar, that'll fix it. Oh, wait, he filled up his spell and trap card zone. He can't play Fisher. S sir, you can't play Fisher like this. Sir, he can win by burn. Sir, sir, I don't think you noticed that he can win by burn. Your life points are kind of low. Mind control for burn. He's not going to use the burn effect. It was just wasted. Never mind. It's just wasted. It would only do half, so he would still be alive. It's not worth it yet. But Wabaku was supposed to make it so he could do two turns of burn. It just didn't. The AI didn't know how to do that. And 2,500 has been stolen. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You got nothing to do. End of Anubis is on the wrong side of the field now. End of Anubis is going to end this duel. <laughs> Brainjacker does have to heal you, though. It's uh, one of the weaknesses. End of Anubis is here. Trap hole. Get trap hold. Get wrecked. The attacks come through. Jowls of Dark Demise will steal Vanity, probably. Nope, it wants New Doria. And Vanity kills New Doria, but it can't use its effect anyway. Nah, that's in the grave. You can't do that. Nah, nice try. No, this field is going to get worse by the second. Trust me. If he's not willing to use Castlegate, he's going to lose. Brain Control steals Gilgirth for some ungodly reason. Um. Okay. Okay. Why is Castlegate not in attack mode doing its burn effect? Oh, it is. I apologize. And the winner is Castlegate. <laughs> the winner is Deshu, it's Lou. I apologize. Um, why wouldn't you bet on Lou? This guy's unbeatable. Unless your opponent... It's like the situation where the opponent needs uh, MST or Harpies. Unless your opponent gets Dark Hole or Fisher or Smashing Ground, they can't win. They can't win. He's unstoppable. You guys made fun of Lou Pickles before, but he's unstoppable. They call him the weakest of the professors. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this game and let's see what happens. We have a bunch of sets. Nothing wrong with that. I won, but I didn't feel like I earned it. Yeah, welcome to hell. Guys, he's going to get it. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. He's going to get his king thing. And he tributes the opponent's monster for Vanity's Fiend. His king thing is a normal summon. He doesn't need to tribute it. So, I mean, he doesn't need to, he doesn't need to special summon it. He'll get it. Castle Gate, where are you? Electric Virus doesn't work, but you can Brain Control for damage. Oh, Brain Control, destroy New Doria. The opponent has to destroy your monster. Or you can just do a lot of damage. Okay. I would have done the New Doria play. New Doria play was smarter. Oh, it wouldn't have worked. Never mind. I didn't know it wasn't going to work. I think Merrick won. Merrick wins by Giant Germ if he draws it. Merrick wins because the opponent didn't realize he had no monsters on the field. And that's the end of the duel. The winner is... Wait, Waboku. Woboku, get wrecked. Now get your castle and end everyone's happiness. Get it right now. Ah. <laughs> it would have made me happy. I would have got a laugh out of that. Alright, any other cards you want to show the class? No? That's about it? Alright, go ahead and take them down. The winner is Merrick Ishtar! Merrick Ishtar will take game number two. Lou, that was your first loss of the day. Yami Merrick couldn't beat you once. But this time, you actually lost to Americ. Let's go ahead and get into game number three and see what happens. All right, I need my water because this third duel I can already feel is going to be the long one. This is going to be the rough duel, guys. Get ready. Well, no Waboku, but I see the floater. The giant rat equals... You know what the giant rat equals. You can do the math. No, he does not have Raw in his deck, no. He has Raw on his person, not in his deck. No! 
Giant Rat can't get the castle gate. That was his best shot. Was Giant Rat getting the castle gate? Lou, get castle gate naturally. You need it. Harpies is so good. Harpies is so good. He lost most of it. He lost the best cards in the game. Oh, no. Oh, no. That did not work out. All right. Jowls is going to make sure he doesn't take any damage this turn. Merrick Ishtar is doing what his freaking evil counterpart couldn't. All right. We have time seal. Time seal is very nice. Time Seal is going to stop Merrick from playing the game next turn. Uh, Vanity is going to have to destroy this Gear Golem card. And Merrick is starting to do damage, but there's plenty of time to get that Castle Gate because your opponent will not draw a card next turn. Therefore, they're Brick next turn. They just have basic monsters. I was hoping that you would get Dark Hole and it would have been the funniest thing ever. The chat gets real mad when Lou starts doing good. The attack goes in and that is not good. Lou is... Uh, Lou is turning into a loser. He's got 400 life points remaining. All right, with 400 life points left, Lou, what the hell are you going to do? Yep, you can stall. You can stall. That's right. Wait till Castle Gate. Get a giant rat. Wait till Castle Gate. We'll make it happen. You're a Guido. Okay. If he draws Castle Gate right now, he can still win this. As long as Giant Germ never dies by battle. Damn. Damn. All right, that didn't work out. Well, I think that's the end of the duel. I think Lou's out of here. I think Kirk Dixon might be the only card professor left. That is it, everybody. Merrick Ishtar of the Ishtar family has now obtained Raw. Raw is now in his possession. We are now going to be moving in to the next fight of the tournament. Lou is gone. He only defeated Yami Merrick because Yami Merrick does burn to himself. So let's go ahead and send Merrick forward. The next duel is Odeon Ishtar versus Seto Kaiba in the show's battle city. These two were top eight. So let's see how they do against each other. These two might have fought each other in the show if the randomization had gone a different way. And with Odeon's new buffs, he could definitely put Seto Kaiba on the ropes. So we'll see what happens. And let's go. Odeon, he got, oh, now he gets his temple card? Are you serious? Odeon now has his temple card when he does uh, he doesn't have the other monster that breaks my heart You're breaking my oh cyber is really good. Never mind. You don't break my heart anymore. That's a good card. That's a really good card That's a really good card. I'm so excited I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I know I'm looking for I'm looking for Odeon's face. I'm still looking for it. There we go Odeon is here crush card you lose all your powerful cards Blue eyes is gone Obelisk is gone. Blue Eyes. Is All three Blue Eyes are in the grave and Obelisk is gone. Wait, no. He wanted that. He wanted that, you fool. Didn't, don't you get it? Don't you get it? He wanted Blue Eyes. Oh, no! Everybody! It's the Egyptian God card! Obelisk the Tormentor! Obelisk goes in with the Fist of Fate and Blue Eyes goes. It's gone. Now, Obelisk is obviously about to leave. He had a nice time on our channel. Bye-bye. Um, but it was nice. <laughs> I mean, that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Odeon, you're fine. You're fine. You got rid of all of his powerful cards as long as he gets no revival. Oh, God. Yup. That's a problem. That is a minor problem. Fixable. Very fixable. You got him down to 5,000 life points, Odeon. Good start. Good start. Now, now draw Pot of Greed. Pot of Greed's your only hope. I'm not even joking. Get Pot of Greed. Mystic Tomato. Understandable. I'd be hiding in defense mode too. I'm scared. God punched a snake. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Attack goes through. Horrible attack, by the way. Don't ever want to see that again. And monster comes through. We got Mystic Tomato. 1,600 damage comes through. Very nice. Very nice. And we'll see what happens. Dark Tinker, he's going to try and Synchro Summon against his opponent. If he's lucky enough to draw a level 4 monster. You know what? You could use that. Funny enough. 
Yeah, you totally use that. Go ahead. That's a level four, but even if he did synchro, he was going to lose. So he just wants the defense. It actually gives him another turn. It doesn't give him another turn if his opponent has... Nope, he didn't draw another monster. You're fine. You're fine. You get another turn. Because you put that in defense mode, you're fine. And that was dumb. Seto Kaiba has done a lot of damage to himself in this duel. And because of that, you still have a chance. No, he needed Mystical Beast of Circuit. He drew all three Temple of the Kings. He just needed Mystical Beast of Circuit. Last time, he never drew this spell card. This time, he never drew his Mystical Beast. It breaks my heart. Yeah, that's game. That is game. All right, that is the end of the duel. The winner is Seto Kaiba in game number one. Seto Kaiba is the victor. So we are now going to be going into game number two. And in game number two, let's see what happens. Will Odeon be able to make a better comeback? Will he get the right combo instead of just one or the other? Every time he gets one or the other, he can't get both together. It breaks my heart. Why can't he be better? Assault Wyvern is too strong for any of your stuff. Giant Germ can help, though. Yep, he agrees. Giant Germ can help. All right, attack goes through. Magic Cylinder. No, Odeon's going to have... Don't worry, Odeon's going to have Tormentor real soon. Once he gets it in his hands, the duel, it'll all be over. Jar Greed. He got his Mystical Beast. Now he just needs his Spell Card. Damn it! No! Draw... No! Don't set it! That's even worse! Oh my god, I hate this guy. Oh, I actually hate this guy. Okay. Because you set it, it's gone. All right. All right, well, let's think. Let's use our brains. How are we going to get out of this situation? That. That card. That trap. That trap will get you out of this situation. All right, Assault Wyvern goes in. Dark Tinker didn't stand a chance. Dark Tinker is going to let him choose. Um, Assault Wyvern's like, hey, you know what I got in my hand? Let's see. I got a Blue Eyes White Dragon. Funny thing about Blue Eyes. It's an amazing card. Can't beat a Metal Reflex line. Metal Reflex Slime. Oh, what the hell? We're going to do it? Everybody, Synchro Shogun! And we have a Zurei Silver Dragon. And Dark Hole is such a good play. Wow. I'm not even mad. That was smart. That was actually legitimately smart. I'm not mad. It's over. Seto Kaiba has two blue eyes. And an Azure Eyes. A Silver Eyes. Azure Eyes. Pot agreed. He didn't get the spell cards. The, the AI can't get single cards because it keeps getting copies of the same card. That's the, I, I have proof. This entire series is me proving it. Proving that this game cheats. Alright. Attack, attack. We, now we know what you're going to draw, so it's fine. That's three of that monster. You're right. Yeah, Makuya, the Destructor, or whatever. Seto Kaiba has one. Seto Kaiba's protecting his god. <laughs> embodiment of a Papa -pa. And the monster goes in. Goodbye, Embodiment. The monster goes in. Goodbye. Blue Eyes burst stream of destruction. Odeon did pretty good in this tournament today, but at the end of the day, he had to go up against freaking Seto Kaiba. One of the strongest duelists in the world right now. And Seto Kaiba has done it. Seto Kaiba will be in top 8 of this. Top 8 is stacked, by the way. I don't know if you guys have been keeping track, but top 8 is stacked. It's going to be a very tight top 8. Alright, now it's time to find out the last two characters of top 8. The first fight will be... Yako Tenma and Yako Tenma will be fighting Akiza the Rose Witch if Yako loses he has to put all his life in the hands of Kirk Dixon Kirk Dixon is Yako's last hope if Yako can't beat Akiza the Rose Witch uh, yes he did yes he did Kurt you're right now, where is Yako? Doesn't he know he needs to be on stage? It's time to see it. So Yako is the one who thought of this plan today. To get everybody to Kaiba's Island. To get all the cards at once. 
And it's failing so far because most of the car professors have fallen horribly, and his brother has fallen. So hopefully he can make up for that right now. Hopefully he can defeat the Rose Witch, one of the hands of Seto Kaiba. All right, well, that's a horrible hand. That is a horrible hand for Akiza. I feel very bad. Yako, don't get harpies. Don't make it worse. Yako gets Indomitable Fighter and is unafraid to do 2300 damage. One trap card will be harpies. And, yep, you predicted right. It is a monster card, though it's not the best one in the world. Harpies will guarantee that if it was final attack orders, you're not going to get to use it. Ah, it was! Ha! Ah, he got final attack orders, which would have been so good for him. But now it's gone. Yako, this is literally your only chance. You need to do something. Harpies, oh my god, it is legit possible. Yako can do it. Yako can actually do it. He, he can do this. Akiza had the worst hand possible. It's doable. Oh, wait. No, that's a non-tuner, isn't it? It's not doable. I, I take it back. That's a non-tuner. Yup! That's a Synchro Summon! Akiza gets Black Rose Dragon! And is she going to go for piercing? That's my question. By throwing away Rose Girl? Nope, she's going for damage. Uh, she does 2,400 damage instead of going for piercing and letting him keep the monster. So now, Yako, you're going to need to think of something else because, uh, yeah, that's that's a big boy. I guess, yeah, that makes sense. I, I forgot. If you set that, then you have zero attack. It's actually worse to set it. Uh, looks like Rose Princess is going to combo with good old Black Rose Dragon just to do some damage. Nothing wrong with that. He's trying his best. He's trying his best. This was the luckiest hand he, uh, uh, he could have had against Akiza. And he gets rid of a car. Oh! Machine Beast King Barbaros! Or Beast Machine King. Uh, whatever. Beast Machine King Barbaros is here. And Beast Machine King Barbaros brutalizes the opponent. These two level threes can't make anything strong enough to beat it. But Splendid Rose has something up her sleeve. Rock Rose gets out another monster. The Splendid Rose spell card is here. All right. Splendid Rose, use your effect to nerf the opponent. The opponent drops to 1,900 attack. The Splendid Rose uses her second effect to attack again directly with half damage. And now Yako's in danger. Even the Machine Beast King, whatever it was called, was defeated. Dark Hole! What does that do? Rose and Rose, what does that do? Oh, that's pretty good. That, you know what? You might as well. You're going to lose all your stuff anyway? You might as well. Good choice. Good choice. So what is your plan now? Your plan is to use that card, get back to the hand. Okay, okay. How are you going to beat that, though? You beat the Machine King. How are you going to beat the Beast King? How are you going to beat the Beast King? Even at 19, he's still too big for you. Oh, wait. You have the Equip spell. I just noticed. Wait, what does that do? You just get a Black Rose Dragon? That's fair. That's... Fair, what the hell? And Ruddy Rose Dragon enters the field, unamused by this problematic opponent. She may be down to 1500 life points, but I don't see a magic cylinder, and that means this duel is as good as over. Plus, yeah, you're losing everything. And she actually used the nuke effect. That might be the only time you get to see her nuke effect activate. She wins the duel and she ends it. That is it, everybody. Let's go into game number two, and I, I don't know what he can do. I, I do not know. I'm so sorry. You have to put all your faith in Kirk, Yako. This Rose Witch is insane. <laughs> she She's not just a crazy person. She's a great duelist. Yep, tactical nuke. Actually tactical, too, because that one did not destroy itself, which is a tactical play. All right, well, what are you going to do, Akiza? What else you got? Uh, that hand's all right. A lot of tuners, but that hand's all right. Gene Warps, that's fine. Just play a plant monster. Play your Rose Girl. You'll be fine. Rose Princess, you'll be fine. That's actually going to fix it. And yes, this fixes it. Because now you can do that. And you can Special Summon. Yep. And that's a Black Rose Dragon. 
that top deck actually fixed it up, and now you have a Black Rose Dragon. And Black Rose Dragon is a little problematic for Gene Warped Warwolf. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You want to go a little farther than that. Uh, Yako, let's go one step further. <laughs> Ruddy Rose Dragon with 3,200 attack. Only a Black Rose Dragon can stand up to that. Yeah, but Vagrant got knocked out, so uh, there's no one that can do it. Oh, Yako, what the hell? Did he give up? Did he press surrender? No, he played TT! Wait, does that stop TT? It negates it? I think it negates it. All right, Ruddy Rose now devolves. In order to stop that, it devolves into Black Rose Dragon, which is still a god-tier monster, and it just resynchros something. <laughs> She's so strong. How did she lose in battle? Who beat Akiza at Battle City? Who beat Akiza? She didn't even get top eight. Who was the person that stopped this girl from getting top eight? I need to know. Well, there goes all the banishing. And attack goes through. And attack goes through. And you have one turn left. It was probably Crow. It was probably Crow. I have no clue. I I I, I got to rewatch Battle. It's worth it. I'm gonna go rewatch Battle City after this. It was totally worth it. And Harpy says no. She's like no, no. I'm Stardust Dragon all of a sudden. I'm not even gonna let you pop my back row. Get wrecked. Koyo. I think Koyo lost in the first fight. Sadly. Beast King's going in. Beast King destroyed a monster. I hope you're proud. Gr great job. Great job. You did it. You beat one monster by battle. I'm so proud of you. The duel's over. I'm proud of you, but the duel's over. This is the third Ruddy Rose she summoned in this one duel. This is the third Ruddy Rose. And with her Ruddy Rose Dragon, she's going to do some massive damage. Is she going to do the pop? Yep. It's over. She used the nuke twice today. That is the nuke. 3,200 damage goes through. No chance. And that is it, everybody. It was Weevil? It was Weevil. Weevil took her to Insects eat plants. We should have known that. So, guys, we are now going to be moving on to the final fight of Top 16. After this, we're going to see who the eight strongest characters are, and we're probably going to understand why. So, who are the eight strongest characters going to be? And why are they all from Kaiba Corp? <laughs> the next duel and final duel will be Yami Bakura versus Ashizu Ishtar. Ashizu of the Ishtar family, Bakura of the assholes. He's kind of just a jerk. His it's just his coin flips are so annoying. I could say he's an asshole. He's so annoying. All right. If anyone can beat him though, it could be this girl. She could do it. Ashizu's so strong. Ishizu's a very good duelist. She can take him down. I believe. I believe. Though both these characters really like their field spells, so we'll see what happens. Alright, let's see here. We got Yami Bakora ready to duel. We got Ishizu Ishtar ready to duel. They both have their field spell to start the duel, but she has harpies and no monster to summon. Oh, dear God. Necro Valley is on the field. Both care. Okay. She's a little bricked, but she's going to harpies him. The second he plays Destiny Board, he's getting harpies. All right. Attack goes through. Attack goes through. Life is good. 2,900 damage. And what else do you got? Great Keeper Spy. You got to set that. Great Keeper Spy is set. Part of the cards. What are you going to do about it? <clears throat> Grave Keeper. Okay, we got the Protector. No search. Uh, to the hand, at least. And the Salen is on the field. Yep, that's going to be a problem. The thing is, Bakora, you have some monsters that can fight, but you're not really a fighter. You need to you need to put you need to put down the put down the gloves. You're done. Oh, she's lucky as hell. Okay, we start with a, a, a negative a zero one. One, okay, one, two. 50% accurate. Also, Gravekeeper's Visionary exists. 50% accurate. And Ashizu has her, well, her mini boss monster. Which is just super good. Oh, even if that's Destiny Board, it's gone. Do it. Destroy the field spell that's stopping you from playing the game. 
Harpy's time. Was it the Destiny board to try and win the duel? It was! He got the Destiny board, but it was wasted! Assailant uses its advantage to do damage to Bakora. Bakora's in so much trouble. His life points are bleeding. Oh, both their life points are bleeding, actually. Funny enough, both their life points are pretty low. But at the same time, she has field advantage. So I gotta say, you're done, boy. You're done. You lost Destiny Board. You have another field spell. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. You're not gonna be able to play today. No more of your bullcrap field spells. Get it out of here. And what else you got? Oh, he's done. He didn't even summon a monster. He's done. He's given up. He's throwing in the towel. A Shizu, use your advantage. Yes, take advantage of your effect. Assailant is so nice. Ah, oh, I miss Yasmin, kind of. All right, Slate Warrior is gone. Slate Warrior, go ahead. Take away 500 attack. All right, a Shizu's like, I, I thought people hated my field spell. Dark Hole! Visionary! Yes! All you did was make the visionary stronger and no Necrofear. You can't banish. Necro, Necro Valley stops Necrofear. It counters his deck. His deck has been countered, everybody. His deck has been countered. The winner is a Shizu Ishtar. Even if he had Necrofear, it's a brick as long as Necro Valley exists. All right, let's go ahead and get into the next duel. Will Yami Bakura get luckier this time, or will she draw Harpies again? I don't see Harpies, and I don't see Necro... Well, she has Necro Valley. If she wants it, she has it. Yep, there we go. Necro Valley stops most of his deck, so that's really valuable. And she has a 2k defender, so there's nothing she he can do to her. Yes, you can play your field spell. Yes, you can waste your life points and put a monster on. To be fair, she was going to put in attack mode anyway. And we have ourselves a set. Gravekeeper Spy, time to set that and play Card of Demise. Uh, we're going to bring back Commandant with lots of attack. Or you don't have to set it up, oh, you're going to set it. Chaos Sanctuary, let's see if it saves him. No, you don't have the luck stat. A Shizu Ishtar has the luck stat. And Magic Cylinder. All right, so wait, how does this work? The cylinder works? So that's guaranteed. The other part doesn't work, right? Yeah, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Maybe it both worked. I don't know. All I know is it didn't matter. Um, yeah, Bakora, you're, you can't use your Dark Necrofear, so that card's a brick in your hand. You don't have your Destiny Board, which you run three of, by the way. And uh, I don't like your odds. I don't like your odds. I think Ashizu's got your number. Harpies could be used, but she doesn't know how. She doesn't know to destroy the field spell. It's worthwhile. Okay, so she's taking a little burn. It's fine. Just a little burn. It's a little burn. It's not, it's not too much. It's just a little burn. All right, she lost, she lost a lot. So that, was, that was pretty bad. That was, that was pretty bad. I'll admit, if it wasn't for that, he, if she played Harpies, he would have lost. Maximum value dark hole! M -m -m maximum That was the best dark hole you could ever get! Five monsters! Against a deck that runs no extra deck. She top decks sword, she's the luckiest character in the world. Card demise to get a monster. She got a monster, she's the luckiest character in the world. She uh, you know what? It was gonna get thrown away anyway. It was gonna get thrown away anyway. You know what? You're the luckiest character in the world. But Giant Drum wanted to die, so it's kind of a weird situation. Oh, he had another one already. Wow. All because she drew sword. She could totally win this. Pot agreed he needs harpies. That's not harpies. Alright. Giant Germ's not great. Swords is great. Royal Tribute, do it. Uh, well, flip those coins. Let's see what we got. All right, Giant Germ's dead. 500 more burn. Field Spell's not saving him. Royal Tribute, let's see what his hand is. And Necrofear. Necrofear's worthless. Honestly, it is worthless. Against a Necro Valley deck, Necrofear does nothing. Funny enough, if he gets Destiny Board, he could force her to attack. Wait, isn't that card? She had Harpies the whole time. I forgot. I forgot she had Harpies. 
Oh my god. Well, um, you lose, sir. <laughs> you lost your field spell that gave you a chance, and you lo you have no monsters left, and that's her boss monster. And you're going to see her boss monster. Everybody say hello to the new boss monster, Oracle. Uh, Oracle says, I win the duel. That's, that's about right. Oracle says, I win. I'm a level 10 monster, and I win. Dark Hole's gone, by the way, so there's no chance for him. He has a 0% chance of winning. With no Chaos Sanctuary and no Dark Hole, there is no chance. That's not enough defense. 100 more damage. This is his last turn. Unless he draws Magic He did use Magic Cylinder. Unless he draws his Field Spell, the duel's over. The duel is over. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> a Shizu Ishtar is a top 8 duelist. Once again, she's always top 8. Earthbound Spirit does not have enough defense. Game-winning attack goes through. And the winner by countering Dark Necrofear is Ashizu Ishtar. Ashizu is in top eight. The rare hunters have failed. No rare hunters remain. They all failed. So, let's go ahead. Let's get into the top eight characters. Let's get a closer look at them. I'm very curious who made it. Who made it to top eight? We know a Shizu. She just made it. So, top eight will be a Shizu of the Ishtar family, a Kiza of Kaiba Corp, Seto Kaiba of Kaiba Corp, Merrick of the Ishtar family, Kirk Dixon of the, well, of the Tenma brothers of the card professors of Pegasus's group, Yami Yugi of his own group, the Rose Duelist of, of Kaiba Corp, and Bandit Keith of Kaiba Corp. But Bandit Keith wants one thing in this tournament, and it's what Kirk Dixon has. So he's going to go ahead, he, he has to win this duel to get it. So let's go ahead and let's see what happens. Will it be Bandit Keith or will it be the Rose Duelist? Which character deserves to move forward, guys? Good ending confirmed. Uh, if you consider Seto Kaiba good, if you, well, Kirk is not good. <laughs> Kirk is not good ending. Kirk would be the worst ending. If you consider Seto Kaiba good, then sure, we could say that. Um, but other than that, no. Kirk is right there, guys. Don't ignore him. Don't pretend like he's nothing. He has a good deck. Don't pretend like it's nothing. Don't forget, the only reason we haven't seen more of Kirk is because in his first ever tournament, he lost to Bandit Keith immediately. Like, it was not fair. Speaking of Bandit Keith, let's watch him duel. It's time. So, guys, it's going to be the Rose Duelist versus Bandit Keith. Usually, Bandit Keith does fall off around top eight. Top eight, he always gets. But once he gets to top eight, things start falling apart. So let's see what happens. Will Bandit Keith fall apart or will the Rose Duelist uh, fall apart himself? Because both characters are known to brick. Yeah, it was pretty funny where it's like, there's one guy in this tournament I don't want to look at. Ends up with him in the first round. <laughs> well, Bandit Keith has his field spell. That's a great advantage against the Rose Duelist. The Rose Duelist has some traps. That's very nice. That is interesting. Okay. 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 That was a lot of level four monsters. I did not expect him to get that many, to be honest. And Keith wants to start this duel fast. He wants a fast duel with the Rose Duelist. And he's getting no monster. He got two. He got two monsters. Okay. I would have said Tekoichi, but AI will be AI. All right. The Rose Hand is interesting, but pa Wall of Thorns doesn't work on face down monsters, so that's not going to help. I really hope that Bandit Keith doesn't have Harpies, because that was uh, a lot of traps. That's Harpies. And with Harpies on the field, that's going to be a lot of damage. So we're going to go ahead and use Premature Burial. Get back Cyber... Oh, it's going to be tributed, isn't it? It's not. So we got back Cyber Draw on purpose, is what you're telling me. All right. Well, there goes the Rose. The Rose is going to stay alive, actually, because it was in defense. Uh, Heavy Metal Raiders summons Desperado Barrel Cannon. Cyberjar is going to be right there. Desperado is going to get a... Not a direct attack, but it's going to be able to destroy a monster, which is always good. And one second. I think I just got a text. I did just get a text message. 
All right. Well, I'll get back to that text message later. Let me go ahead and see what happens. Rose Girl comes through. Rose Girl's going back to the hand, but this field is horrifying. Why aren't you playing stuff face? Oh, I guess Mystic Tomatoes face up. Um, good luck. Blowback Dragon, okay. Blowback Dragon gets head. And Wall of Thorns. We've been waiting for the Wall of Thorns all day. Desperado quick effect. Oh, one second. I gotta... I'm back, everybody. So what did I miss? Wait, how? What? Wall of Thorns. Wait. Wall of Thorns? I thought he had the field. What happened? Why is Barrel Dragon here? Why is Barrel Dragon here? That's not fair. He shouldn't be here. That's not allowed. Revival of uh, Rose again. Rose Girl again, of course. Monster Effect, Monster Effect, of course. I missed a Monster Effect, everybody. And Barrel Dragon's going in again to destroy Rose Girl, even though it's a fruitless effort. A lot of heads on that one. And Barrel Dragon goes in. Magic Cylinder will do its job. I think the Rose Duelist is struggling. I don't think he's doing a very good job against our buddy Keith here. So how are you going to make a comeback, Rose Duelist? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Watch him top deck the final Wall of Thorns. Is that his third top deck, by the way? Oh, Bandy Keith! You're my hero! Wait, all he has to do is not attack and he's good. Just let the Blast Sphere do its job. Bandit Keith, you are genius! He didn't attack! Oh my god, I love this guy. I love... Oh, he popped himself! Okay, that was really smart. That was really smart. What he did is he used the Rose effect to pop himself before the Blast Sphere could pop him. And ended up with three monsters as a result. That was actually a good play. Also, Harpies hit the field spell, which is the most important thing to hit. Great job from the Rose Girl. Uh, Keith, thank God you didn't attack, but now it's going to happen again, so I'm sorry. Sorry, Keith. Oh, wow. Look at you packing a... Look at you with your draw power. I'm so proud of you. All right, let's see what we got here. Well, that's not good. And Wall of Thorns. Yep, that's not good. But you know what Keith didn't do? He didn't normal summon. That's what I'm talking about. Keith held back a normal summon just for that situation. And Rose Girl doesn't matter. Whoa! The Synchro Summon! The first Synchro of Ro the Rose Duelist. He summons the Empress of Blossoms. All right. I don't know what he's going to do with it, but that's the first time he's ever Synchro Summoned. Terraforming. Heavy Metal Raiders. Well, if any character is actually... Oh, he wasted that. I'm not going to finish my sentence. He summoned Cyberjar in attack mode. I'm not going to finish my sentence. That is the first time he's ever summoned that, unless it happened off screen while I was gone for two seconds. Yeah, it's not the best card in the world, but it works well for a deck that needs uh, high-level monsters. So, obviously he doesn't have Rosario right now, but for later it would have been nice if it goes to the grave. Also, Talia exists, and Talia does a lot of damage. Remember, Cyberjar is not a machine. So it doesn't get to take advantage of that. Why'd you put that in attack? All right, whatever. Yeah, Benny Keith's field spell is really good, but it requires life points to use. Son of a bitch. It requires life points to use. So the fact that that card was protected by Talia is pretty good. Uh, the fact that it requires life points to use means he can't survive against this many monsters. Also, did you just summon four monsters in one turn? Or three monsters, whatever. Oh, that dark hole was all you had. Yeah, that dark hole was very not good. That dark hole was the opposite of good. Maybe bad. Possibly bad. With his uh, new synchro monster, the Rose Duelist has won. The Rose Duelist has shown you all his new synchro monster, and he has won. Uh, we're going to go into game number two. Keith, I understand you, could, you couldn't have won that duel any way you played it. So try again. Just try again. I feel bad for you. It was a good duel from both duelists. It's just that the Rose Duelist might be a slightly higher caliber. Slightly. Smallest amount higher.
Ugh, that's not a good hand. If your name is the Rose Duelist, that is not a good hand. Keith, this is your chance. Get your beater monsters. You need Mechanical Chaser, you summon it. Oh, Dekoichi. Oh, man. All right, Keith did not draw his Mechanical Chaser, I'm afraid. Which means that advantage goes to... Let's see what he draws. No, never mind. Oh, I hate swords. Harpies comes through. Harpies will hit something. It's Magic Cylinder. Understandable. Swords comes through. It looks like Bandit Keith is going to have to wait. Which means the Rose Duelist has bought himself enough turns to get himself a, a, a plant monster. Since he got a very unlucky hand. But we'll see. Anything can happen. Nope, that card's worthless for now. Yep. Swords will make it happen every time. Pot of Greed, very nice. Pot of Greed gets two cards. Terraforming, very nice for Bandit Keith. His field spell is the game changer. Heavy Metal Raiders, I mean, it's freaking his ca card. All of his monsters are on it. We can take a look while Swords is up. We got Metal Zoa, Pendulum Machine, Blast Sphere. We got Labyrinth, uh, sorry, Launcher Spider. We got, uh, I forgot what this one's called, but I, rem I, I remember him using it. I got Slot Machine, obviously, the biggest one in the background. I mean, come on. Come on, it's Bandit Keith. Also, that's a lot of tributes. This is So this is what happened to the Rose Duels at Battle City. I'm starting to understand now. That was really smart, Keith, to not give him a, a, a chance at coming back with Cyber Jar. That was really smart. Limiter removal. That's for game. Bandit Keith perfectly won this duel. Power Wall! Maximum Power Wall! He had to throw away so much! It took... How many cards does he have left? He lost half his deck. Half his deck is gone. He threw away half of it just to be able to do that. Fallen Angel is here. Monster of Born gets Lone Fire. Lone Fire can get Talia. You need Talia. Premature Burial. Uh, that's good too. Titania is good, but you need Talia. Rose Girl's good too. I'm not going to stop saying it. You need Talia. Protect your other monsters. Yep, Talia. And yep, go ahead, Tribute. Yep, I don't care. Very nice play. Blast Fear wins him the duel. Bandit Keith wins. Oh wait, no! That's the same card! It'll pop itself! It's the same card! It'll just pop itself before it happens! Bandit Keith, you gotta think of something else! Blast is not gonna win you the duel! All you have to do is activate your Queen's Effect before the standby phase! Oh, you... Talia doesn't let it happen. I was dumb. Guys, Talia doesn't let it happen. Because it involves destruction, it doesn't allow it. It's not the burn effect, but the destruction effect. That gets stopped. The Rose Duels 2 0s Bandit Keith. It was close. It was close. Talia saves the day. I have no clue how the Rose Duels did it, but he's in top four. Bandit Keith, you will always be known as the top eight god. No matter how difficult the tournament, you'll always be a top eight god. All right, Rose Duelist. So let's see what happens. I don't know. I think Seto Kaiba still owes Bandit Keith a favor for tipping him off about this. So the Rose Duelist moves forward. The next duel is also going to be pretty hype as hell. Yami Yugi versus Kirk Dixon. Can Yugi defeat a futuristic Machina deck? Can the old king, the old pharaoh, I should say, can he defeat such a, a, a futuristic deck? Kirk does have the black duel disc. Yes, it was mentioned after he won his last duel against Richie. Now, where is Kirk? I do not know where Kirk is. Mr. Dixon, to the stage, please. Thank you. All right, here we go. Yami Yugi versus Kirk Dixon. Machines versus magicians. All right, there we go. The strongest, this guy is now considered the strongest of the freaking guys. So let's see what he gets. What is that spell card? That is definitely something new. I am scared of that. And Dark Magician gets special summoned for free, basically. A thousand life points is nothing. Giant Rat gets destroyed, but I'm sure it's for a reason. Giant Rat is fine. As long as you have Dark Magician, you're probably fine. Giant Rat goes in. No. Deflected damage. You got anything else? Kirk Dixon is a little scared. He's never had to fight a Pharaoh before. All the Dark Magicians can now be seen. I see all three of them. 
I don't know if you guys see it. I see all three of them. All right. Attack goes through 1,100 damage. That's pretty bad. Attack goes through 1,100 damage. That's pretty bad. You're in a bad position my, right now, my friend. Uh, Machina Defender. Okay. You know what? If you got Machina Fortress, you'd win. But you need to summon two more monsters for that to happen if that's one of the others. And that card can get you what you need. Oh, nope. Well, I think you still get it. It's fine. It's fine. He's going to get what he needs, folks. It's going to be okay. Granted, I think Yugi just got his boss monster, but still. Oh, no. He got that monster. Interesting. That is interesting. I'm curious what's going to happen with that. So, Machina Fortress is here. Or here and that's scary. Uh, Eve, well, I'm sorry, but she got destroyed. The Illusion Magician Girl is gone. And, yeah. I'm still kind of confused why everything has happened the way it's happened. Oh, Peacekeeper! That is an interesting play because you have to attack Fortress. Dark Magic Curtain is now a worthless card. It has zero value. All right, let's see. Ma okay, very nice Machina cards right now. The Peacekeeper will keep it safe. And now it gets to get a card. Oh my god, so good. So good. Yabi Yugi's done. He can only attack Fortress, and there's going to be more. Oh, well, okay. Is that card good? I don't know about the newer Machina card, so I just have to assume that it's okay. That is not fair. That is not being used. What the hell? I'm curious about why you won't Dark Hole, but I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure there's a reason. I guess he wanted a way to turn so he's not w left wide open. Skill Dark. Okay. Dark Hole gets used. Dark Hole will be used. And with Dark Hole, we destroy everything. Skill Dark gets... Oh, wait. No, this card has a card effect. Uh, nope. The monster's back. And it has an effect. And yeah, that's a really nice effect. That's a really nice effect. And it protected him pretty well. And he get. Oh, wait. No, that's a Dark Monster. I'm afraid... He more focuses on the Earth side of things right now. All right, 1900 attack. And Mr. Machina is bricked right now. Him and Yami Yugi have been having an intense duel. No, Harpies! Harpies says no, you don't get any of your spells or traps. Kirk, he used everything he had. But at the end of the day, Yami Yugi is just freaking tough, man. All right, Kirk, what else you got? Dig something out of that deck of yours. Okay, there. That trap will have to do it. I don't know what it is, but it has to be the one that does it. There's the boss monster. So Yugi drew all of his boss monsters. He drew three dark... Oh, he searched one, but he got three dark magicians. And he got dark magician of chaos. That's pretty good. Oh, there we go. There we go. This is what we've been waiting for. Fortress has returned. Soldier goes in. Yugi has the worst hand possible. It's all breaks. And he never got three spell counters. That is, it works, but it's dangerous. It works, but it is dangerous. Dark Magician shall return. The robe uses its effect. Limited removal for, you destroyed your own fortress, but at the same time you do massive damage. But you left yourself wide open, you lost, unless you have a trap. That card does not help. In fact, if you were gonna, you would have won the duel if you had done that ahead of time. But I guess you didn't know. Kirk could have won that duel. Kirk could have 100% won that duel. He lost. He lost. He had game and he did. He just didn't play Iron Call when he had it. Thousand Eyes is unnecessary, but sure, if you want it, you can have it. Uh, it looks like the winner in duel number one is Yami Yugi. It was very close back and forth. But Kirk did not spend all of his resources, which sounds very weird for Master Duel. And because of that, he lost. So let's go ahead and let's get into game two and let's see if Yami Yugi can knock out Kirk Dixon. Oh, and since you guys are going to ask, Yami Yugi has no interest in the Black Duel disc in this story. So if he loses, if he, if he wins, it has nothing to do with that. He's just protecting Slifer at this point. It was a pretty even match. These duels could go either way. Pot agreed. Let's see what happens. I feel like anybody in top eight could go either way. Unless one character just happens to counter the other. That was a great play. Holy crap. That was a great play. Oh, it's getting better by the second. My God. 
Well, if you didn't have Apprentice Magician, you would have lost. I'm just going to let you know, you would have lost. All right. So, attack comes through. I knew someone was going to ask. I caught you. <laughs> I caught you. And that's not good. So, uh, Mr. Pharaoh, how are you going to beat that with Skill Dark Magician? You got Breaker? All right, you got Breaker. You got Harpies? Okay, you got Harpies. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think so. All right, yeah, I think he's done, guys. I think uh, Yami Yugi is about to meet his match. With a hand like that, I don't like his odds. Fortress goes in for good damage. And two skill darks isn't going to stop it. Hell, a dark magician isn't going to stop it. Monster Reborn is a nice card and all, but there's nothing in Reborn right now that could even put a dent in Fortress's uh, attack stat. The stakes of this tournament is the gods itself, the spirits, and of course, the Black Duel Disc, which is no longer valuable, but it could have been the Black Duel Disc. Um, and it's gone. Though I will say the Black Duel Disc is now under new management. It has a new owner. His name is Kirk. So, we're going to get Monster Born out of Desperation. Yeah, I understand. I've been desperate before. Go ahead. Desperation steals a Machina card. Machina card destroys a Machina card. And it looks like this duel is over. I don't think Yugi has a chance of winning. There's no card that he can get that can beat Fortress right now. Even if he summoned Dark Magician, Fortress would crash and destroy something else. So, it's mu maximum value goes to Kirk. I don't like your odds, Yugi. Do not like your odds. I've been screaming too much today. It congests my nose when I scream too much. So we have ourselves a set, which is just sad. Set means you're sweating, and we don't want to see that from the uh, from the Pharaoh. Commander Covington is there. Commander Covington can easily destroy the face down. The rod has been set, and the rod is done for. The rod actually had a chance of helping him get back, but didn't work out. He drew all three skilled Dark Magicians. He drew them. You can count that as one if you want, because they were all drawn naturally. He drew all of those. But I, this game, Master Duel makes you draw copies before you draw anything original. It just, oh, every time. You'll draw three of anything before you draw anything original. All right, now you can start drawing original. Let's see. Get out of here. Get, get him out of here. Yugi, why'd you even show up? We're going to game three. It was a lot of turns. I agree. It was a lot of turns, but... At the same time, everything he got in between those turns was not exactly uh, valuable. I mean, when was the last time you saw a spell or trap card? Let's be real. Ugh. Now he's got two. His mom lets him have two. <laughs> Get him out of here! We're going to game three, baby. The freaking Pharaoh has lost. Get him out. You want to go to semifinals with top decks like that? What happened to your luck stat, man? What happened to your luck stat? All right, here we go, guys. We're going into game number three. Will Kirk Dixon continue in the tournament with a god card helping out the Pegasus organization? Illusion. Oh, what is it called? Industrial Illusion Organization. Again, no spells and traps. What the hell? All right, Machina gets Fortress. Exactly, Fortress gets Special Summon. Come on, don't pretend like... Oh, he's going to save it. That's fine, you can save it. If you want to save it, you can save it. Apprentice can stall. You can go for Breaker. You can go for Skilled. Skilled it is. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is going to be good for you, man. I think since you drew no spells or traps in multiple duels now, your odds are just terrible. Oh, hi, Machina Fortress. Machina Soldier, Machina Fortress combo is pretty freaking brutal. Yugi has no cards in his hand that can help right now. I mean, that's pretty nice. I'll give you that. But even if you did pop some good traps, let's see. You did? Yeah, you would have lost. If he didn't pop that, he would have lost the duel. Limited removal would have ended the duel on this turn. If he did not pop that card. And the rod's gone. I don't know why he did not summon Apprentice Magician. It's blowing my mind. Apprentice Magician was obviously the right choice. So, with your final draw, Dark Hole or Bust. 
I don't know what that does, but I'm hoping that it helps because you're in a lot of you're in a bad situation right now, but uh, buddy. I would pop their spell card if I were you. Oh, I guess you don't have the life points to do it. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go, guys. Yugi is out of the duel. Machina Fortress goes in. Well, no, we got this card first. This card summons the Dark Magician as if it matters. You see it in defense mode like I do. And I see the Illusion Magician. And Illusion Magician gets the Rod Effect. And the Rod Effect says, hey, I have an effect. And these cards are going to combo off each other. And Rod goes back to the hand, which is not so impressive. Illusion gets you Dark Magician, which is not so impressive. And there goes the damage. You. Kirk Dixon, get him out of here. There's only one top deck that can save him, and it's Dark Hole. So get him out of here. That won't save him. And finally, you pick Apprentice. Fair enough. Fair enough. And here we go again. Attack goes through. Apprentice Magician is gone. Apprentice Magician gets... Apprentice Magician. This is his only hope. Apprentice Magician gets... Apprentice Magician. Okay. And we got another one. And he has the robes. I don't think the robes can save him either. I think no matter what situation we look at, he's in a too bad of a situation. Yep. Yep, skill dark desperate. What the fuck? <laughs> that means he gave up. I'm just going to assume that means the AI gave up. The winning attacks go through. Oh, he baited. Why didn't you attack with the other monster? Wait. Why? Wait. Oh, my God. Oh my god. You finally summon Rod in attack mode. No, it's over. Machine assembly line for game. Machine assembly line for game. Play machine assembly line and you win the duel. Machine assembly line for game. I don't care about Dark Hole. Sa use assembly line right now. Yes. All right, it's over. It's over. Thanks for coming. Kirk Dixon will be moving on to top four of our tournament. The uh, Industrial Illusions is still standing. The character supporting Industrial Illusions is standing, and a god has been taken once again. The god stalkers are truly stalking. Here we go. They're stalking up on gods. So, Kirk Dixon is going to move forward, meaning they're still evil. We can still have a bad end. And the next duel is Merrick Ishtar, the character that wants to seal the god cards, versus Seto Kaiba. The man who just... Uh, he did use it today, we have to admit. He used Obelisk today, and it did do something. So we'll see what happens. Oh, uh, Merrick, Merrick. Have not seen you in a minute. Where are you? Merrick. Yep, found him. We're good. Merrick Ishtar and Seto Kaiba. Yep, if you're curious, Merrick currently is holding on to Raw. He currently has Raw on him. It's not in his deck. We don't do that. But he is holding on to Raw. I just realized you probably can't see anything. Don't worry about it. Don't you worry about it. All right. Seto Kaiba. Merrick Ishtar. Life is good. And using this effect, we're going to go in and we're going to destroy Alexander Dragon. It won't last, but it's something. And whoa. All right. Those cards. Oh, he couldn't use it. He couldn't use Judgment of Anubis because it wasn't it wasn't set for a full turn yet. Alexandrite Dragon now holds the field. Great job from Seto Kaiba. And we have a tribute. It's the end of a it's it's it truly is the end of Anubis. It's dead. And it's gone. Alright, Seto Kaiba, what else you got? Oh, that's busted. That's busted. It's over. He gets two blue eyes. One right now, one for later. Oh, he wants that card instead. That's fine. Take whatever you want. I don't care. You still get another blue eyes at the end of the turn. That was the best combo possible. Yeah, Merrick, uh, your deck is really good. But you need to get your stuff faster. Because blue eyes. You can't beat a blue eyes. Merrick's deck cannot beat a blue eyes. It can't. Merrick can fight that other one, the spirit card. But it can't beat a blue. Oh, New Doria. That could beat a blue eyes. All right, blue eyes is dead. Thank God. It's probably going back to the hand. It's going back to the hand. But it is dead. So, uh, yeah, that's real nice and all. What, what, you got any other plans? 
You uh, you got any other plans there, Merrick Ishtar? All right. You know what? I'm not even mad. Let's just go for it. You top decked it right now. I can tell. Nudoria goes in. Uh, Phoenix Chain does not work on Nudoria. It does stop it, but when Nudoria activates in the grave, so Phoenix Chain is not going to work. That's a lot of brick. The welcome to Seto Kaiba. A lot of these top eight duelists have a chance to brick. And Giant Jern comes through for a thousand. Seto Kaiba is in trouble. Merrick Ishtar has him on the ropes. He wants that god. God damn it! That's a card right there. God damn. And because of that, Nudoria will not get its effect. It was not destroyed by battle. And Giant Germ also needs to be destroyed by battle. So it's all bad, guys. It's all bad. Merrick throws down everything. He's out of cards. Merrick is scared. He saw that new blue eyes card. And he was like, no. No. All right. Well, it looks like Morphing Jar. He needed the Morphing Jar so badly. He needed it. He really needed that Morphing Jar. Oh, no. Oh, no. He didn't even get it. I feel so bad for him. I feel so bad for him. Seto, all you have to do is pop it. You could do this, too. You know what? This does more damage in the end. It's just that your opponent gets to search and thin out their deck. You don't really want to do that. But this does do more damage in the end. All right, boopity boppity. And yeah. I think Seto's completely fine with the little burn he's taking. Yeah, hey, Kaiba, you, you ever want... I know you didn't come here to take gods, you're here only to defend, but do you want a second god card? Just out of curiosity? Do, would you, do you want it? I don't, I don't think you do. For your deck. All right, well, here comes another one, and that's game. First stream of destruction. The winner is Seto Kaiba, game number one. We're now going to be moving into game number two, and we're going to see what happens. So let's go ahead and see what happens in game two. Oh, he wants to make Mokuba worse, because Mokuba is a good duelist, but he would be horrible with Raw. Like, he'd actually be god-awful. <laughs> And there's the brick. All right, so he did draw his brick this time, but who knows? Maybe he'll summon it. <laughs> oh, no way he got a tribute. He didn't. Okay, I was going to say, there's no way. Assault Wyvern. No, we're going to summon Blue Eyes. All right. We're summoning Blue Eyes White Dragon very early. Blue Eyes is willing to attack Yurigito, but Yurigito's like, nah. And uh, I would keep that token. You're going to need it. You're going to need it. And we're going to go ahead and just set. Very nice. Now we're going to see Assault Wyvern get comboed off of this. So another Blue Eyes gets summoned. All right. We got another Blue Eyes that gets rid of spells and traps. That card says you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. You're going to defense mode. Go defense mode. Ha ha. <laughs> you may have banished me, but I got you back. All right. Giant Germ. Here we go. And all we have is a couple sets. So, yeah, Merrick, you can get End of Anubis. It just isn't strong enough. You need to think of something else. All right, let's see. He got End of Anubis. I think he agrees with me that it's not strong enough. Does he have a trap? He does have a trap. He's getting my hopes up. Just slightly. Slightly getting my hopes up. All right, Alexandrite is here. Alexandrite gets rid of the giant germ. End of Anubis. It truly is time to end you. Uh, yeah, that was smart to stop that. Saku! Sakuretsu Armor comes through! What an old card! End of Anubis locks down the graveyard. The graveyard is locked. He doesn't need the token anymore. He goes in for da- Are they both spells and traps or did you need the token for tribute? You idiot. Okay, whatever. I don't even care because he actually can't silver cry. Polly is useless. Dictator is useless. Merrick is on top of the world right now. The Saku clutch is real. He's got Mystic Tomato going in. The Dictator of D is dead. And 2,500 damage goes in. And Seto, what is it with you being weak to care, uh, people that have ace monsters at 2,500 attack? Swords is one of the best top decks I've ever seen. How many blue eyes are in the grave? I have no clue. Probably two, unless you count yeah, three if you count the spirit card. That sword's top deck was great, though. That that was great. Oh, that's not going to help yet, but that card will help later. 
You need harpies. I'm just saying it. You need harpies. That top deck of the gods. Get it? <laughs> he did get a top deck of the gods. That is a very good top deck. That card could unlock his graveyard. That card has unlocked his graveyard. He got what he needed. All right. Now he could silver scry. Premature. Nope. Never mind. Not, no. Oh, yeah. End of Anubis. No. You should have special summoned it. You could. That was a huge misplay by Merrick. All right. Well, here comes Silver Scry because Merrick didn't know what he was doing. Blue Eyes White Dragon is on the field, and that is a ton of damage. And that's game. No, it's close to game. Yurigito says no. I'm going to heal my life points. And Nudoria pops Blue Eyes. What a play. What a play from Merrick. He's still going. Merrick wins the duel. Y'all suck. Anyone that didn't pick Merrick, you suck. He wins. Watch this. It, it's so good. It's so good. Luminize! No! All right. Just don't attack it. Just realize you're dead. Why'd you put... Okay, your gear is just going to leave anyway. Um, I four gore. I did four gore. We got a problem. Attack with 45. He did not get rid of your Aguido for it. Interesting. He's willing to take the battle damage because he knows he wins afterwards. Holy crap, he could do it. Tribute! It's vanity! There's no more spawn of a bitch! It's over! The top deck game is unreal! Seto Kaiba's top deck game is unreal! He 2 owes Merrick! Merrick Ishtar is done for! I have never seen the top deck game go that strong. Seto Kaiba is the main character of Master Era right now. Holy crap. He shut me up. He shut me up real quick. So, um, Kaiba, enjoy having that. Two gods under your... They showed up and handed you god cards. That's basically what happened. All right, guys. The next duel is Akiza, the Rose Witch, versus Ashizu Ishtar. If Akiza can win this and then beat Kaiba, the gods are safe in Kaiba Corp hands. We'll see what happens, though. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Akiza versus freaking uh, uh, Ashizu. This duel could go either way. Having your graveyard locked down is definitely going to hurt uh, Akiza. She uses her grave all the time. All right. But we'll see. We will see. I'm pretty excited for this duel, guys. Let's go. Akiza versus Ashizu. Which character is better? Which character would you vote for? All right, we got Pato Greed. And we have a couple sets. That's no spells and traps from Akiza. Only monsters, which is fine for her deck most of the time. Uh, especially, no, she has no Necro Valley. It's actually great for her deck. Since there is no Necro Valley, it's great. And we throw it away. She was more interesting when she was a real menace. So we are, so people are considering Seto Kaiba to be good in this story. Everyone just assumes he's the good guy. Good to know. Good good to know. Yeah. Totally Seto Kaiba wouldn't be doing anything nefarious. Gotcha. And Black Rose Dragon's effect is very nice. We're going to throw away Rose Princess. That card still gets its effect, but it's going to... Oh, no, wait. I don't know if it helps. Yeah, I don't know if it helps. Oh, Gravekeeper's Guard does help. That's really nice. And we have a set. And we have another draw. And Harpy's Feather Duster. She lost her field spell. Ashizu, you need your field spell. Gravekeeper's Guard has lots of value. Yes, but where's your field spell? Premature Burial. Yes, but where's your field spell? I'm going to keep saying until you get it. Okay, that counts as your field spell, but you need the thing that'll stop her. You need the thing that'll stop her. For the love of God. Because if you don't... She'll be able to use her graveyard, and then you'll have problems. Oh, wow. Never mind. She topped that Harpies. You're done. Yep. Harpies Feather Duster said go away. Yup. And that card's just going to do a Synchro Shokun. Yup. All right. Getting worse by the second. Anybody here in a Shizu fan? Because you don't need to be for much longer. And there's another one. And there's another one. 
Holy crap. She's summoning so many cards. What, what is she doing? I don't even... I can't even keep up. I can't even keep up with Akiza. Once she's in Rosewitch form, she scares me. She actually scares me. And we got ourselves the Ruddy Rose. Yep. Ruddy Rose Dragon. All right. Ruddy Rose is here, everybody. And it's going to start banishing. Yep. Got to banish before she stops you from banishing. You might as well. And with all those cards banished, you're in trouble. Akiza woke up and chose death. That she did. That she freaking did. I don't think she's is going to last much longer. The life points don't look that far away from each other, but they're, they might as well be miles away from each other. And that's with exact damage. Somebody pay her extra. She won with exact damage. Get her some extra DP for that. And let's go ahead and let's get into game number two because Ashizu did not get her field spell. Let's be real. If Ashizu had her field spell, she would have been fine. So let's try again. And Ashizu, draw your field spell this time. Uh, all spell. This time it's the opposite. All spells and traps and like only no like one monster. That's crazy. And no field spell again. Ashizu, I've never seen this from you. Today you've always had your field spell. What's going on? All right, attack goes through, and that card says it's not dead. I think you wanted that card dead. Now that I look at it, hmm. I think that card searches when it dies. But maybe you want a tribute, so maybe I'm wrong. No, I'm uh, now I'm confused. I'm very confused. What's going on here? All right, well, we got another Botanical Lion. Thank you so much for following. I very much appreciate that. Uh, nice, the 15. Uh, we got ourselves Gravekeeper's Oracle, which is super good if you could actually do it. You can't. You need something to tribute, and you don't got nothing. So, Ashizu, figure this out, because you don't got nothing. Monster Reborn, okay, you got something. I admit, you got something. I mean, Oracle's a little better when you got more tributes, but one's plenty. It'll do the job. With one tribute, it can still gain attack points and weaken the opponent's attack. Magic Cylinder, okay. You need Necro Valley as soon as possible because you you are not the strongest monster. Without Necro Valley, you're kind of a baby. How come Akiz is getting her field spell more than you when you have three field spells and three searches for that field spell? And Terraform, seven. Sorry, you have seven ways of getting it. Uh, attack goes through. Botanical Lion has 200 attack, which is adorable. Yeah, you might as well. I understand. Go in defense mode. It's adorable. At least being a plant monster buffs your other monster. That's, that's kind of nice. And Gravekeeper comes through. Gravekeeper destroys, but you don't got nothing. Swords! Wait! Ashizu's not out yet! You thought she was out! You thought she was out! Ashizu's still in the duel. Swords can do anything. Lone Fire is crazy, though. Swords can do anything. Premature Burial comes through for Botanical Lion. Giant shit. And Giant Trune comes through. That's not good. And Rokiza the Rose Witch has gained. I'm afraid Ashizu Ishtar is not making it to top four of our tournament, everybody. The winner is Akiza. All right. Akiza 2 0s Ashizu, and top four has been decided. So, the Ishtar family has failed. Um, Yami Yugi has failed. But there are still a few members left that can fight. Actually, there's only one guy that's not in the same crew. So let's see what happens. Akiza, the Rose Witch, will be taking on Seto Kaiba. And the Rose Duelist will be taking on Kirk Dixon. Let's go ahead and see what happens in today's tournament. Will it be Kirk or will it be the Rose Duelist? If Kirk loses this... Yako's dead. <laughs> Yako and Gecko are dead. Dupree will kill them. So let's see what happens. Will Kirk win this duel or will Kirk lose? All right. All right. Let's see. Rose Duelist. Rose Duelist. You know, watching this tournament, I'm very surprised that the characters we're seeing in top four were not in top four at Battle City. Except Seto Kaiba. Seto Kaiba was there. But you know what I mean. You think we would have saw them, but no. Uh, let's see here. Kirk Dixon, we're going to put you, I believe, over here. And the Rose Duelist is going to be over here. Yep, we're good. We good. We got everybody, people. Let's do this. Kirk already has Machina Fortress, which is good, but he doesn't have any other cards, which is bad. 
He needs those cards. All right, that card's all right. Giant Rat's fine. And you used Fortress thanks to the fact that you topped out another Machina monster. And the Rose Duelist loses their Revival Rose, which is really sad. And there goes 2,500 damage, which is also really sad. You know what? Harpy's Dark Hole, you win. I know that'd be really hard to top deck, but do it. You don't have it. You're using that to build counters. Oh, he's using it to build counters. Okay, he's using the World Tree with the Mystic Tomato, and he's going to use the Giant Rat to get more counters. It works. It works. All right, beautiful. All right, heart of the cards. There is still a way? I don't think there is. I think everybody, uh, the gods are lost. The gods will all be in Seto Kaiba's hands. All right, Giant Rat gets Machina. Mystic Tomato gets Revival Rose. So you technically would win that fight. And you do win that fight. And you just got to spend two of those counters. Just two of those counters. That's all I'm asking. And with two of those counters, we're going to destroy the fortress. And with two of those counters, we're going to destroy the trap. Oh, limiter removal gets hit. No more limiter removal. The world tree has spoken. And Machina is going in. Wall of Thorns. Okay, the Rose Duelist has wiped out Kirk's Field. Kirk's Field has been obliterated. What else you got? You got Rose Fairy. Why not? It actually will be more damage to attack with these two. And then we Synchro Shokan, the Rose Duelist, is going to play probably in defense mode. His Perial Empress, Empress of something. I don't know, I don't, I don't know, Yu-Gi-Oh. Empress of Blossoms. Empress of Blossoms, that makes sense. Great plays from the Rose Duelist. That's a good card. That's a good top deck. All right, with this top deck, he throws away Machina Fortress and ends his turn. Really? That's it? And Lone Fire Blossom comes through. Lone Fire Blossom gets Talia. And the Rose Girl comes back out. And with all these monsters on the field, that Synchro's getting stronger. Talia's getting stronger. And it looks like you are going to knock this guy out. Kirk, you're going to the Bronze Place Breather match where uh, that duel will have nothing to do with you saving a god card. It will have you do. You know what? Maybe he will take the Black Duel Disc. Maybe in the, in the third place Breather match, he could take the Duel Disc. Why not? Not like he'd use it, but he could take it. Experiment on it. All right. Attack goes through. Attack goes through. Yeah, you'll take a little burn, but I think you don't care, Rose Duelist. And the winner of the first fight of semifinals goes to the Rose Duelist. Let's get into game number two and let's see what happens. That duel, the Rose Duelist kind of like once Fortress was destroyed, he kept control. He never lost control again. He's too damn strong. He might even be stronger than Seto Kaiba. All right. Yeah, Yako's in the background right now like, please, Kirk, for the love of God, do something. That hand's not terrible. It looks bad, but it's not terrible. You can get use out of it. Yep. Into that guy. Into throw away. Yes. Good job. All right. Good job. See, he's not terrible. He knows what he's doing. All right, what about you, Rose Duelist? What do you got? The World Tree again? Yeah, that's a good card. Lone Fire Blossom is a great card. Lone Fire Blossom gets to lie on the first turn. Yeah, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not fair. Um, Kirk, you need Fortress. You need it now. No more patience. Summon it. Thank you. And Machina Fortress is here. It will have to kill itself in order to do this, but it must be done. And using itself, it will destroy the opponent. And it will also get to special summon another one. I'd probably go for Sniper if I were you. Yeah, Sniper. Good job. And with this, that's massive damage to the Rose Duelist. The Rose Duelist loses over half his life points in one turn. Next turn, he could be done for. Heart of the cards. <gasps> no! He has Dark Hole! The Dark Hole is the most value you can get. The Rosebud lets you search. Rosaria is in his hand. Rosaria is on the field. The Rose Duelist has his boss monster. The strongest card in his deck is now on the field. 
It's over. The Rose Duelist wins. It's over. Go home, people. Go home. The Rose Duelist is unstoppable. Maybe not in Battle City, but today he is. Except that one duel where he had to win by Power Wall because it was super close. Attack goes in. Attack goes in. And Slifer is gone. Specifically Slifer. Slifer, Obelisk, and Raw are now in the hands of all of Kaiba Corp. So now, for the rest of this tournament, the only thing we're going to be watching is Kaiba Corp measuring, yeah, measuring their power levels, and we're going to be measuring, uh, and we're going to see if they get the Black Duel Disc if they defeat Kirk in the third place breather match. So the Rose Duelist is in Grand Finals. Here we go. The next duel is Seto Kaiba versus Akiza Azinski. To think he called two people to the island to protect him, and they did it. There was he. That was it. He called two people to take on the entire Rare Hunters, the entire Industrial Illusion, Yami Yugi, Sarah Taker, Iz Iz, and they did it. And they just did it. <laughs> they didn't need anybody else. They didn't have to call anybody else. Bandit Keith helped too. Good point. Bandit Keith helped too. But they didn't have to call anybody else. Small assist from Keith. Small assist. He helped. Noticeable assist. So here we go. The Rose Witch versus Seto Kaiba. Honestly, he's going to need to win this just to put the freaking limiter back on her head. Yeah. It's like, we won, Akiza. You can take it off now. Akiza, you can take it off now. <laughs> For the love of God. All right. So we start with Alexandra Dragon. And we start with Lone Fire Blossom. And her Lone Fire Blossom turns into... Hello, card that I need to remember the name of. Queen Angel of Roses. And Queen Angel of Roses has backup from Lone Fire Blossom, which says, I want you to have different backup. And that different backup is Queen Angel of Roses. Wow, you got the same card twice. Now, the reason they didn't attack is because of their effect, and yet I still would have attacked. That was really dumb of her. And with the Dictator of D, we're going to combo into summoning a Blue Eyes White Dragon. Blue Eyes White Dragon is here, and with 3,000 attack, one of those queens is dead. But the other queen will pop Alexandrite. Alexandrite is not staying on the field. All right. So, Akiza, how are you going to beat a Blue Eyes? That's right. You're not. <laughs> I was curious if you were going to find a way, but it's it's a problem. Pot of Greed. That's a very valuable card. With Pot of Greed, he's going to get himself Silver's Cry, and that's a very good card. My God. Well, I don't know why you got rid of Silver's Cry, but sure. Oh, that's why, because you don't care anymore. None of this matters. Not a single one of this matters. Uh, Seto Kaiba decides he's just going to pop the face down. No need to worry about it. Goodbye to the queen. And goodbye to nothing, actually. Hold up. All right. The Rose Witch is holding on to her life point. She really does not want to put the limiter back in, but somebody's going to have to do it. You need to go back to being Akiza Izinski real quick. The fight's over. The tournament is technically over. There's no threat to the god cards anymore. Please stop. Assault Wyvern's a top deck of the gods if they use it. They did not use it. That was foolish. Uh, but it's still enough damage. Oh, no, it's not. They needed it. They needed it. That's why I said it was foolish. Oh, no, they didn't need it. Yeah, they didn't have 8,000. What am I thinking? Yup! That's the end of the duel. 7,800 damage comes through, and that is it. Seto Kaiba wins duel number one. Let's go ahead and get into game number two and see if Seto can stay, uh, keep doing this. Uh, let me see. I got a follower. Para! Thank you so much for being here today. I'll go find Docs real quick. No, Para Spo uh, Boyka. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And let's see. Phoenix Chain is busted and he can summon as many blue eyes as he wants. I'm not even joking. He can summon as many as he wants. Rose Girl with only traps. I am very interested in why he did that. Real Kaiba would have summoned Obelisk. I agree. He already he did summon Obelisk one today, but once today, Mega Upload. He actually did use it once. But uh, he has not used it again since. Alright, attack comes through. Wall of Thorns is beautiful. Wall of Thorns is beautiful. He got three. Yeah, you can count that. He drew three naturally. Master Duel cheats, as we all said. But that was a really good use of Wall of Thorns by her, and now she's got... Yeah! Here we go! Come on, anime fans! It's time for Black Rose Dragon! Black Rose Dragon, get in there, kick some ass. I apologize. It's time. Oh, well, no, we're going to negate that. 
I think you could still synchro with that, so that was kind of a foolish thing to negate. Yeah. And you know what? We're going to go one step further. We're going all the way to Ruddy Rose Dragon. Blue Eyes, eat your heart out. This card is stronger than you. A oh, Blue Eyes is banished. Oh, no. He lost a Blue Eyes White Dragon. Seto Kaiba is in trouble, everybody. All right. Should have saved that chain while he had the chance. And he plays Melody. He's going to throw it away. Yes, you can get alternate eyes, but no, it will not save you. It will just create something new. All right, she summons herself to search. Makes sense. Blue Eyes is now going to summon this card. That card uses its effect to pop. That card says you can't pop me. I won't allow it. I will not allow it. But I will devolve to Black Rose Dragon. Wait, is he going to Synchro? Oh, he could still attack because it was negated. I didn't think that through. But look what happened. He's not a normal monster. He couldn't synchro. I'm dumb. Ignore me. Yeah, since it doesn't destroy and it negated the attack, that means his effect never activated, which means he's allowed to do that, and he lost anyway. Seto Kaiba loses. <laughs> Seto Kaiba loses. I'm sorry. All right. The next duel will be these two characters again. We're going to game three. I forgot. They both won one. Which character is going all the way? Is Seto stronger than the people than he, that he employs? Let's find out. Come on, Seto. Come on. I know Ruddy Rose is pretty tough, but you got some good cards in your deck, too. Just don't mess up with Fiendish Chain again. It actually cost you the duel. Whitestone, a legend by itself, is pretty brave. I gotta admit, you're a brave guy. And that's really strong. And we already have a Black Rose Dragon. Her Look, you're in trouble. You're in a lot of trouble. Black Rose Dragon this soon is a very bad sign. All right, Black Rose Dragon, that card says, oh my god, it's Ruddy Rose already. It's already Ruddy Rose. You guys can give up. Y'all can give up. It's Ruddy Rose. She's got it whenever she wants it. Giant Trunade, it's over. It's over. And, wait, what? She's going for maximum damage instead? Instead of Ruddy Rose, she gets Splendid Rose because Splendid Rose can attack twice. And tokens, why not? Tokens for free. Monster aboard, is she going for it? Oh, I thought she was going to get a tuner. She doesn't need a tuner. She's fine. Revival Rose is here. Splendid Rose uses its effect. Dandelion is gone. That monster lost half its attack. And that goes in. And that goes in. And that goes in. Seto Kaiba is bleeding. Oh, we're not done yet. One more. One more smack in the face. Uh, Seto Kaiba is below Duelist Kingdom level. Life points. He has a blue eyes. He has a blue eyes, though. You know what could, you could really use right now? A burst stream of destruction. That would have been nice. We don't live in that world, though. Black Rose gets defeated, but if she draws a tuner, it's over. One tuner monster, and this duel is over, folks. All right. Rose Girl is back to hand. Oh, look, there's a tuner monster. I think you needed one of those. And here comes a Mega Synchro Summon. The Mega Synchro Summon is the Mighty Ruddy Rose Dragon. And Ruddy Rose Dragon is going to try to use its effect, but it will get negated and is stuck now. Fiendish Chain, hold it. Fiendish Chain saves the day. He timed it right this time. And now he just needs to find a way to win this duel. Dictator of D is going to help. So that Ruddy Rose cannot use its effects, but Seto can't beat it in attack. Also, Seto just made a huge misplay. Seto just made a huge misplay, I assume. Whoever bet on Seto, you're done. You're all done. Yep. All right, so he's safe for now, but his hand's a brick. Oh, his life points are going to be zero. Oh, my God, he, he's, he's okay with it. Guys, he left himself with no life points. He loses to burn. He loses to burn. Yeah, that's game. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, Splendid Rose's effect wins the duel then. Fuck, how, how, how much am I going to have to watch today? All right, Rose Girl again. It's not the right level. She will not be able to synchro, but it's nice in general. Okay, what are you doing that for? Oh, hi, other Ruddy Rose Dragon to end this duel. And that is it, everybody. I don't need to forget the face downs. I noticed this. Blow up the field for game. Nuke the field. She did not nuke the field. Why did she not nuke the field? 
Why? Wait. No, seriously, why? I'm asking. <laughs> wait, no, why? Why didn't she nuke the field? What? What? She needed that. Alternate eyes. No. Wait, that doesn't count as a blue eyes. It doesn't count as a blue eyes. It's fine. He doesn't have any more. Blue eyes is banished. All she had to do was nuke the field, and she won. Lone Fire Blossom comes out. Okay, okay, let's let's go. Let's got this. We got this. Queen is here. Game winning attack. Luminize. Oh dear God. That's a lot of attack points. That's a big number. That's a really big. That's a it, ring instructions useless. That's a really big number. Who's gonna win this? <laughs> I'm sorry. Who's gonna win? She had to pop herself. Who's gonna win this? Whoever makes the first misplay loses. AI always misplays. Whoever makes the first misplay loses. That could be a misplay. She could get Black Rose Dragon and win the duel. It's unlocked! She unlocked Ruddy Rose Dragon! It's free from its chains! Ruddy Rose Dragon goes in! Ruddy Rose goes in with that! Seto Kaiba is out of options! You are done, boy! You are done for! Top deck your ass! Get out of here! That's what you get for running a god! Get him out of here! <laughs> Lone Fire Blossom, Akiza the Rose Witch, her rampage shall continue. It was really tight. It was a super good match, but her rampage shall continue, everybody. And now we will continue the tournament. So, funny enough, we're going to go over here. The gods are, no matter what, the gods are safe. Oh, why'd I get rid of Seto? Whoops, I forgot Seto Kai was about to duel. We're going to go ahead and have our third place breather match. Seto Kaiba is going to go bully Kirk Dixon. If he beats Kirk Dixon, he'll get the black dual disc, which will be helpful for his company. And if Akiza wins, oh boy. Oh boy. So let's see this. Yeah, we're going to have the Rose Twins go at it. But first, we're going to see Kirk Dixon take on Seto Kaiba. We need to have our nice breather match before we get to the crazy grand finals. To see who's the strongest duelist at Kaiba Corp. Rose cards are too OP. Plant decks, man. Plant decks. What are you going to do? Now, oh, oh my god, you're right. It's a duelist of the roses. <laughs> it's the duelist of the roses, guys. It's perfect. It all happened perfectly. I'm looking for Kirk, though. Don't worry. He'll be on your screen soon. And Machina Fortress puts him in a really tight spot. Come on, Seto Kaiba. You hit harder. You can win this. You can win this, Seto. Don't forget, it's also a rematch. I've never seen those two characters duel in their life, Malevolent Rider. I believe you are misremembering mis something or are just crazy. Either or. I'm okay with either. Iron Call comes through for Machina Soldier. And Machina Fortress must be sacrificed just to get rid of Blue Eyes, which is not worth it because it's so easy to summon a Blue Eyes. And we have some sets. Iron Call will get rid of the card, but we see that Silver Scry, right? I'm not the only one. It's right there. I was not talking about that one. I didn't see that one. Blue Eyes White Dragon is back on the field. Blue Eyes White Dragon goes for free damage. Machina can at least search, but it's not so good. Commander Covington, not so good. At least that means they're not brick, though. They have something they can summon. And we do have ourselves some sets. No, they're all part of the same group. They're fine. And Commander Coffington gets used to summon Fortress. Oh, what? All of a sudden you don't want to use Fortress? Come on. Come on, use Fortress. You're, you're always so eager to use it. Yeah, even Kai, even Kai was like, no, use your effect. Do it. I want to do 3,000 damage. Wait, you know what? Dude, do it during battle phase. I teach the AI that. If Master Duel people are watching, teach the AI to use Quick Play during Battle Phase. For the love of God. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard. Tag Force could do it for crying out loud. Alright, another Machina Ford. How many Blue Eyes do, do I have to see die today? Magic Cylinder comes through. We're going to do 1800 Burn. Pretty brutal from old school Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Once you lost, once Kaiba lost to somebody that was in his organization, they're safe. They're safe. 
As long as you lose to someone in your own organization, you're safe. And we have Machina Gear Frame. And Machina Gear Frame gets Machina Sniper because there's not much left. This gets Machina Fortress, but the Machina Fortress does not many... It, it, you can't do it. You can't afford that. Sir, sir, you can't afford to do that. Alexandrite wins the duel. All right, well, they did everything they could. I saw Blue Eyes die like four times today in that one duel, but that's game. I don't see any comeback from this. Also, we can just get Blue Eyes back to the hand. It's not that complicated. And Maiden's just like, what if I did this? Game winning attack goes through. Game number one goes to Seto Kaiba. Like I said, just a nice breather match. We don't even have to worry. There's no stress, no nothing. It's just going to be nice and easy. It could, it couldn't it unionize? If it unionized, then he wouldn't get destroyed and he would not be able to pop the opponent's monster. The whole point is the monster has to go to the grave in order to pop Blue Eyes. If Blue Eyes is on the field, unionizing does not help. It just means you're going to take more damage. Because then he'll, he'll attack you twice. You take a thousand damage. Machine assembly line, of course. And, yep, Machina Armored Unit. So you got some good spell cards this time. We'll see what happens. Uh, what do you want to use? Just going to go for Beater Monsters? That's fine. Giant Rat. Uh, he already has a medal. In Battle City, he got second place. He got a silver medal for that. And Machina Sniper's here. Machina Sniper's not going to work. We're going to Luminize that, baby. And now we have a 4,000 attack point dragon. Obelisk, eat your heart out. Assault Wyvern is interesting because you could use that instead of Alexandrite, but you're not going to. Okay. Well, there goes 2,000 damage. Yes, our Machina Armored Unit will get a new card. Probably Soldier. Yeah, I thought so. You will take some burn for that. It's okay. I, I forget all the time, too. And we're just going to end our turn, and we got two Alexandrites with 2k beaters. You need a Fortress right now. That is not a Fortress. Wait, that could get you... Oh, no, it can't. <laughs> I'm like, that can get you a Fortress. It can't get you a Fortress. You, you can't play the game. No, no, no. Playing the game is not for you. Play something else. Fiendish Chain has done its job. You could summon that, but you don't need to. Exactly. He agrees. He does not need to. You just crash. Or you could do this. I forgot. You just drew that spirit card. Yeah, go ahead. Summon the spirit card. And if you can pick a spell or trap card, get rid of machine assembly line. It's about to be a problem. No, if you want to get rid of the burn card. I'm going to tell you right now, you could take 300 burn. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Don't be a baby. All right. Attack scrub through. And this guy has all the freaking tokens in the world. If he wants to summon a level 10 machine monster, he can. But I don't think he's running a train deck, so that's not going to work. Hey, thank you so much for following. I appreciate that, Fly Ageless. And the machine monster he gets back is Sniper, which is not going to work. Soldier's here, too. And he gave up. That, that means he gave up. If you played them all in attack mode, you know it's over. GG! All monsters go in. Sniper is dealt with. Soldier is dealt with. Soldier is dealt with. And that is it, everybody. It's over. The winner is Seto Kaiba, unsurprisingly. So now the card professors have disbanded because they only are together for that one reason, to covet the Black Duel disc. So they're gone too. We lost two organizations today. So Seto Kaiba, let's see what happens. We're going to go ahead and we're going to get into our uh, bracket. We're about to see the craziest grand finals ever. It truly will be a duel of the roses. Let's see who's better. Who is your favorite Rose character, everybody? Are you the Rose Duelist or are you Akiza the Rose Witch? Rose Duelist or Rose Witch? Who is your character? Only one of these characters can win the gold medal. All right, Akiza, could it, put it back in your hair. You have to go back to class after this. All right, the Rose Duelist is ready to duel. The Rose Witch is ready to duel. The final match of the day. Which character will be known as the strongest character in Kaiba Corp? Seto Kaiba's still up there, but he did not win today. Ooh, that hand. The Rose Duelist needs a much better hand than that. But the Rose Tree is still good. Starting with Rose Tree is okay. Uh, the World Tree, I mean, is fine. Starting with World Tree is okay. The rest of that hand, garbage. 
absolute garbage. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work either. That's when, Remember when I said garbage? I meant it. I, I meant it. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Nothing saves that hand. That hand is garbo. There's no way they could use power wall. No way. Splendid Rose negates power wall. For sure. Or that card does. I don't know. All right, 2900 attack goes through, and we're going to throw away a bunch of cards to make sure we don't take that damage. And we do not take that damage, not in this house, but we attack twice. Haha, -ha, you were wrong. Oh, wait, call the haunted. I w you were right. Call the haunted. Botanical Lion is here now, and with Botanical Lion, it can't beat Splendid Rose, but it's pretty powerful. All right, Rosebud allows you to summon your other card, but that other card isn't strong enough either. That gets you Botanical Lion, but it's not strong enough either. None of this is strong enough. Attack goes through. She had to sacrifice. Wait, what? Why didn't she die? I don't know all the card effects. Maybe there's a reason she didn't die. I thought that was a crash. Am I crazy? I'm not crazy. Rosebud, maybe? Maybe Rosebud. Good. Yeah, Rosebud's a future card. I have no clue what that does. Harpies! That's a valuable card right there. No need to worry about World Tree. Now we can get that part. Huh? I need my tissues. The duels are going to be too hype. I need them. But it's all time for Black Rose Dragon. That's enough. Black Rose Dragon can end this duel. Just blow up the whole field. Do it. Do it. Nope. Go for Ruddy Rose and blow up the whole, you know, blow up the whole graveyard as well. Just do it blow it all up here we go everybody it's time for the ultimate monster in the rose witch's deck even stronger than the rose uh duelist strongest card and with this everything gets banished sadly it's all gone now the field has been wiped and with that fuck you why'd you do that i'm sorry why'd you do that do you know something I don't? I think Ruddy Rose was more valuable than what you just did. I'm just saying, I think Ruddy Rose was more valuable, but you do you. You're the Rose Witch, not me. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm sitting here commenting on games that are way past my freaking time period. What the hell am I supposed to do? All right, well, we got another Synchro Shokan, and it looks like the Rose Duelist is dealt with. This guy's having a lot of trouble. And that's Black Rose Dragon. And we could do another Ruddy Rose if you want it. All right, you got Ruddy Rose Witch in your hand. I highly doubt you need that. That's a lot of damage. Holy crap. All right. Yeah, no, Akiza, Akiza won, guys. Akiza really won this duel. There's no chance. There is no chance. Any new cards he had in the grave are gone. If he had any new cards in the grave, they're gone. So it didn't matter. No, this matters. It's just brutal. This is just a brutal duel. Whoa! <laughs> You're fucking kidding me. Okay. I was going to say, I was a little upset. When he top decked that, I got a little mad. I don't mean to curse that harshly, but don't buff your monster. Whatever you do, do not buff your monster. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. She made a smaller monster. Smaller monster wins the duel. That was close. That was way too close. The winner <laughs> is the Rose Witch, Akiza. Akiza wins that duel. We're going into game number two. That was way too freaking close. I did not like that. When he top decked that, I felt like he cheated. But it was okay. It all worked out in the end. So, here we go, guys. It's time to get into the next duel. Who is going to win? Will Akiza win this entire tournament? Will she forever be known as the God Stalker? This would be the first time she won a tournament. Or will be the Rose Duelist. And it'd be his first time as well, but he's only been in two tournaments, so that's not that many. All right. Mystic Tomato, go. I would start Mystic Tomato. Oh, don't do that. Well, maybe do that. What are you going to get? That's okay. It's not going to be the Rose. It's not going to be freaking Ruddy Rose Dragon, man. It's all right. Oh, look at that. You're both. You're twinsies. 
<laughs> You're twinsies, but her card's going to get the better monster because she gets Ruddy Rose Dragon, like I said. Yep. The card I said you weren't going to beat, that's what she got. Yup. And goodbye. Oh my god, why did she do that? Oh, my brain. Okay, okay, it's fine. It's fine. She knows what she's doing. She's the Rose Witch. She knows what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing, but she knows. She knows exactly what she's doing. Don't ask. She knows. She knows. It's all calculated. When she wins this duel, you're all going to feel like you're dumb. Talia can be affected by that. Yep, that's a huge hit by Magic Cylinder. Exactly. Let her cook. She knows how to play the game. Akiza predicts monster card. It was not a monster, but it can bring back the monster that she needs. Premature burial. There comes the Ruddy Rose Dragon. That's all she needed. Ruddy Rose Dragon returns to the field with 3,200 attack. Wall of Thorns says no. Ruddy Rose says yes. I will bring out the Black Rose Dragon. Don't make me do it. I will summon the Black Rose Dragon straight from the extra deck if I have to. Black Rose Dragon is here. It was not Synchro Summon though, so it does not get to blow up the field. And Mr. Tomato's like, nice try. I got Mr. Tomato. All right, Talia holds field advantage right now, but there's a trap. Then that trap could do it. Oh, look, one of his other cards. And we got Revival Rose. So Talia can beat Black Rose Dragon. Revival Rose beats that. Mystic Tomato beats that. And Akiza is one turn away from losing. But she's the Rose Witch. Monster card. It's not a monster card. Shit. And there we go. Did you forget she's the Rose Witch? That top deck was God. Oh, defense mode. Uh-oh. I, I did not realize it was forced defense mode. That's, uh, that is not what I thought would happen. Double Talia would end the duel. She did not go for double. Uh, he did not go for double Talia. Um, I was wrong. He's a, she cooked too hard last duel. She cooked a little too hard. She definitely burned down the kitchen on that one. Guys, we're going to game three. This could go either way. Both characters can win the duel. This is the one, everybody. Who is going to win? Will it be the Rose Duelist from Duelist of the Roses or Akiza, the Rose Witch from 5Ds? The final duel will start now. The God Stalkers Tournament is real. Who is the best duelist in the God Stalkers Tournament? Ooh, come on. Between these two, I like them both. I'm okay. I'm okay with either of them winning. I have no judgment here. They're both Rose characters after after all, so why would I judge? That's a similar start to duel number one, isn't it? Or am I crazy? This is a very... This seems very familiar. I... I think... I think this is ha this has happened before. I think this has happened before. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> good luck to you, Rose Duelist. You're going to need it. This looks exactly the same. We've been here before. For sure, we've been here before. There we go. There we go. I'm uncongested now. Maybe a little bit. I'm still, I'm still a little bit, but I'm fine. And Mr. Tomato gets Fallen Angel. Fallen Angel just gets rid of one of the Rose Dragons because you don't want them to keep it. They're both tuners, though. You're going to need to get rid of both of them eventually. Swords gives you time, though. As long as you have swords, those other cards don't matter. Ooh, it has 4,200 attack, but it can't beat swords. It may have 4,200 attack, but it can't beat swords. Use this time to destroy everything she owns. Take away all that she loves. Do what you have to do. All right, Rose Girl, you can't technically take that card away. It will come back. The Rose Girl will come back. And Monster Card again. Yep, you're getting very lucky with your predictions now. Rose Girl is back. Um, I guess you could Black Rose Dragon blow up the whole field for fun. <laughs> You'd lose the duel, but you can do it. Uh, what else you got? Lone Fire Blossom, is that enough to win you the duel? No, it's not because you didn't summon it. If it was enough to win you the duel, you would have summoned it. Lord Poison returns the Queen card, which is very powerful and scary. And these two cards are tribute set. What the hell just happened? I'm sure there's a reason you did that, but I'm scared. 
And good prediction. You're at 4,200 attack now. And that card's forced to pop itself now. Rose Girl's like, that's fine with me. I'll just summon it. And let's get Black Rose Dragon. And let's do Black Rose Dragon's effect. Yep. With Black Rose Dragon's effect, we're in a lot of trouble now, folks. Black Rose Dragon's effect. Activate. Use your effect to flip the monster. The monster has zero attack points. I don't know that one very well. Power Wall! He has to throw away everything! Oh my god, he lost so many cards for that. It has an effect. It summons Talia. Talia's not strong enough. Call of the Haunted brings her back. I don't get it. Why? It forces the attack on her, apparently, and she does it again. Talias cannot be destroyed by battle. I mean, they can only be destroyed by battle. They're immune to spells and traps. This is your only chance, Rose Duelist. This is the only hope you got. Rosaria won't do it, but I'm glad you got something. You got rid of Black Rose Dragon, but I'm guessing you just couldn't get anything else. Talia, you needed two monsters. He needed two plant monsters. He only got one. Why didn't you do this? Wait, you would have had enough attack. He could have done it. He messed up. The Rose Duel is messed up. He had it. He had it and he messed up. He lost now. The duel's over. Super big misplay by the Rose Duelist. He had it. That was his only chance to defeat the Ruddy Rose Dragon before it got buffed again. And it looks like anybody that's an Akiza fan is about to go crazy because she got rid of Talia, which means there's no more protection. Holy crap. What are you going to do, Rose Duelist? You got nothing in the tank. Nothing in this tank. You can do some damage and you can hide in defense mode. That's about it. Hurts my heart to see it, but it's real. No spells, no traps to save yourself. Akiza's the god. She's a god. She has guessed it right every time now. Anytime that she was able to do battle damage, she guessed it right. She has a card that special summons. The special summon will be Black Rose Dragon. And we might get ourselves another Synchro Summon. With this card's effect, we're wide open, and this is it. The end of the duel. Akiza, the Rose Witch, has won her first tournament. She will now be known as the champion of the God Stalkers Tournament. Akiza, the Rose Witch, it was unstoppable today. Today was her day. I feel bad she couldn't go that hard back in Battle City, but today was her day. And today was definitely a Kaiba Corp day. Kaiba Corp was unmatched. Nobody can stop them. And now they have access to all three gods. All three gods are in Kaiba Corp's hands. They respectively... I want you to look at this. Kaiba called in two characters to help him. He called Akiza and the Rose Duelist. And they got first, second, and third. Kaiba Corp got first, second, and third. Industrial Illusions got fourth. Ashizu got uh, tied for top eight. Top eight Bandit Keith, as always. Merrick, top eight. Yami Yugi, top eight. But none of that matters, because the winner was Akiza. Kaiba Corp is now even more powerful than they once were. They are now dangerously powerful. So, that's going to be fun when that comes to pass. But that is going to be it for today's tournament. I want to thank everybody for being here today. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you enjoyed this tournament, please, you know, join me on YouTube. Go sub to me on YouTube. Follow me on Twitch and all that nonsense. And next week, if I can get the decks done in time, we will be having our first ever. Oh, well, for, yeah, first ever donation tournament. Everybody that donated for Battle City, your decks are going to be going at it. And I hope you're excited for that. So expect a tournament next week that has nothing... Well, it's part of the Master Era story, and it does play a major role in it, but it's going to be definitely different than you're used to seeing. It's going to be a completely different tournament. So, see you all then. And if you're curious about how many donations, we raised $5,600. So yeah, get ready. It's going to be a big one.